All right, I'm bringing them up. Cool, 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 cool. I'm excited about this one, boys. Hello. Yo. Yo, this guy just read me the list of all the words I can't say. Uh huh. Don't say it. I think we're gonna have to push this to a, to, to a next date. I need to play better. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what's up there team? Yo, what's up baby girl? Yo, oh, how, how you doing boys? How you doing boys? Yeah, pretty good. Let's we'll go down with the CTA. Uh, I don't know if you saw, but we were playing some, some uh, not Larchy, fuck Larchy, uh, some Farchy uh, videos while yeah, we were waiting. Larchy. Yeah, fuck Larchy. Uh, we were watching some Farchy videos. And I was saying, I was saying, we need more shit like that now, beyond now, you know? Like, doesn't matter what guild you're in, but like most of the videos now, it's like, uh, oh, horrible. yeah it's like they're kind of recycled of what owens and now we're doing where it's like you have the guild leader talking yeah. and then you have a clap you have a guild leader talking and then the clap you know what i mean it's all the same yeah, shit. It's, it's been there done that exactly uh so bro i don't even know how to introduce this one i don't even know Yo, how to introduce this one good. what's up corpse was good corpse yeah corpse videos were funny oh, oh yeah yeah they were, they were good they were good um if you have any specific ones, send them to me. We could watch it together. I remember there was some funny ones with Shiro with you. Oh yeah. Um, what was it called? Thirteen. You spent the most time out of all of us with Cynic. By the way, shout out to Artista. I see Artista in the chat. Shout out to Artista. Yo, what's uh, up, Artista. Shout out to Chilo. Thank you so much, Chilo, for the prime. You're G, bro. Absolute fucking G. Uh, so Durachan, you spent the most time with Cynic. Uh, yes. Probably, yeah. So the way I would describe him is is a a, a true competitor, you know, like a, a winner, he, uh, relentless. Um, how would you describe him? Because you know him better than pretty much anybody uh, at this point. First of all, good afternoon, boys and girls. Hope y'all having a wonderful day. Uh, unless you say in which case, you know, you're from yeah. Morocco. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So, Syndic. Syndic is, uh, it's all of that and the above. Like, he's a very strong personality, um, very determined. Like, you're, you're not going to break Syndic. That's, that's something that, uh, the Coalition has, has fought over and over and over again. But, uh, very determined. Very, and, and honestly, it's not even about winning Syndic. I mean, I'm sure you'll get into it during the interview, but I think it's just he plays the game the way that he wants to play the game. And he wants to, he wants his boys to have fun, not your guilt to have fun. You know, he wants his guilt to have fun. So is... Other people give him a lot of uh, a lot of heat for that, but in the day, hey, Albin gives you gives you sand, and the man's built a sand castle. <laughs> and those people tried to knock it over. Uh, Seed, yeah. Seed, how would you describe him? Uh, you don't know him as well as Dirtine does. But how would you describe him from from your perspective? Syndic is the antithesis the antithesis of a villain, right? He is the big bad of the game, in my opinion. He is the objective final boss of the game. Kill Syndic. If you kill Syndic, you win the game, and that's why we're still playing because nobody's won yet. True. Antithesis means something else. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but it's okay because you know, Sade work at like fucking uh, like KFC. Big words, bro. Uh, Cynic, what I want to know about you first, bro, yeah, is sure. because listen, man, I was okay. Uh huh. Go yeah. ahead, go ahead, go, go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I was just gonna say, like, nobody knows shit about Cynic, and I'm sure, I'm sure, My design. yeah, I'm sure he wants to keep it that way. So, um, you know we're not gonna invade your privacy but we're still gonna ask ah, you some questions you thank you brother uh by the way this is probably one of your first interviews that you've ever done on this game right like i, I think you've done one like how many have you actually done uh in albion i've only done uh the one with uh a very incompetent person at the very um so how how come you don't do interviews on the on the oh, regular? Uh, nobody writes me usually. No, come on, don't say that. There's a lot of people that would. You're a normal guy. 
there's a lot of people that would interview the fuck out of you, bro. Yeah, I think well, people are just afraid of him. The as far as I know, I don't follow on Twitch. The only other guy that does Albion interviews is the aforementioned grossly incompetent guy. <laughs> and I don't think he wants to talk to me. <laughs> Uh, so okay. let's bring it back a little bit. I, I, listen, I, I always wanted to ask you this. I never asked you this, but I always wondered, right? Sure. Because you're so uh, good with the English language, bro. And it might be a random ass question, but how did you learn sure. English so good? Like being like not being from America or England or stuff like that, because same your vocabulary like, is insane, bro. Same way like most people that um, obviously I grew up with cartoons in English. And then I got my first computer, I joined my first guild, and then, uh, it's what, 22 years later, after a management change, we're still here. We're not going to talk about that KGB time? No. <laughs> no <laughs> Redacted. Redacted, yes. Yeah, see, someone said, uh, I said did I say learn English so good? <laughs> I'm, I'm retarded, man. You, you learn English so good. <laughs> but but like, uh, there's no way you learned it. There's no way you learned it that well. Watching Scooby Doo and Jimmy Neutron, bro. You know, like it's a place where you start. You know, yeah, it's but, true, bro. That's how you learn. But are you like a, a book reader? Do you do you read books? Of course. <laughs> I I actually prefer them in English because translations are usually shit gotcha so so if i can ask what's your favorite book of all time oh of all time that's a very very long list i know 13s uh, i'm not gonna ask dirty 13s is a tome of insight 100 percent bro 100 <laughs> <laughs> percent bro that pretty good <laughs> um, i will have you know i'm you know, a big fan of john grisham very who, good books very good author. who the hell is that you how the heck i saw in 24 Google it. No, I'm, I'm, I'm also a big fan of the Elder Stone of Insight. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> and, and apart from that, there's a long list. I mean, I grew up like, like I think most people. Uh, I've gone through the Lord of the Rings, gone through obviously the War Harry Potter. Harry Potter. No, I, I never did that thing. That's uh, uh, that word I can't say. Yeah, you didn't get into Harry Potter, bro. Yeah, Cindy found out they had like he, he, he thought himself too much of Professor Snape. Just didn't read yeah, the rest of it. I don't know about that. It it never took me to to be honest. But yeah, uh, arguably the most impact, uh, the most um, the books that I return to the most are probably the Asimov series, Robot and Foundation mm. uh, parts. Someone Which said, someone said, so, uh, Art of War, Art of War. Is that one of your favorite books? That, that's what everyone on the internet says when they try to be a fucking... Yeah, what are they? <laughs> 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 and then the 48 Laws of Power. Yeah. <laughs> you, you were locked up for mad long, but we know. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, how was it growing up in, um, uh, we from Is Croatia? Communist Russia. Communist Russia was amazing, and then somebody turned on the light. Uh, <laughs> I fucking hate them. Was it different? Was it different growing up in like uh, one of those ex-Soviet countries uh, than it is like, for example, us in Europe or America and stuff like that? Oh yeah. What was the main differences there? You had uh, you had a lot more shit. Let's put it that. Gotcha. You would finish school and you, you would, there was a job waiting for you. Obviously, this was a bit before my time, but um, as soon as you got a job, there was a flat waiting for you in X amount of years. You would get it for free. It was good. Nowadays, mm -hmm. just imagine f five years on the job and you get a flat. Gotcha. I mean, that's how it was back then, right? That's what you're saying? Yeah. What are you saying now? That's what it was like back then. Gotcha. Because I heard, I heard, bro, you, you hear the craziest shit about Cynic because he's so uh, mysterious, right? So, for example, uh, see, what's some of the craziest conspiracies that we hear about Cynic? Oh, he would oh man. Oh, oh, okay. The craziest. Uh... Let me get the lotion. Hold on. Like, you know how many times. 
You know how many times I heard he's like 55, 60 years old? XKGB was one of the baby. Yeah, like multiple, multiple kills, confirmed KIAs. Absolutely. Yo, so, so you're actually yeah. 35. Yo, Elmai, thank you so much, my brother. I appreciate you, man. Whoa, whoa, buddy, whoa. Yeah, Cynic's not as old as people think. You know? I don't know. He, um... Everything I heard about Syndic for like the first year of playing was just bad. I don't think I can narrow it down to one thing. <laughs> I was I was talking to someone today, and they described Syndic as Emperor Palpatine. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Emperor Palpatine, bro. Like the, yeah, again, like the when end he, game when, big bad. When Syndic recruited me, he was like, unstoppable power. When Syndic recruited me. They were gonna be like, listen, it is time for you to unleash your potential. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yo, boys, you, you, by the way, if you're in the chat, uh, I appreciate you guys coming. This is going to be a long interview. I think it's going to be our longest one because we're going to go through the whole history. It's a lot of wars, a lot of beefs, and a lot of history. You guys understand? So it, it's, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a minute here. Um, and we haven't even begun to crack this pragmatic shell that Syndic has yet. So. Yeah, so it, it's going to be a slow start, and then we're really going to get into it. You know, Wait, that's what, how it's gonna work. It, yeah. Um, so, so, uh, Syndic, your gaming background, yeah, right? Were you growing up playing stuff like uh, Super Mario Bros., Mario Kart? Of course, of course. Uh, and when did you get to the crazy stuff? Like, because I know you play Eve, you mean the normal stuff, <laughs> the, the normal stuff for <laughs> us, yeah, for us. Um, I was talking to Nerg, and he was telling me that, that. You used to play a lot of Warhammer. Uh, that was 2008, I believe. So is that when you got into MMOs? I don't no, even know what that is, but is that an MMO? That. Long before that, I think uh, one of the first MMOs I did, uh, which was, you know, back then it was super new, uh, was Star Wars Galaxies. At the time, it was a very unappreciated game. Mm -hmm. And then WoW came out and just, you know, destroyed everything. Um, and the, within WoW, obviously, like everybody, at the very dawn. Um, and after WoW, I think we went on... Because by that point, we were moving as a guild between games. Wait, 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 wait. How far did you get in WoW, though? Yeah. Uh, I WoW. think the first time... Like, when we were playing seriously, I think we stopped around... I want to say Burning Crusade towards the end of it. Uh, about. Did you down the Trial of Champions, though? <laughs> I I don't actually remember. Uh, I know the Ankiraj that you talk about, but I don't remember where we got. I remember we... The most memorable thing was wiping on the Farian uh, the day before TBC came out or something like that. Because we got into it super late. So you guys didn't go super hardcore though on, on the game, I'm assuming. We didn't go it was super casual. Uh, we actually we got stuck in the in the what was it called the Taran Mill in the South Shore maps, you know the back and forth, way back when. Yeah. So we spent a good while there. Uh, so it slowed our progress, so to speak. Uh, getting stuck in WoW was the hard life, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah Flag was a huge WoW nerd. This motherfucker played that shit for. Long Dude, we got stuck time. in uh, Sindragosa and Lich King for like. I don't know, I man. A whole month did. wiping every day for like six hours. Oh, I feel you, dude. Sinjur Ghost was, was hard as fuck when the first came out. Yeah, on after heroic, after though. We were down here on heroic, bro. Like, that shit was just, oh my god. After the first set of nerves, it was easy, though. Like, I think after that whole section, uh, we went to Warhammer Online. Uh, obviously, for the for the backstory and the, the feel of the game, and for the whole feeling of, you know, South Shore and Tired Mill. Um, so we were running around Warhammer for a good while. Um, after Warhammer, I think we went, I think we slid more towards the extreme. And we went into, I think it was Mortal Online. And after Mor Mortal Online, Perpetuum Online is a guild. But I played Eve on the side as I was, um, you know, school life, uni life, the good times when you don't have to do anything. And you just play for 20 hours a day and you sleep for four hours a day. So, so just to confirm this to everyone else, especially Sayad, you actually went to school, yes? Mm -hmm. I, I, I did go to school, believe it or not. I did finish yeah, school. Unlike certain people that 
you finished school, unlike certain people that lead guilds today. You actually finished I school, did, yes? yeah, yeah. And I finished uni, and I finished my specialization. Are you, were you a uh, math person in school? No, no. Okay. Because, I don't what know. What was your strongest subject? Psychology? Because yeah, with logistics and stuff, he's, he, like, Syndix, definitely one of the best. Oof. Um, well, that came, that part came later, uh, but in school, I was mostly that smart ass that did, I didn't want to study and just passed it. So uh, I just kind of cruised around with a B or something along the lines. I mean, that's not bad. Uh, what about, what about sports? Were you a sports person at all? Oh yeah, of course. I did, uh, I think I tried pretty much everything, everything there is to try. Um, I stayed for the longest time in boxing, I think. I think I did like eight years of that. Nothing special, just Yeah, like we've age. talked we've talked about that before. I remember that. Yeah. But I've tried pretty much everything else that was out there to try. Mm -hmm. Uh you say when you talk about Warhammer and all these games, you're you're saying we how how early on did you have a guild and and was it was it like poe was it cir or was it did it have nothing to do with that shit? i joined cir in 2000 uh i think after i got my first pc thereabouts in 2000? Wait, 2000 yeah of course the fuck? wait so cir has been alive for 22 years or more um i don't know that was like 14 years. or no hold on uh 25 uh, and then uh, they were playing Age of Empires at the time, I believe on the MSN Gaming Zone. And then there was a, uh, a after a while, there was a need for a management to achieve greater things. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then we just kind of moved on uh, afterwards as a group. Nothing major, just 20, 30 of us. A uh, few of us played Eve together, or a few of them played Eve with me. Back then, uh, the idea of paying, uh, what was it, 14 bucks, I think, monthly mm -hmm. to play a video game was, you know, people shirked away from that. It, it wasn't very common. MMOs back then were a niche, you know, and MMO was good if it had maybe a quarter million players actually playing it mm -hmm. in, in total, not uh, nothing special. Even that was huge, huge, hugely successful. It, it's only when WoW came with the 10 million people that it went crazy and went more mainstream. So playing MMOs, you were weird before. Yeah, you were like you were like a nerd. Yeah, you were like that weird guy. Yeah, because everybody else was playing Quake Three and Unreal Tournament and Wolfenstein, and Halo, shit. and Halo, Halo, yeah. Call of Duty, all that stuff. Yeah, when I was when I was in uh, school. Like, I remember I was like trying to avoid being a nerd. So yeah, yeah, of I remember, no. I remember seeing like some gameplay for World of Warcraft. And I was like, bro, this shit looks so cool, but I don't want to play that shit. Cause I'm gonna be a nerd, you know? Yeah. And then, and then and I'm sad that out, I missed bro. out. Exactly. Yeah, I'm sad I missed yeah. out, bro. You know, I, I'm sad I what missed out. It had its time, you know? Yeah. But, uh, EVE Online was your main game, right? Cynic? It was, it was. It was your the, main game. Like, the other games were beneficial in a way that they were schedule-based games, kind of like Albion, you know? Like in WoW, you set your raid at this time of the day, and outside of that, you don't have to do shit. Mm -hmm. So it was a very, very conducive to uh, sitting there and watching asteroids slowly disappear, or watching players slowly disappear. Mm -hmm. And were you were you in, in Goon Swarm or whatever, like that famous guild from EVE? I was, yeah. And, and, and I still have my something awful account somewhere. And is that where the, the bees come from? Uh, yeah. The bee uh, avatars. Where, where does that come my, from? My particular bee came from, uh, I don't know if it's polite to say on Twitch. There was a group of people who were, like me, a little bit focused on making money. So um, we made a lot of money in a very short time. Yes. Uh, a number of ways that's not discussed and then um we uh the guys made a beat which obviously has the certain hebrew connotations mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which uh yeah also okay so it has some jewish connections the beat i didn't yeah, know that yeah 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 i didn't know that. that's interesting i don't know what i can say on twitch <laughs> i mean you, you could say 
of most things as long as you, you're not like vulgar about it, you know? Yeah. Um, sure. Like, the only thing I know about Eve is I remember I watched the video and it was talking about like a, a, a war that went on. You, you Eve people in the chat will probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, and Cindy Gilda, if you know what I'm talking about, it's like that war that went on for years and mm -hmm. uh it, over like some sort of fountain or something like uh, the, some fountain mm -hmm. yeah. do you know what i'm talking about i know i know exactly what you're talking about uh well, there was tell me it's about that actually very similar to very similar to albion how so well in that game the uh quote unquote evil empire put it that way was uh okay. broken and disbanded and rebranded which is familiar yeah. and then they went to make a rebellion of sorts and with every disband they have less and less people so it just kind of kept surfing the drain that way i think the last war was uh i actually missed it because of our uh, adventures in uh, in the cold war the this is entertaining yeah 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 because it was going on uh there was a uh, an anti-goons coalition and a mail actually went out to everybody who was at any point registered in the organization, right? Like people who haven't played in 20 years uh -huh. or whatever. To bring them back uh, to fight? For a call to arms to come back. <laughs> That's wild. There's some next level oh, shit, bro. The bag was open. There's a mailing yeah. list for Goons. Oh, yeah, so there's a mailing list. Everything went out. Um, oh, you know people actually showed up, by the way. You know people They did show up, yeah, yeah. A lot of my friends uh, that, you know, don't want to play Albion because they think it's weird. Uh, they went back, and from 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 all accounts, they had a lot of fun. It was kind of similar to a, to your average POE coalition. Sorry, anti POE anti -POE coalition. coalition. They kept pushing into them, and then these guys just decided to break and die. Mm -hmm. So weak it's mental. Great. Oh, yeah. gotcha. So Goonstorm's still going strong on Eve. I don't know how strong they're going. The last uh, I I obviously haven't actively played in forever i i logged in once for for memes to take a screenshot uh for an idiot who was claiming i was banned um yeah. for Voto. Various reasons. shout out to voltel shout out to voltel keeping it crazy i'm surprised he's not in the chat yet there was someone called volto by the way he's oh he's in there somewhere trust me he's in there somewhere. i did sell my account in that game originally yeah so i think back in uh we were playing that robot game and then we were bored because there was nothing else to do. We killed the whole server. And we went uh, to have fun in Eve. And then I made a new account. Mm. Uh, what about... I hear I hear a lot when I when I talk about Eve or people tell me about Eve, I hear a lot about this guy called uh, Demetani. Yeah, me too. Um, so who, who would he be the equivalent of if, group. if he was on Albion? Is it a group uh, of people? Mittens wouldn't. Well, if yeah, who would that be? Play Albion, I think you would be the closest to him. Really? Why you say that? Well, he also mastered the, the art of uh, playing the game by not playing the game. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. I think only in this last war he actually started logging in again. Yeah, Mojo, Mojo gotcha. for those of you who don't know, Mojo led Blue Army while he was playing Call of Duty. Yeah. Also true. Uh, we all know how that ended. <laughs> <laughs> There's a video somewhere. Uh, don't worry, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Hey, uh, why, so why did you switch? Why did you switch from Eve Online to Albion? Like, what what brought you into Albion? Why were you like? Because you spent so much time on Eve. Were you just burnt out? No, you didn't. Uh, I uh, so the way that went was I was playing uh, I was playing Eve and I was playing uh, WoW and Warhammer at the same time. Okay. And it was getting to the point where it was starting to be unhealthy, you know? When you're at that age and you're going that hard and you're, you, you're either sleeping or you're going to practice or you're gaming and you're not, you know, doing anything else. It's like you burn out a little bit. Right. So I decided back then uh, the idea of getting money was also very dear to me. So I uh, I sold my company. <laughs> it was very weird. To me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so when did you join Albion? Did you have an account during beta or afterwards? Uh, 
I'll actually show you a screenshot. I have it here somewhere. Uh, we got an invite as a guild, I think in 2013. I mm. think something like that. That was probably Alpha. That was Alpha. Uh, you know how it goes. A friend of a friend knows a developer, and the developer is, you know, handing out the invites because he wants somebody to play his shit game. Right. That's how it usually goes. Um, is, uh, I don't know if Syndic remembers, but my first encounter with Syndic was fighting uh, him outside of Welcoming Shadows. This is Beta 2. This is the very beginning of Beta 2. And uh, we as EOS, we fought Crimson Imperium Reborn with like the old core. I'm talking like Genov, like those old people. Oh, that's not very really uh, old, bro. Oh, okay. Depends on your perspective, buddy. I think I think I think I've seen that screenshot, Dirty, where where he's is Syndic's chilling outside with claws on, ganking. Yeah, no, the, we were ganking outside of Shadow. Yeah, yeah. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Bro, can you imagine you come out of Arthur's Rust and fucking Syndic and Cargera are just clawing you down? <laughs> nah, Cargera wasn't. Um, Cargera wasn't there yet. Cargera joined us in. Uh, because we went to play Guild Wars, uh, I think before Albion. We, okay. the, the game we were previously playing died due to a lack of population. Mm -hmm. uh, so we went to play Guild Wars and we met Cargera, or I met Cargera in Guild Wars where we recruited him. We played together until, I believe we got Black Tide, the server we were on, to Europe first. And at that point we were back to, you know, playing 10, 15 hours a day, especially on weekends. Right. And then we just mass quit. And we got Albion accounts, and then I think he never played until release. But we we fucked around a little bit in the betas, you know, just to see what the game's like. Mm -hmm. But I posted a screenshot in the in the general chat here uh, where we got the the uh, test invite. Here, I'll show it on the stream. Albion online test uh, invitation for CIR. Team. Uh, could you be where I'm at? All I know is I saw Syndic on a one handed fire staff, no off hand. It was an infernal staff, buddy. Infernal staff. I, I With an assassin back. jacket. Proud of it. With an assassin jacket. Invis infernal staff, boys. Yes. Syndic always innovating, innovating the magic. Always uh, something about somebody being lit on fire, yeah. Uh, so, Syndic, you, you go to. So you get the the keys to the alpha beta whatever the fuck whenever, whenever and then and uh, then you go to and then you start playing stuff like guild wars and stuff like that when did you come back officially and actually play the game albion i actually played albion i think it was beta 2 they still had those two continents with the black zone with the tunnels through it mm -hmm. and i think we played um we played for maybe a month you know nothing serious because we were we were fighting another war in the robot game and it was already going on for like I think six months we were on the way to wiping their, uh, I think, fourth uh, reshuffle, reincarnation of refugees from the other guilds. Right. And and we were working to finish them off, so we didn't have time for Albion. So we stopped playing Albion in beta 2 after a month. Gotcha. And then you, but, but you came back when, officially, on release, right? Uh, we tried beta 3, just to see what's different, obviously. Yeah. Um, also for a month. And we were back to fighting the war because that kept going on for a while. Right. Um, and then we came back on release. Yeah. Okay. With a with a plan of action. You know how it was on release. Everybody farm silver, buy gold, buy more gold, get more gold. Yeah. Because yeah. gold was like you know. Because gold was like one. Yeah, it was like seven silver one one. shit. Like, yeah. Yeah. One yeah. Um, so what what's the so you you come to Albion right? Who do you yep. bring with you? Do you have a guild already? Do you have a community already? Or did you have to start from zero? Uh, back then, we we came over with um, about a group of 40 to 50 people from our previous game. Mm -hmm. um, where, ironically, we we had the Alliance sticker POE as well. And that's where POE came from. Mm -hmm. um, Who are some then, of those people? Do we know any of those people? Um, I don't think you know them directly because you know they're most of them are line members in the sense that they're fighting and they don't come into team speak that much so you, so you wouldn't have had the opportunity to them. but i think by now there's maybe five that are left over 
mm-hmm. out of those original 40. The other guys, obviously, they got uh, a lot of them got kids, uh, real life change, uh, you know, yeah, you know, I suppose. Mm-hmm. So, when you came to the game, like, what was the plan? Like, are you guys trying to take over shit, or are you just trying to <laughs> find like a hobby? Well, our plan was. I mean, the plan was not to take over shit uh, in, in a sense of owning the whole world and doing stuff. We were, we we set out with the idea of uh, securing a home for ourselves in the you know the in black zone, mm-hmm. and the only way to do that was by doing the GVGs, obviously. All right. So for people so who we, don't know, uh, what, what was the difference between the systems now and then? Well, now, you know, you get your boys and you go to a tower, you launch on it, you come back the next day, you kill the motherfuckers and you take it. Right. But back then, you would launch an attack and then tomorrow you would have a match, an instance, five versus five, and then you would, you know, duke it out, Crystal League. Yeah, so for people who don't know, it's it's, uh, completely different times. Uh, You would need to still launch from a war camp. So to launch from a war camp, you still needed a Zerg. But after that's done... The next day you would have to GVG for a Terry. Uh, so exactly like uh, how you see crystals, except you need to actually take your sets. You can't queue up from town. You need to take your sets, go through all the gankers and stuff like that. Put your sets in the war camp, not get ganked. Um, yes, Gino. Yes. And then, and then fight the GVG, right? Completely different times. Uh, yeah, we could watch that then too. You could be on the sidelines looking into the territory. Bro, watching yeah, them. with glaciers yeah. and yeah. just making them yeah. all lag. <laughs> so fun, bro. Oh, yeah, that was so fun being a <laughs> being a five man team in, an, in a 2000 man alliance and they're all spectators, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen, I was uh-huh. at Betrayal, I was doing all the war camps. You, you were doing all the war camps. And I know you remember Hot Shadows very fondly. Yes, best of times. And Zorgi. Zorgi. Um, Kari. Yo, release, release, like, on release, it was like uh, pretty much chaos everywhere, right? So for people yeah. who don't know, there was three continents. There was Anglia, which was kind of like where, where the uh, less experienced guilds were going. There was Cumbria, which was right in the middle. And then there was Mercia, which was where all the... Uh, more experienced established alliances uh, mm-hmm. we're going to not necessarily but that that was ideally how how the devs built the map we went on release. The yeah so for example in Mercia when I was in money guild with Derek we were fighting Nilfgaard right um, 13 was in echo silence with Ali and yep. uh, all those people uh, Shiro was in Cumbria on the EU time zone. Oh, no. uh, Shiro was the Echo of Shiro. Yeah, Shiro. Shiro. Of Shiro. I remember. I remember. So, so how did uh, you guys work your way in? Because there's only so many pieces of the pie, you know? Like, how did you get a piece of the pie against all these established groups around you when you guys had no oh, experience? It was, it was relatively easy. Uh, well, I mean, I had experience in dealing with guilds and and guild leaders and stuff, but um, back then Cumbria was owned by, I think it was No Leg. They were a Russian guild. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shira was obviously there, being his greasy self. Yeah. Syndic said and, dealing in quotation marks, by the way. I just want to point that out. Of course we had dealings. And and <laughs> and that was macked up with the gear alliance, if I remember right. Yeah. Uh, and it became, I think we launched on No Leg. And like, just imagine this is released, right? Your your whole guild put together the money, and you got some seven one gear, you know. And you go into a GVG, which, by the way, uh, before it was like eight point three. When it's released, like seven point one. When it's close to release, it's like equivalent of like eight point two, you know. But, yeah, this yeah. this was a little bit after release, and actually, in um, I wasn't personally there, but the rest of my team was. Uh, back then, it was a it was a different team. Uh, uh, no leg showed up with an eight three full eight three clan and blade. And back then, in seven one, no max spec, you know, uh, fighting eight three, you know, beefed up angry Russians. Oof, that was rough. Are you talking about no life? 
Yeah, yeah no yeah, life, no life. No life, yeah, yeah, yeah. No life that was the basis for... No like I'm killing right now, yeah, yeah. They got some people from Rack. They, they had some people in Rack. Yeah, they did, they did. Yeah, there was Team Casualty, there was No Life, all all spread yeah. later. There was Black Mamba in Cumbria. Cumbria was like probably the most competitive also, continent. Yeah, Cumbria there was also was a guy. And then it was closed, and then we let y'all play. Yeah. There was a guy called. Um, it, it wasn't Lord. It was Lord Vicious or something along the line. Lord Vicious, EOS, baby. Yeah, you, you remember that guy. He made an alliance. And then I think the way we did it was at first we made a map with him to push through no, uh, no life. And then when we pushed through no life, he tried to backstab us. So we made friends with no life and then pushed this shit away. And then we made friends. That's how I made Maktep, by the way. Met Maktep. Uh, we took the Grisdale Tower with the static dungeon and Maktep was living like one zone over mm -hmm. in, uh, or two zones over. And he would be there every day, like clockwork, to raid our fucking tower, <laughs> and steal our resources and shit. Bro, and no one's more petty than Mac. Mac is unstoppable. Mac dude, to launch a tower every single day, hide in the solo dungeon next to it for two hours. Oh yeah, dude. Dudes, if you don't know who he is, second. he's he's the leader of okay, Hammer and Sickle. Time. He's the leader of Hammer. I have Sickle. taken the tower again. Then <laughs> you have to relaunch that shit for the next day. Oh, every yeah, single day. And so you know. That that actually happened to me once before in 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 Mortal Online. We also spent a very long time, like 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 three months, with the Russian guild just beating the shit out of each other day in day out. And then mm -hmm. one day we just sat down and we're we're best friends. Mm -hmm. um, so we we found a common ground with Mac, which was ironically kill Shiro, death the Shiro, and then we killed the Shiro, and then uh, that was pretty much where POE was made, as as you remember it. Yeah. Then we slowly took over the whole EU of uh, of Cambria. Yeah. Uh, Cargera slowly became a thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's uh, talk about that because yeah. because people don't really associate your name with Cargera because the GVG world and ZVZ world has has been separate for so long, you know. So yeah. and 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 you've been associated with like the ZVZ world. Yes, I know, Novan. For the last maybe. Two years you know yeah uh, what they don't know is that cargara bodeville uh those people you you created that gvg team no um created in a sense of put five like you, you put them together, together right you put them together landed. yeah we had uh we had tryouts of a sort uh, back then it was i believe there was uh what the f uh, wtf tank Flugi, the, the two of them, and Genov. Mm -hmm. And then after the, the two snowflakes burnt out, then there was nobody uh, to step in with either the crossbow, I stepped in, and the rest was history. Uh, so when did you know that Kargera was a beast? Uh, back in Guild Wars. Uh, he was playing a warrior. I actually remember that, that he made a build that buffed your fall damage. And then when you jump off a high cliff and you fall on top of somebody, everything around you explodes. So we had a very interesting moment near some cliffs where we, where Zergs would be passing through. You know? Yeah. But um, yeah, I've, I've liked him since Guild Wars. We, it was fun playing with him. Uh, and that just translated into Abby. And how, how, like, uh, did you guys take a lot of L's before you guys became, because uh, Shortly after that, you guys became the, the 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 best GVG team in the game. I don't, I don't think we ever took a lot of L's in uh like we would take the occasional L. Sure, everybody does, but pretty much from the from the start, we were fighting like I said the the no life team, and and early on they were coming A three every day, so we took some L's. Uh, it took a while, especially back then the meta was Grudge Glaive, if you remember. Yeah, it was that cancer. Whole talk shit. So it took a little bit to adapt to that. And we were playing Mana Drain Comp, you know, the ultimate cancer. Oh, know? I love that shit, the bro. Yeah, here. Mana Drain, that was the shit. Dude, yeah, people take the uh, double healer as cancer right now, bro. Imagine if they had oh, to yeah. do... Did you see, like, I don't know if you saw, but everybody was complaining because the Crystal Tournament was... By the way, uh, boys in chat, like, the reason we're doing this on Monday is because this weekend there was the crystal tournament and i thought everybody was going to be watching that nobody watches that shit 
but but it's horrible. Uh, what happened this year was i mean this season was that the meta was so bad uh because it was just double healer versus double healer versus double healer so people were saying that the matches were boring but that's like, just an excuse on us that's just an excuse but but like but like imagine if there was mana drain in the in the you know it's, it's even worse uh by the way shout out to boda, boda in in the chat how you doing bro um uh, so you guys settled you guys settled in cumbria yeah uh poe owned the southern part which was the eu part and then yeah. team casualty owned the northern part which was the na part yeah we were pushing into that was that was that your first real beef in albion uh i mean i don't really do in that sense but i i guess you could call that was the first uh the first war it's called in a sense war. where you know Cambria might be broken, but the war's still going on. Mm -hmm. Wait, you say you don't do beef that way. H how do you do beef? Like, let's say me and you interact, right? How does it get yeah. to a point where it's beef for you? Um, from the moment you launch on the tower. As soon as someone launches on you, it's personal. Blood in, blood out. I mean, it's not personal. It's eye for an eye, you know. Gotcha. Like I always found that interesting because, for example, I'm a more of a reactionary person, you know. Yeah, me too. You're more of like an aggressive, no competitor, you no, know. Like I wait until somebody launches on me and then I just take it to the next level. You know, like not necessarily though, remember, because uh -huh. our whole disagree. Well, let's call it disagreement in in in, in season eight, right? Mm -hmm. Was. Uh, you probably don't even know about this, but uh, if you remember, me and you made some lines on the on the map. You know, we we painted some pictures. Yeah, we and... fought each other once, and then we we set borders. We fought each other again, then yeah. we set border. Yeah. And if I remember right, the, the border was somewhere. I I know Font was mine, Crossing was mine. I I don't remember about Wailing Bulwark. It doesn't matter. Sure. But North was yours, South was mine. So we were placing hideouts in something ravine back when it's still connected to 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 bulwark and path those maps and then that greasy little skuska bell <laughs> you know so i'm sitting there with my eyebrow you know up wondering well 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 what the fuck are we gonna do about this and then you were playing cod and skuska bell was talking shit, and then one thing led to another and yeah but I mean, what, that's why you did it. Oh my but god! What, like, give me an example. Was there anything that ever that someone ever did to you that you you're like, all right, it's personal on uh, this game? I mean, or in another game, doesn't matter. Like, when does Cindy I mean, take that uh, shit personal? I took one, one, one thing personal. Uh, two two years ago, um, I. Like back then, I was doing, I think, uh, anywhere between four and ten GVGs a day, religiously. I was, uh, I was basically there first. If not first, then I, I was there every time. Uh, I was, uh, I had a teammate, Soltres, probably remember him. Yeah, uh, well, of course. That motherfucker was a narcoleptic. He would fall asleep. <laughs> I loved him, dude. <laughs> But the, the amount of times I had to fucking bite my my nails, wondering if he was gonna log in or, or, or if he fell asleep, was oof. And then I would call him up. Short and cigarette then, break. Come back one minute before the GVG starts. Yeah, you yeah, know horrible, 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 horrible. Wait, so, anyway, so yeah, go so ahead, go ahead. All that shit showing up every day, consistently calling up this sleepy motherfucker and doing all that shit. And we were doing it was a completely irrelevant thing there was a crystal gvg you know one out of the four timers in a day and one of my teammates thought i couldn't make it because of something in real life uh and one of my teammates started bitching to me and i just told him get the fuck out and he got the fuck out and that's when i took it personally there were if i could to this day gouge his eyes out i would gouge his eyes out and stab him in the tank in the game, of course. In the game, of course. Yeah, gotcha. 
So out of all the things that people said to you or labeled you as, or oh, I don't care about that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like um, so trust, poor so trust. Are, the people that are talking shit, the the various zoomers, the degenerates, are they even human? Like, do you know? <laughs> Fuck. That's a good Damn. question. That's a good question. Um. So is say it a humor? So let's not call the TC. No, we have to call TC versus Poe a beef. That was like a big that was a beef. part yeah, of the yeah. story. That was the for your beef. standards. It was a it was a huge beef. It was a we big war. Yeah, it all the way. Yeah. I, I I remember they asked us. Manchild asked us for a, for a truce on. Uh, I think it was Thanksgiving, so we launched on it. <laughs> and then he asked us for a truce for Christmas. <laughs> Oh, that's the best. By the way, if, if you guys don't know, TC, uh, the team casualty is uh, partially um, the take care that we see today. Take care, just return to the game. So some of those players are the people that we're talking about that were beefing with POE back in like 2019. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This, this was an old war and it went for a long time that you guys beefed for like a year right i think yeah it did and then if you remember i believe you started blue army at the time as a strong solo guild i wonder what i've seen that before <laughs> and uh then we went to mercia because of the whole thing with Derek. right we'll get to that we'll get to that we'll get we're gonna get to everything um how, how did the tc beef start um between you and Ellipsis, or Manchild? Well, obviously they would come constantly to to take the castle and raid the towers and all that fun stuff, back when we ra raided each other's towers for resources. So there was a bit of, you know, healthy competition there. And then, you know, they launched on us, we launched on them, one thing led to another, words were said, uh, dogs were killed, all, all the fun stuff. Mm. So, um, yeah, you, you know, it escalates. Yeah. Uh, so someone in the chat is asking, "What's your policy on e-girls?" Uh, e illegal genders. Uh, <laughs> some there are some which are. I I have to say I have a. There is a female player in CIR. Well, there's numerous, but one Turkish girl has bigger balls than ninety percent of the server. <laughs> bigger and hairier. Yo, shout out to her, man. Uh, I like this. What about what about like uh, T Angel and Perel? Good 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 women, no? Um, like jokes aside, I personally don't have a. I personally don't care what somebody has between their legs. I don't care what color they are, what angle their eyes are, how tight they are, any of that. Shit. Yeah. I personally don't like the e dating uh, drama and the bullshit and the cancer that it causes inside of guilds uh, yeah. i think you did a that last time you were doing daddy varian and it just cringed to me to even to even see that it's it, it's like it's it's not even human <laughs> and yeah. i remember that we disbanded lord vicious's alliance right mm -hmm. by by making sure three specific females joined that alliance and then Boom, gone. All hell was loose. So I need to interrupt. Can we all agree this is the most stacked 20 team in Albion history, though? The one that oh, we has here? Yeah. Over there. Dude, this was the funnest fucking moments in Albion all time for me, probably, dude, to be honest. The 2020s? Oh, yeah. yeah, 20 times was good. Yeah. And um, then, like, POE's main team and uh, Money Gills merge. That shit was so strong. Yeah. They eventually, actually... You guys eventually My... took all the cities from us. That was my team, say my Metatron team, uh, whatever was left of Derek's team, and uh, like pickups, like like Luxy was there, I think, and and a few other guys that we picked up. Yeah. Um, when it comes to the e girls, by the way, I agree with you 100. percent I was able to kind of keep, the, as you would call them, the creatures under control, mm. almost until the very end, you know. But at the end. Yeah. They I just got out of control, illegal you know? creatures, illegal creatures, I think you said. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, as soon as, like, I tell my recruiters to not do it, but being what they are, 
often mm-hmm. they still do it. Yeah. But it does give me an interesting little side quest to to deal with. So when I notice the the drama starting, the little two man channels and two man hellgates appearing and special little discords, then I just slowly make it disappear. Gotcha. So it's like a side quest, you know. Yeah. How do you take care of that issue? I make them disappear. Okay. <laughs> how do you make them disappear? Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, can you tell us about w- when the the battle mounts were super OP, the lizards, right? Because Team Casualty was uh, one of the strongest Ezekiel's of all time, right? In my top yep. three. Um, and PoE was a GVG alliance, pretty much. Yeah, at pretty the time. Much. So, but you and your GVG team, you guys had battle mounts, uh, and it yep. was the fire lizards and stuff like that. And the Venom Lizard, yeah. And the Venom Lizards. And, and, and tell us what you guys would do um, on a daily basis to TC. After after every GVG, we would be... Obviously, we had ults, which is why they made the guild cooldown. We had, I think, three ults each. We would keep a set of characters on the tower in Bleak Moor, which is the adjacent zone. And then every 20, 30 minutes, we'd log in, run the Lizards through the zone, kill them all. And then go back to the tower and log off. <laughs> it was glorious. You just one shot a whole Zerg and then go. go. <laughs> that shit is too OP, man. Um, someone's asking if you have to calculate your whole blacklist, uh, how much money would it amount to? Listen, uh, POE's blacklist has arguably been our most profitable invention in the history of Albion. That is by far the most profitable system we ever pioneer how much do you guys rake in because you guys have some absurd uh amounts that you you, you stack amount, on people highest amount that the highest bounty that i was paid was 500 million really uh, someone paid yeah that? somebody paid that yeah <laughs> Jesus what's, Christ. what's syed's blacklist fee um syed is in a special category uh I believe it's called until the heat death of the universe okay <laughs> how much is that because, well i mean it's until the heat death of the universe okay so because no price on it there's no price on it because i genuinely believe that our interests are, are best served by having say ads in the enemy guilds there's, gotcha. a, there's a very short list of people like that but there are those people and it's a best thing for us is they're in the enemy camp Okay, can, can you give us a couple more names of that, that type of person that's better on the other team and not yours? Well, obviously, Derek, uh, Andrew, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Shiro. <laughs> uh, let me think. No, that's Shiro, bro. He has been sentenced to death. Uh, Lolta, obviously. <laughs> Have fun with that seed. Don't worry, seed, everything's ready for season 17. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Yeah, excellent. See the playing. Everything is transpiring that way. <laughs> um, so let's fast forward a little bit. Uh, yeah. you guys are in Come You're beefing with TC. Um, yep. I switched over from Money Guild and I switched to Exertion, and I was fighting Money Guild at the time. I remember, yeah. So we were watching your matches. Uh huh and and we were trying to we were trying to figure out what's going on i think at one point i don't remember if it was you or there was another guy that was tanking an exertion uh, all the, bad he was hiding. a beast all bad yes all bad uh I, I think dc hired him or sucked his dick on the last shield of fecund and then he came and like wiped us with a with a 30 percent buff or whatever the fuck it was or five yeah. percent yeah. i don't remember but it was crazy yeah. It was out of this world. Yeah. So oh, I forgot they used to give you buffs. That's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. There, there was no boys. There was no hideouts before. There was uh, town plots. So it's a territory, but it's a town where you can build your crafting stations. You could um, just live out of pretty much. So if you had a town plot, you're living in the black zone. Uh, there was no little black zone cities at the time. I think um, they added those later. I remember kiting into the town plot shield and then shooting spells at you. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, so yeah, we were fighting, we were fighting Money Guild. You guys were fighting TC. How did you, because 
Derek was in in Mercia with with Manigil, so he had no interest yeah. in Cumbria, and you were yes. in Cumbria and had no interest in Mercia. So, yes. how did you guys get together and and become cool? Like, how did you guys hook up and become cool with each other? We didn't. Uh, well, but you guys had borders, remember. right? You guys had borders or something? No, 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 no. We we never really said borders specifically. I never talked to the man. Okay. Uh, before for that, but at some point, I I don't remember whose shit team it was. I think it was Skaskebel's team. <laughs> it's always Skaskebel with the you. Team, okay, <laughs> so Skaskebel's team comes into Cumbria to quote unquote train GVGers, and they launch on one of our towers. And then I'm like, "Hello, Mr. Mojo, how we doing?" Yeah, and I had I made BA at that time. Yeah, BA was then. Uh, you guys were seeing you were killing everybody uh, and you you own that uh, the one was an NA tower one was an EU tower between hot shadows like at at the border between Anglia and Cambria right um, I I don't remember what they were called but but I remember you own those two towers yeah we own and, some and, shitty towers yeah and 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 then we decided you know because we braves Cascabel and then we were ready to go to Mercia after a while, and we needed somebody to drag our shit zerg past the war camp, so to speak. Yeah. So uh, that's where you came in. Yeah. So, but 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 how did that change? Where, for example, you put the TC beef to the side, and it's like, all right, I'm gonna focus on money guilt. Like, um, like what did they do to piss you off? Well, they launched on us. But why? I don't know. Well, well the, they were trying to train a, train teams on us, and I didn't like it. You know? Okay, so they, so they were just like trying to force they content for themselves us while while, while, uh, while we were fighting TC. Okay. To quote unquote train their their shit teams, you know. Gotcha. And we didn't want to waste our character locks because obviously back then, when you do a GVG at the tower, you're locked to that tower for twenty four hours. Okay. So, so that would mean we had to keep a separate set of characters permanently fighting Skuskabel's team number six or, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> or the fleet. Uh, at least he's saying the fleet. Or uh, the fleet, yeah. The fleet. Yeah. Um, so Derek launches on you. Were you confident at the time? Because um, you and Cargera's team was the best at the time. Right, but it wasn't really tested yet. W would you in say that's fair? Hindsight, it wasn't really tested. In in hindsight, we knew that we could beat them because okay. uh, we were treated by Albion in like nobody knew about us as much, and we knew based on the the, the boss that we could see that we could beat them. That we had answers uh, to what they were fielding because they were playing a very different meta. And we pioneered a lot of the shit that that's currently uh, being done, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, so we knew that we could do it. And I think the fleet team, they came to fight us once or twice and then they lost and we never saw them since. Mm -hmm. And when I see when I see behavior like that, you know, when somebody launches on you, gets uh, unconsensually violated and then vanishes then i know that that there's something there to be sorted out mm -hmm. so then we obviously went to mercy gotcha so blue army joins the war okay yeah and we make together we make the anti-e-dating coalition yes e-dating is a sin the anti-e-dating coalition Ironic, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, what was the objective? Can you tell us the objective of that coalition when we went, when we went against there? I think it was to delete my guild or, or or at least break them in mercy. Yeah. I don't think. I certainly didn't think we we're gonna get the whole continent. I, I I don't think you guys did either. No, not at all. They're just broke, bro. But but Delicious. I mean but I mean that was a solid. Uh, coalition because we had we had uh misty and the one pg boys yeah, pushing yeah, for, yeah. pushing na so their na money Girls na was getting pushed yeah. um their eu was getting pushed by you guys um 
you guys were taking care we were, of the we were pushing their no we were pushing their their city gvgs we, we took the yep. carleon yep. so it, it seemed like we had every base uh under we control did. we had everything covered and then on the last day i remember on the last day of that coalition for everybody that doesn't know the 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 town plots they have three shields every time you lose a shield you get five percent more defender bonus with more defender bonus in a gvg you have more hp you have more damage um more healing all that stuff so it's fucking op that's why they took that shit off yeah so they made that into a flat five percent if i remember right per shield like like five percent at all yeah so to take somebody's town plot is super difficult and they made it like that on purpose because obviously a lot of guilds when they lost their main town plot they would just quit it's like if you break someone's main hideout some people get very butthurt and they just quit right yeah so so they made it reasonably so they they uh made it hard but Cargera and cynic's team and bodeville and lisa tank and so trust they were really on point so they were able to win even despite the defender bonus oh yeah right? so we had that so so we had a launch on carleon right this is the last day of the coalition we had a launch on carleon um and we had six launches on the, the money guild town plots we were launching everything yeah all on last shield every everything was on last shield i i remember coordinating for the gvg teams and the, and the call was fuck it launch everything yeah that was the call yeah, but it was just perfectly timed. Like every yeah, Templar was. was on its last shield. So on the last day, they lost the, the Carleone and they lost every town plot um in the game. They lost every town plot. I think they still had one on the east. One on the east. Yeah, maybe, yeah, I think they kept one, the 12 UTC one. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. so at this point, you didn't really need BA anymore um our job was done yeah, it was um you guys decided i think uh what was it something about going back to you know uh going back to being a solo guild or something like that. Yeah, yeah 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 and i think we weren't uh, we weren't in it for the long haul you know yeah yeah you guys went on to do your thing and then i i think it was all dirty things fault uh, what do I do? What, what do I do? You know what you did. No, but tell us, tell us, like at this point, at this point, you had um, you had Derek and Money Guild, yeah, we had at their lowest team. point I've ever seen them. Okay. Yeah. So you guys almost finished them, and then we spared them. But then you threw Derek a lifeline. What happened there? That's that's what uh, what is interesting for me. I would love to know that um i vaguely remember like back then right uh gvg years uh, you probably remember how hard it was to train him right uh so many people tried to make teams and become gvg years maybe one out of a thousand made it it, it, it was brutal uh i remember at one point cargera got banned for some stupid shit about fucking kill fame boosting uh, kill fame yeah um and then i i tried every tank i could think of in the game to to replace him for two weeks so we don't lose the time plots and i could literally find nobody yeah uh and everybody i i i tried with obviously there was no synergy because it's you know four guys playing with a fifth guy for the first time so can't even expect synergy out of that so um back then um derek still has those characters i believe unless they've been banned for some reason um but he played a healer he played a tank and he played the dps so he was one of the very few people in the game that could play at a high level all three of the all, all four roles with melee dps being perhaps one of his bigger roles mm -hmm. so that was uh that was the reasoning for us that you know we have these guys they're broken why finish them off and send them to join TC when we can join forces with them to finish off this, you know? Mm -hmm. Because having three or four GVGers uh, 
extra to rotate in, to rotate out, you know, with characters, because God knows dedicate so many fucking tones, it's not even funny. And priorities on dungeons, you know how it was. Yeah. That um, that was a resource that we we didn't think there was a need to throw it away for, you know, the point of taking a 12 UTC town plot, because who cares? You know? mm -hmm. and at that point, every guild in POE had a town plot and sufficient zones because I, I was never one of those that took everything for myself and then the slaves just kept toiling in the fields, mm -hmm. uh, which is why we never won a season in, in that sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had the rent thing in Anglia going on. God damn, we made money off of that. Yeah, how much money did you guys make off of that? The, the rent thing? Oh, no, no. That was because disgusting. the territories were making so much passive income through the siphon energy. Mm -hmm. Oh, baby, we're How much so money were you guys money. making? Let's say like per day, like in a day. Uh, uh, we back then we I, and we still don't do it per day because that's too much of a hassle to calculate. But I think at uh, at the high end we were clearing maybe seven hundred million a week. Hmm. Uh, there okay. about for a good good number of months. And then obviously back then I bought a lot of gold, flipped it. So we're good. And then that, that was just from the renting? The 700 million per week? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's a lot of money. So that was like yeah. uh, the I POE's... Huh? The Western Hemisphere... That, that was a lot. The mm. Western Sphere... The West, what, what is the name of it? The Western Sphere... Oh, of Prosperity Europe. Sphere. Yeah, that was pre-inflation. <laughs> 700 yeah, mil... That was before inflation. 700 mil back then was like, let's say... A lot. Two bill, yeah, two point five bill today, right? Yeah, about yeah. 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 So, um, do you consider it a mistake that you spared Derek? Um, like looking back at it now, and then we'll get into it. Like we're going through. Looking back at it now, yes and no. Okay. No, because the choice that that, that we made at the time was pragmatic. It was the right choice to make. Gotcha. Yes, in the sense that I should have uh, snuffed him out because of what happened later. But, you know, Shinsight is a bitch. Gotcha. So that was like PoE's first breakthrough um, as a top guild alliance, right? Like you guys took down your first main enemy, right? Uh, yeah. I, uh, money I guild. <laughs> well, well, second or third, yeah. Yeah. So at this point, you guys have... Cumbria, you guys have Mercia, and you guys even start pushing into Anglia and taking that shit over. And like you said, you guys rented it out. For the rent, yeah. Yeah. How did you did, did you bring that f straight from Eve Online? Because you guys had like the whole, um, like I remember the posts on Reddit and stuff like that. You guys had it all like planned out and logistics covered and stuff like that. Like, like uh, was that was that directly from the Eve blueprint? Uh, part part of it, yes. Yes, I, I obviously compensated. I changed the things that were necessary to change because of the game mechanics in Albion. Mm -hmm. But the principle behind it of somebody exchanging silver for territories or, or uh, town plot maps or whatever was pretty much. Mm -hmm. So this and is the point. I remember we sat down. Um, I think four of us sat down. Uh, two who are no longer with us until the heat death of the universe uh and we calculated an average rate of how much a guild a shitter guild of you know 20 members could pull off of a of a tower zone in a week and then we decided you know we're gonna set the rent at 25 percent of that so they make money we make mm. so and everyone's happy yeah. Uh, you want to do a quick giveaway? Uh, you want to do a giveaway? Some chocolate let's do it. bars? Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. 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 You say some chocolate bars? <laughs> yeah, it's the rabbit because the rabbit for you to grow, you need uh, 500 chocolate bars. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, here, this is what we'll do. We'll do exclamation mark. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is donated from the boy and, and his guild. We're gonna do a quick giveaway, boys, before we get to the next part of the story. This is probably gonna be like a three hour, three hour and a half stream, uh, because we have a lot to cover. But we're getting to the queen part and the stuff that you guys are a little bit more familiar with. Almost there, yeah. Yeah. So we're almost what, there uh, with what's the Rafi's guild. Rafi's guild is called Sons of Valhalla. Shout out to them. Really? Don't know. Really? 
<laughs> what do you hey, think bro, about listen, those? They're sponsoring the donations, bro. You know, you gotta give a shout out to the boys. That's my cut, baby. That's my cut. That's my twenty-five percent. What do you think about Sons of Ala, Cindy? I have no opinion whatsoever. Nothing. <laughs> I know what I'm gonna. You said do. I haven't heard of them. So, Flacco, what are people winning with this uh, first giveaway? They're gonna get. Uh, so they're gonna get the the cotton tail egg. And 500 bars to grow it. It takes a day, and then you get the rabbit. The Excellent. How much mask. is that? How much is that? It's like six, seven mil around there. Probably. That's perfect. That was before the price crash. Though. Oh, did it? I uh, no idea. Sure. Right, I mean, the, the egg right now is uh, it's like five mil, and then the chocolate bars is like 1.5 mil. That's Gucci. That's just the and first then the game last one place. we're gonna give out is an elite masterpiece gray wolf. That's over 20 mil. So oh, that one's no. uh, yeah, that one's a big one. That'll be the end of the day. How much is that? It's like over 20 mil. All right, boys. Fuck it. Team, buddy. At the at the end of the stream, <laughs> at the end of the stream, for the people who are still going to be here, you guys went 20 plus mil. Easy peasy. Easiest money I've ever made. Yeah. Most people, when they watch this, are, are AFK. So if you guys want to win the giveaway, it's very easy because most people don't even enter. Yeah, so of get in there, boys. It's free, free cash money. And then we'll get into the, the, the Gucci stuff. Give everybody another 30 seconds. Give everybody another 30 seconds. You'll see, can you offer the guests some some nice refreshments, sir? Ah, uh, yeah, sure, why not? Guys, back right outside the uh, main recording studio here is the refreshment table if you want to come. I just stacked it with pizza, donuts, and cupcakes. What's the code word, Steve? What stage are we on? Uh, <laughs> we're on stage. Um, Sorrowful Dove, I believe. Alright. Alright, boys, let's fire up this giveaway real quick. Over 100 people, not bad for a minute. That's, yeah, that's, that was fast. Oh, that's really good. Um, Yo, whoever wins Flacco, just send them, um, when they type in the chat, if you could send them a message. Yeah, yeah, on I Twitch, got him, I got him. So we don't have to keep re rolling. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, bro. Oh, yeah, Mobraf, I spelled your name wrong. I'm so sorry, bro. Yo, what up, Gucci? Yeah, my man just spelled his name wrong. Yo, Gucci Banana, we doing, we doing a Gucci interview soon. All right, bro? Oh, God, man. <laughs> Yo, Caluzinho, my man. Let's go, baby. Caluzinho. Caluzinho. You here, bro? It's okay, boys. There's more. There's more giveaways coming. There he is, right there. Flacco's going to message you... In, uh, on Twitch. <laughs> hey, what? Where you been? What? Wait, what do you mean? I'm. I'm you haven't talked to me in like two weeks, dude. Where are you? Hello. Hello. I am uh, meditating. Meditating. I'm tired. I'm just doing meditating. <laughs> <laughs> um. I've been. I've been living the life. This isn't. Yes. I know. You're gonna have a dirt teen interview eventually. Yes. That would be the most uh, redacted interview of all time. Yeah, that's, that's number one. First of all, that's that's calm. <laughs> I'm very well behaved on anything. A pillar of the community, good sir. Of course, of course. I would never say that. Shout out to but... Gucci Banana. He cashed out with $1,500. Congratulations. Congratulations, bro. God bless. That's, that's it? Wait, what that? I mean. At least you're going to have bread, buddy. Do that. Um, you get banned, Gucci? Yeah, I think he's out. Oh, well. Yeah, but boys, let's Watch get to up. let's get to the 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 queen update because people are waiting. Damn, bro, that means for... you worked for like three or four years for fifteen hundred dollars. That money ain't mad. Hey, goddamn! You gotta suck dick and read that in like twenty minutes. I mean, it's better than zero, bro. Like, this is true. What is he supposed is to do? It? If he's not playing, it's better than zero, bro. Yeah. Boy, you just gotta power through, bro. You just gotta power through. Yo, can we get back to this interview? Uh, yeah, let's go, back, let's go back. Can, can you stop being so unprofessional, sir? Thank you so much, bro. So today I was walking down the hall. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so yet. Yet. Uh, so Cindy, listen, I never asked you this. You yeah. went on um, on a one year, I think it was one year break. Yeah. What happened? Mm, nothing in particular. I had some. Uh... I had some real life shit to to take care of, mm. and then uh, then I came back. Well, no, actually, funny thing. The only reason why why we're even sitting here mm. 
is because one day, right, I get this phone call uh, and it's Lisi Tank, you know? And he was calling me something along the lines of, you know, yo, Derek's ruining the Alliance. The boys want you to come back, come back and take it over, please. We'll do the GVGs, you do the Alliance. Who told you that? Blah, blah, blah. And then I came, then I logged in again and I, you know, saw what happened and it was, oh my God, dude. It was bleak. Who who told you that? Intense. I didn't hear. What, sorry? Who who told you that info? Oh, uh, Lacey Tank he called me. Oh, Lacey Tank. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember, like, so so you left for a year, just to yeah. paint the picture for people. You you leave for a year. Um, Derek pretty much convinces your GVG team. Uh, to go with him, and yeah. to, to reopen Oops, right? And then yeah, he also so, convinces Scoitel and Hammer and Sickle to go with him. So he pretty much... I don't blame them for that because back then Albion was a game where you you followed the GVG, you know? The the strongest GVG yeah. team. So okay. right. they at that point didn't have a, a choice. They just had to do what was best for their guilds. But essentially, as as far as I managed to recollect it after watching through the chats, I don't think I was I was AFK or gone for more than a day or two before uh, the whole hijack uh, started. Can you tell or, us what happened, what like, happened? Uh, in detail? Like, Well, I only long story short. together. Long story short, uh, the GVG team went over to him. Uh, he did his usual routine that he does, you know, how he gets, where nothing's good and everything's bad. And then um, uh, I think my guild was kicked out, and the others went with him to make and all the all the shit that followed. And then I came back. I think it was I don't think it was a year. I was gone from season three, I believe, mm -hmm. to to season seven. Or um, was it season seven? Hold on a minute. Yeah, it was probably season seven. I think it was. Uh, you guys were doing that daddy thing. If I remember right, yeah, the daddy alliance. Daddy and funny enough, the the daddy team was uh was Genov's project to to make a GVG team that backfired spectacularly. Yeah, but nobody knows who that is, bro. So uh, we don't really care yeah, about that know, part. We don't care know. about that part, bro. We care about the um. That's how the beef between you and Derek started. No. Uh, we yeah. have. So when you saw that your G you lost your GVG team to him, you lost your allies to him. Huh? Yeah, from from my POV, uh, the logs that I read, the the shit that was said, it takes a certain kind of person to uh, do that. Not even a few days after I'm gone, you know. Uh -huh. uh, so from from my perspective. Um, you know, there's no, there's no going back from that. Gotcha. So that was personal. Very, very personal. And I will, I, I've never made a secret of it. I will hunt him down and whatever shit guilt he makes until they shut the server down. Do you want to name him again? So he knows it's not a mistake. Why? We all know who he's talking about. Hey, we, we literally <laughs> just said it five times. <laughs> oh my God, Seed, wake up, Seed. Hello. That's why I said it. You said his name like five times. Like, okay. Bro, he's not people juice. Come on. <laughs> oh, but man. now what we know about Syndic is that he, he does hold things personal. He went from saying one thing, right? And then the four people who are going to be heat death and then or meet him at the end of the universe and heat death. And then uh, three Listen, guys now since then. I started. Oh, playing don't fuck with Syndic. I started playing in a very weird time, and I do still hold uh, that people have a certain sense of, you know, their word needs to mean something, their actions need to mean something, and every action has a consequence, sort right. So if somebody robs your guild, slashes your tires, you know, you're not gonna sit down and play chess with them. True. Stab him in the taint. Yeah. That's a fact. 
and maybe five years down the road, what's gonna change? Nothing. It's just time has passed, and you still got a bill to settle. Yeah. And I don't mind settling the bill this year, five years from now, or whenever they shut the server down. I'm okay with that. So again, don't piss Sidikov. This is a long, it's thought out thing of that he goes through. <laughs> no, no. It's not a matter of this enough. If you're gonna be like that, be like that. But I can be a lot worse. Mm -hmm. Deesh. Told you. Would you call that a grudge or or is it different? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Gotcha. And it's not one of those grudges where, you know, you're fired up today, and then a week later you don't really give a fuck. Cause, cause I was really fired up about dirty and losing like sixty beetles in one week. <laughs> But then I got over it, you know, because it's dirty. You know, yeah. okay. it's, it's just money. You can't stay mad at dirty. Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah, I mean, why would I be mad at him? He is what he is. Yeah. So have you ever buried the hatchet with somebody, Syndic? Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. Like somebody you had a big grudge against? Um, well, yeah, of course. Um, Can you give us an example? Nobody that you would remember in a sense, but... But what was the situation? What was no, the situation? No, 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 I bet it the axe with you. Yeah. <laughs> well, but we never yeah, actually I, mean, had... I was going to say, this is a pretty good example. Yeah, but that, this, that was never personal. Good example. That was never personal, though. I mean, maybe not to you. Do you remember what you used to call me and shit? Well, what did I used to call you? And be there at my tower every day at any time. <laughs> and fucking be at my war camp and be at my castle and beat yeah. poor Dorothy on the head when he was calling. <laughs> That's true. We've been around. We we've been around each other for a long time. That's and true. And whack my poor hideouts in something ravine via your proxy Scuscapel. Yeah. I mean, uh, and the Shiro would come over and talk to me. <laughs> Bro, but that's what that's what's crazy. Most people they don't understand that. Like we played, me and you played the same game for such a long time, but oh, yeah. literally ninety percent of the time we spent it against each other, or yeah. or or at least not with each other. You know, just doing other things in the game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's like people just blow that shit out of proportion, you know. Um, but okay, we'll get but that to that. Was in a sense, you know, uh, what the beef you could say uh -huh. that we had. It wasn't based on me doing something to you. Like I, I didn't do anything to you. I didn't rob your guild. I didn't, you know. Um, it was just in-game shit. It, it was just honey. It was just in-game stuff. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, like, you came back after a couple of seasons, and you had nothing, yes. pretty much. You had a, 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 a fairly broken guild. Um, guild was dead at that point. Um, no so alliance. No GVG team. Yeah, so, we had nothing. Uh, so, how do you how do you pick up after that? Okay, so somebody, um, somebody asked. Uh, when I came back, I sat down with uh, an acquaintance and okay. they asked me, how do we fix the GVG problem? And then I said, delete it. And then I spent all of season seven uh, when I found out it was going to be a thing. I spent all of season seven. We were running around. What was it called? Gluvia or something with S. I, I remember. Yeah, yeah, that. We were uh, running around castles, fighting KFC, you know, learning how to ZVZ. Because yeah. for me, I knew how to call because I've called in 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 Guild Wars, in Warhammer, in EVE, in, you know, X different games. So it, there's nothing complex about it. The only thing I needed to learn was uh, how, how the items interacted uh, the meta and stuff like that ways to determine what the meta is to find that way to break it mm -hmm. i think we're watching the, on one of the results on the stream um but yeah we spent all of season seven and the Havalonian whatever it was called uh season by just practicing zvz and mm -hmm. i think we were massing around 40 people at the time no 20 people 20 people and we had i had a guy leading a side zerg so so we had a two front zerg and it was super you know bare bones but we were practicing and you know getting into it yeah and i remember some of those fights and you guys started yeah. out pretty we trash 
and then yep. and then it's like it got better and then i remember one day you guys fucked us up and i was like what the fuck just happened so it, you guys would come to bleak board yeah. i remember that distinctively we would zone in we were dead yeah and i think we did that a few times and every time we did it we obviously we recorded and the problem with cvc is that especially with the way blue army was playing it wasn't just enough to watch my own perspective i had to watch the other perspective to see what your bomb squads were doing how it was happening what your how your healers were positioned and so on and so on so so there was a lot of um the research that needed to be done there to figure out yo how do we take what they're doing apply it to what we're doing and use it as our own style to not do the same thing but do something different mm -hmm. impossible Wait, so you guys you guys you were actually going into straight up into all the details and everything but we went all the way all the way um so you guys put in the work that's respectable um and yeah, i mean we're gonna get to queen in a second but you guys came out swinging like a motherfucker on queen uh but right before we get to that right, right before the, uh we get to that um how hard was it for you to come back and resist the urge to go swing when you saw uh your old friends ellipsis and derek working together how hard it, it was it for you to resist the urge to go like try to swing at them not hard at all so you were able to just block that shit out for now there's nothing to block that out i i didn't have a bat that was sufficiently big to walk up to them and club them over the head and murder them gotcha. so i needed to you gotta remember the in game bro you gotta remember the in game bro yeah but you know what i mean like i at the time did not have a zerg that i could do anything with there yeah. was i and i didn't have a gvg team to do anything with so there was no point in trying to um vent my ego for whatever reason the the only thing i needed to do was look inwards and focus on uh shit inside and build from there mm -hmm. which is pretty much what i what i do 90 percent of the time i don't pay attention to the other guilds around me. Gotcha. like outside of poe i i spend most of my time playing with uh because that's one thing actually if i can digress that i much prefer in the queen system what's that in the in the gvg system right uh the one thing i always hated was how it turned out into the five of us sitting in a channel and that was it the rest of the guild couldn't join the channel we would sometimes go to their channel but it was mostly like there was a lot of and i'm and i'm really ashamed to say that exclusion uh, excluding exclusion and i and i really hate looking in hindsight how the whole elitist attitude even though i understood it at the time it was toxic in a way uh, and i don't like it i prefer sitting in the channel with you know 20 30 guys in our home zone and just running around and playing the game and you know doing stupid shit mm -hmm. because we're just having fun you know we're playing a video game yeah so queen in that sense is, is, is it, it's a lot better game than what i uh what i played when i stopped playing even though i came back and it was still a little bit of, to go until queen yeah but i knew what was coming so it was easy to to adjust to that and 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 that was rewarding in itself because i knew that even though i maybe won't ever have a zerg that was uh able to play on that level i at least made the gvgs go away gotcha. so that was that was at least something so you had a pretty big impact on the gvgs disappearing from the game in that sense but i i just said my opinion once i don't know how it came around that it actually happened i have no fucking idea but gotcha. i just said it started. Gotcha. i mean i feel the exact same way with you because like when i used to g just gvg all the time first of all the zvz back back in the day was terrible because although it, it was, was fun it was fun to participate but the lag was <clears throat> just terrible like i remember fights in uh pit something pitfall pit shore something right we would throw a glacial and then just 
whatever band in place. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you either get kills or you die. Like, yeah. There, yeah, there's no pretty pretty yeah. Much. Like people would literally just show up to support their guilds and alliances, not for enjoyment, because especially on reset days. Like, bro, yeah. reset days were terrible. Like, either the zone they was were, locked, they, they there was no queue. Locked. Yeah, they, like, there was no queue back in the day. Or um, you yeah. would just get glacial, then lag out and stuff like that. So it took them years to perfect the ZVZ. Either you lock the map, or you lagged out. Or oh, trap them inside their town plot. That was pretty good, too. Oh, yeah, yeah that, that, that was always good. But, like, the resets for me were even more annoying, because, like, I I never really got involved in back then in PoE 1.0 in building the Zerg, you know. Yeah. I, I just picked, you know, yo, you wanna call, you wanna call, you wanna call. Okay, do this and go call, and then I just left them to it, you know, with hilarious fucking results. Yeah, but so, I mean, uh, but that's how it was because you were leading the GVG team. Like, I was gonna say, even when I was doing GVG only, yeah, um, there was no way that I could have made it. No way. Yeah, like you're doing you're doing Hellgates to practice, for example, when you're not GVGing. And so you're chilling in the five man channel, you know, occasionally people fame. will come chill. You're fame, you're old. Right, you're fame. You're, fame, you're, yeah. second old, you're third old. You know, a lot of work went in, 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 into that. Yeah. A lot of work. And the guild definitely suffered. Every guild definitely suffered that. Yes, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, I'm, and, and I'm really ashamed about that. My guild at the time was me and my team having fun and 295 members who are, you know, the Supporting. nicest guys ever but they were just spectators right and i personally find that disgusting in, yeah. in in a way that's not the video game because like i played at it and i won it but i didn't like it in that sense because i don't like the elitist bullshit. i want that new guy that joined my guild today with his 1100 ip on his little soul site to come out and have fun yeah and, like with me and together and all of that I don't like when it's only that guy that because he's a banger with, with 1100 IP, you know, who gives a fuck about that? Yeah. hundred percent. I like that about you. That's what I like about C too, because C is always about trying to give people content and making people happy. And you know, he's always C hanging out with his boys. You know, like I see you Syndic in your, in your discord, you're always, uh, in a channel with a bunch of people and stuff like that. Whenever I can, whenever I can. Yeah, I wish I could be there more because, um, with work and other shit, I have to I have to time my time uh, when I'm gonna be there, when I'm gonna go AFK. Uh, but I wish that I could spend more time, especially with this new update, which unfortunately missed because uh, we got banned for not that thing. Right. Uh, it, it it it's been really good, small scale especially. Yeah, I heard good things. Um, it's really, really good. We, we touched and, and I know that when we talk that, you know, novelty will wear off after the first month. It did to, to a degree, it did wear off, but it didn't wear off to the point where it completely vanished. Albion is a much different game now from, from, from six months ago when it was, you know, one, like one timer at the top of the hour, you show up and then you log off. Like, those guilds are dying because the game is not built for that anymore. Right. And that's how it should be. Right. Yeah, the CTA timer mentality is pretty you can't so oh, I have to agree with not. that. I right. think the next thing that's kind of logical, and, and I know that despicable gluttony was talking about it. Uh <laughs> what'd you call him? <laughs> you call him despicable gluttony? <laughs> I think it's <laughs> it's logical to assume that they're gonna go the extra mile and make the current activity based zone presence system extend to territory captures and just do away with the whole CTA. So give me an example. How would that work? Like let's say you mass you up. Live in a zone, you okay. drag vortexes to the tower, the more vortexes you drag, the better your ownership of the tower, something along those lines. Gotcha. Roughly. Activity based yeah. ownership. Uh, that's good. I like that. I think it might go in that direction. I can't say I know a hundred percent. I don't know, obviously, but I think it's uh, it's likely because this update has given a lot of good stuff to the game. Even though the meta right now is very toxic towards the players, 
I actually have no idea what, who the fuck they were listening to when they came up with this, but which meta? It's still good. Uh, the one shot uh, bullshit. Right. Because right now, uh, they changed the debuff, right? Yeah. For the end time. And they made it into variable. So before you would have a debuff of minus 30%, you would do minus 30% damage. But okay. now they made it so that when two zergs of 30% meet, they do full damage. So every weapon got buffed by 30% or 40%, whatever. And, and on top of that, they buffed Escalation, which is fair game, you know. Somebody making a good shot, great. But when you're fighting Zergs that are rolling around in A3 Excellence, it's uh, pretty much, you know, boom, gone. Mm. Yeah, yesterday I was playing Longbow and one shot at a clump of tanks, and I was like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah, yeah. It, like, it's, it's ridiculous the amount of damage you do now. I, I've always been against that, specifically. Because they've, like they've they've done stuff like that in previous debuff iterations, and I was like, "What are you guys doing?" Because, bro, nobody just think about this from from the average player's perspective. Okay, let's say you're an average player, you put on some gear, and you go to the CTA or you go to the fight, you ride three maps, four maps, if you're lucky. Ten maps. If you're lucky, yeah. <laughs> Ten maps seems like the average right now and for a long time, but for these big fights, but. You put on the gear, you go, maybe you get ganked on the way, but if you make it to the CTA, well, maybe goes in the what, if it, yeah, what if you get one shot, uh, what if you get one shot and then you got to re-gear, come back, run a whole bunch of maps? That's not fun for anybody. Bro. That, that's how it is. That's how it is. That's, how that's it exactly is. how it is right now. We had a guy yesterday. He's at the end. We're like, yeah, no, I that one time. This guy comes out of nowhere. Oh, no, yeah, I died like six times. Like, bro, that's not fun at all, man. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. And and it's like, we've had debuff iterations where it's like, people were living a long time. And I was like, how the fuck oh, yeah. is that bad? That was, that was the, the forever For my POV, it wasn't bad. But once again, like, I'm not complaining about this because, you know, I am adapting to this debuff. I will adapt to it. And uh, there's nothing anybody can do about it. In that sense, I will adapt to it and we'll find a solution for it. If that means going into a dungeon, 400 people will go into a fucking dungeon. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you get the point. Like, uh, isn't it more fun with more time to kill? Like, as long as people are not unkillable, you know? I but had a lot more fun in, in Season 9, I believe. Season 9, but the, the first war against Elevate was very fun. Yeah. Like, um, I remember in in the previous seasons too and then later it, it basically most seasons one shotting was pretty much the meta like whether it was yeah, from a bomb was. squad or not so i yeah. the, the least fun i had was like Ooh. in in some of the earlier seasons where it was like uh bomb squad versus bomb squad so i'll give you an example let's say we were in the castle and you guys were outside the castle and you guys had a bomb squad and we had a bomb squad the main zerg I never had a bomb squad. Yeah, I'm just giving an example, bro. <laughs> I'm trying to wait, bro. <laughs> but let's say, let's say that my main Zerg, I couldn't engage on you because if I engaged on you, the bomb squad would counter engage on me and one shot the whole Zerg. So yeah. it would literally be both Zergs Dang. inside yeah. and outside the castle being just static. Dance. Yeah, exactly. Both, both, both. Being static and, and hoping Make that your bomb squad outkills their bomb squad. That's it. That's, yep. that's the whole thing. Hashtag damnation. Whoa, 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 buddy, whoa, whoa. Bro, come on, that. Yeah, that shit gives me PTSD, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know how many times I got one shot, bro? I have done it, I'm not gonna lie. I, I've done it and I've laughed. Yeah. I've buddy, done bro. it and I've killed Mojo and laughed as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm going to CTA, three guys, 100 kills. It's like, what the yeah, fuck exactly. is wrong with the game? <laughs> exactly. well, it's funny, because right when Arch started doing it, like, 10 days later, it was nerfed. I was like we got on too late yeah you guys Damn, we you were, guys were hella late to that <laughs> 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 like, they're ready for the patch change they're ready for the patch change yeah, yeah, yeah. oh <laughs> hey look at that we could probably try that i think at least that did it to us dude at a castle like we're standing there you know we have our uh, we have our whaling bomb squad we have this and that and stuff and then suddenly we're all dead and it's like wait wait what happened yeah it's terrible just stag, dude oh <laughs> yo it's like everybody you said it was against Artista? Uh, yeah, I I think it was 
it was made in br they would come to anglia and fuck around with shiro and something yeah. something yeah yeah so it was fun times definitely definitely um but not really though <laughs> but not really uh we touched a little bit on on the queen update since we're here now we hit the, yeah. the queen update uh we touched a little bit on when when um uh squad and poe we started fighting with each other i dropped two hideouts and you destroyed my first yeah um so we started fighting with each other uh when did you because we fought against each other um and then we stopped right and then we went and yeah. did other shit. i went to fight tc you went to fight surf i think uh yeah we had other obligations so we're like okay yo we could chill we'll get yeah. to this later and then we started fighting again and then we we chilled again and then finally you came at us with the the full force of arch africa poe when did you smell weakness in the squad and you were like all right this is time i didn't not in that sense uh to me i i i don't really do i don't really play in those opportune ways where i wait for somebody to be you know weak and then i'm gonna <laughs> rub my little balls and then bounce i don't Have really you do before, that though? Uh, I have my pause for other things, but um, <laughs> after our first bout, um, you might remember we were talking with Sun about joining us, uh, and then Sun was having problems with Surf, and then via Sun we were talking with Surf about working with us to deal with you, right? Gotcha. Uh, and then the Indian said, uh, let me think about it. Right? And he said that at 16 UTC. At, at 18 UTC, he was bombing our Q in Flamex <laughs> Shout so out to when... Dominic, dude. <laughs> you gotta I mean, respect it, dude. You gotta respect it. 100%. You got to. He does what he wants. You gotta respect yeah. it, bro. Repercussions don't oh, yeah. matter. When, uh, so when we had a little, uh, let's say, peace. Then I went to talk with Dominic about his behavior. Then he got evicted from Bridgewatch first time. Mm, yes. Um, and then after that, I think it was Glutton's idea to to bring in Last Sworn uh, for the for the final showdown. Yeah, because uh, Africa hated I, I, Artista. I, hated. Yeah, he did hate him. And I think Artista fought the last. I think his tower was his hideout tower was i believe the last to go because he was holding a uh tier 8 farm plot which is you know two chokes and fuck you you know yeah yeah so we lost we lost all of eu <coughs> god bless artista artista he really gained my respect in that war because he was able to hold na you know like yeah yeah he held on i was coming yeah, to he never let us down bro yeah never. yeah i was going to help um um with our zerg on na but he was doing like he made up his own alliance and he did yeah, his yeah, own yeah. politics so my respect for him went times two when that shit happened because he was able to hold on to na but on eu we got obliterated uh poe became the new force on eu and we got wiped off the map on eu um we're still living those we still live in those yeah you get where you guys are living now right uh, is Sunkable Spring the oldest still intact hideout in the game? I don't know if it's the oldest. I know I've placed it on on day one of Queen. I've, I've placed two hideouts uh, because back then uh, crafting was a little bit different and you could gain some money by refining in the black zone as well. Mm -hmm. So I placed the hideout in Spring and I placed the hideout in Curve. And I hedged my bets, you know, whichever one survives, good. Because you were, you know, running around whacking hideouts. Yeah. Uh, and then you whacked curve, spring went live, easy baby. Yeah. And we've been in spring ever since. Gotcha. So here we're getting to the interesting parts, boys. I know it's been a long way, but we're getting to the interesting parts. Because we're getting to a guild that you guys are all familiar with. Um, and in season nine, that guild was Elevate, right? So Elevate was pretty much a combination of a lot of cores from different guilds that were kind of bored yeah. where they were and they came together and they made a guild to win the season 
right? So they had they really had the best of the best, and they came out swinging that season like a motherfucker. High pulls, yeah, high yeah. gear, uh, GVG teams, <clears throat> all that stuff. Forget about that, huh? Yeah. So what th th that's 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 when the would you say that's when the hype guild meta began? I believe so. Yeah. I believe they were one. Well, if you want to be honest, BA was the first hype guild, right? Okay. Uh, in a sense, but you guys were the only hype guild that managed to survive for, uh, you know, up until recently when you guys decided that enough is enough, you know, you're going to retire at winning a season and that's it. Yeah. Uh, but most of the other guilds that, yep. you know, came out as hype guilds over the years, including Take Care, including, you know, uh, the Pendolino minus five or whatever the fuck it was called. Uh, they all last, they shine for a, for a month or two or three and then they just die. Mm -hmm. So in the long run, they're irrelevant. But Blue Army was the one that broke the mold and that's it. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of guilds today are, are have a lot of similarities to be in terms of like the regular system. That the comp is very defensive, counter engage type of thing. It's all very similar. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I would say that the hype guild meta though started around that time because after Elevate, we saw um, a bunch of different guilds just keep reforming, rebranding, reforming. Yeah, you had yeah. Raid, yeah. you had Rank, I've you had. I've seen that before. Oh, I've seen yeah. that before. Uh, we were fighting in a different game, obviously. Uh, well, two different games. We kept beating the same group of people and they kept disbanding and reforming in, into new clumps of refugees. And with each cycle, there would be less of them, worse of them, less of them, worse of them. Um, and not, obviously, finally, they shut down that server, but um, when they all quit uh, at the end. Mm -hmm. But um, they just kept rebranding. They, they just kept rebranding until the bitter end. Mm -hmm. Then, obviously, we kept. Uh, no. Yeah. So how did that war start uh, with Elevate? Because I believe they were uh, working by themselves first. They came into our first. zone and they dropped a hideout in our zone. Okay. Just like, for content what? or? Like, I don't know, but this is a trend. Like, I'm sitting here minding my business, doing my stuff, <laughs> and then these motherfuckers come into my zone, they drop, my, they drop a hideout, they blow up a hideout, they launch a tower and then I show up and then they start crying and then I show up again and they cry harder Then they take it personal. Then I show up again and then then it's some grand holy crusade to remove POE from the game. And I just show up and then they, uh, you know, a month or two or three or 12 and then they fuck off and die. Grand. Mm. Uh, I believe in this war, I was watching this war from the outside and I remember uh, we saw a shift in your mentality and how you approach uh these type of fights because i remember yeah, for right. example when you didn't need to zvz in the old map you were like don't give them content we'll bore them to death you know yes whereas in season nine you, you it was the opposite you were literally showing up every single timer every single day with no excuses what was the why did you make that shift in gameplay in play style uh, to win, of course, uh, because that's the only thing that matters. Um, in, in a sense, I don't, uh, for me, uh, I personally don't care if, if uh, and I try to teach this to my players as well, and members. I personally don't care if they die a hundred times, a thousand times. I have spent the last, you know, since release, uh, making money in 10 different ways. And I've squirreled it away, and eventually they're gonna shut down the server, right? Mm -hmm. This game will shut down eventually. So I I have no problems blowing through money. I don't care. It's it's, it's just silver. Okay. So if I need to win a thousand sets to achieve something, well, I'm I'm happy to do that. But for my POV, in order to win this war, uh, by inting a thousand sets we would give the enemy what they want which in of itself is something that's bad why should we give them entertainment why should we be beholden 
Like, we're the only alliance in this game. Somebody made coalition against five fucking times. Nobody else had a coalition made against, or, or like a server-wide coalition. Why do you think that is? I don't know, because they're salty cunts. <laughs> Besides that, do you think there's any reason? Do you think it's because they're, they're disliked for you? Or do you just think people uh, underestimate PoE? Because you guys don't have the elite CVC hype guilds uh, per se in your alliance. So people think... <laughs> and it's easy to brand you guys as the bad guys too. Obviously, because PoE has been around since release. And throughout the years, throughout the season, uh, there's been a lot of, let's say, bad press, BOE. God knows I've had a few clips of, uh, you know, taken awkward situation where I've said stuff I regret later. Mm -hmm. um, you know, human stuff. Uh, and a lot of just bad propaganda about us. So it's different when somebody has four years of bad propaganda versus a hype guild that was made yesterday that's going to disband tomorrow. You, nobody cares about uh, Escalator or, or Elevate Freeman or whatever the fuck they're called. Because, you know, in a week when somebody goes on vacation or focuses on family or starts a new business and then two weeks later starts a small-scale casual guild, it's going to be the same shit over again. Just different name, maybe different alliance. Right. But with PoE, it's always up until this point. Uh, it's always been the same tag, same guilds. So the bad press has been building up in that sense. Yeah. But uh, let me ask you a question real quick. Do you actually care about bad press? No, I don't. Not at all. Just the effect that it has on others and and whatnot, right? Personally, you you just don't give a fuck. There is um, this is something that I try to tell my guys when I when I have one of those moments where I try to teach him something. The only enemy that's gonna break my guys is the one between their ears. Uh, since season eight, I've had a number of players who allowed themselves to be broken by their feelings. But I, I also have a lot of players who uh, managed to sustain it and keep a strong mental approach and just keep moving forward. Um, in that sense, uh, I'm I'm very proud to be playing this game with them, but especially. But we actually had a guild meeting not not a while ago. Um, I think last week or the week before that, uh, and, and I made a point to um, elucidate to my guys that the guild is not just me. I'm not the guild. I'm irrelevant in that sense. I'm just the guy that makes some money so they can throw sets. But there's a lot of heroes in the guild, just like there was heroes in Blue Army, like Silfrey and the others. Right. Same same kind of heroes are in in CIR. This you know that guy Hanzo does so many lodges. That dude is insane. There's, Shout out to there's Hanzo. all my the crazy Italian with his recruiting. There's there's so many other guys that are putting in work every 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 day and just moving forward. So. Um, I try to, I always try to explain to my players that the only thing that's going to break them is themselves, aka what's between their ears. Mm -hmm. uh, in that sense, I don't care what Twiddle D and Twiddle Dum think about me or the guild or the alliance because uh, nothing that some 15 year old uh, smear on the ground can say is going to stop me from being in the mass, being there for the match. Yeah. And then coming out on the field and either running into them and killing them or going in a dungeon, whichever works. I don't care what works. But do you understand how rare that is for someone to be like that on a game like this? Um, <clears throat> like, that's like, for someone for someone in a game like this to not care what people think, I, I would say there's it's, it's one in a thousand. I mean, maybe. I, I honestly don't know why anybody would care uh, what somebody on the what somebody on the internet thinks. I mean, I've uh, I think I've made a point. I've been called much worse things by my members, and I've called them much worse things. But it's always in a you know spirit of um, I, I want to say friendship. 
I, I don't want to say that we just talk about nasty stuff. Mm. Uh, we have some <laughs> quite... Um, there's a lot of sad stories in Albion and there's a lot of funny stories in Albion. Let's put it that way. Right. Yeah, I mean, but, but back to the propaganda thing that you were saying. It's 100% true. First of all, it's, it's important to, to deal with it like you, where it's like you should not give a fuck at all. Any because I see a lot of these guilds, they're scared to 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 be a little bit different. They're scared to try to stand out a little bit more, or try to do a different. It seems like everybody's following the same blueprint nowadays. You know, yeah, yeah. And, and most of them copy the things that either I've done or you've done or both of us have done. There's no like sure maybe I'm doing some some stuff that's a little bit further ahead in some ways for further behind other ways but essentially every guild does the same shit everybody has renters of some description right everybody does regears in some fashion that they do everybody has their callers their regear officers their logi guys their um you know recruiters their propaganda teams and whatnot it's all the same shit there's no difference right. between guilds the only difference is i haven't disbanded yeah. And then I haven't gone on vacation and focused on what well, I did, you know, two, two years ago. But I don't do it every season. I don't do it every month. And I certainly don't do it after a, a chain of accidental wipes, you yeah. know. Because you were there when our necklace friend got wiped a few times. And then it was, oh, sorry, boys. Yo, we're oh, oh, I'm burned out. Oh, no, the harder. Oh. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then five minutes later, yo, we're making a small scale build. Oh no, wait, there's 300 of us. Oh no, BA members, please. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's impossible. No, it's impossible. It's impossible. Yeah, yeah, Shout out to them. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you're, you, bro, you're 100 percent right. And this is, this is what people do. Um, first of all, if they can't beat you in game, this is what they do. They go at your character right yeah so anything that you've said in the past they'll twist it they'll use it against you they'll photoshop it whatever whatever it is <laughs> so that's step number one if they see that you're not affected by it you know what they do now they start going they huh they take it out of the game no oh yeah they do oh, that of course they other do, people <laughs> they do that of course but what they do what they do is then they go to the people around you yep right and then yep. what they do is they try to make people feel guilty for being with you. Yep, been there, heard that. So it's it's exactly the same shit that I see, like, obviously on a much smaller scale. But for example, when I see like uh, what's going on with Trump, I'm a big Trump fan. I'm sorry for all you people out there. I know you're not allowed to say this on uh, on YouTube and stuff like that, but I'm a big Trump fan. Uh, and the reason why is because it's not really about his politics. I'm talking about as, as a person. Uh, or even like a Joe Rogan or some shit. When I see everybody gang up and going to that person and then trying to assassinate their character, and then when that doesn't work, they go they go to the to make people feel bad for supporting them. You know, they, they like bro. If you're an American, you say you're a Trump fan, and I'm not American by the way, but, uh, nor do I live there. But I'm saying I, I see videos. If you're if you go outside and say you're a Trump fan. Bro, people will just give that shit to you, you know? Like, people just roast the fuck out of you. Um, it doesn't apply to everything, because if R. Kelly was in this situation, it wouldn't work. Like, because I'm you not going to support somebody, right? No, 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 that, bro, that's different. You're supporting... Uh, nobody here is supporting R. Kelly. That's first of all, bro. Nobody out here is supporting R. Kelly, bro. <laughs> He had tons of supporters and it was crazy, right? And the, so I, that's why I, I, I always attribute the same thing to Trump. Like, man, this is kind of weird, but he's getting ganged up on. And I kind of I kind of feel bad for him. The same thing that you said, like, I kind of feel bad exactly, for him. Exactly, exactly. At least he's not, you know, into what R. Kelly was into. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A hundred percent. Like, I'm not talking about the politics. I'm talking about someone as a character, like uh, someone's character. His character. For example, character, yeah. like, what right. did the guy do that's ever so bad? That people are calling him a, a Nazi and all the all the other stuff, right? So I see the same thing with people like uh, Syndic, for example. It's not like uh, every you, you guys have to remember. Everybody in this game starts with the same rule set. 
all right nobody here has a fucking bot that's that's uh collecting you free money your social karma yeah then nobody here has has a, a a cheat code that's giving you free silver uh bringing in all the members right teaching you how to shot call none of us have a cheat code for any of that shit these are all stuff that that uh each person works for you know i was muted i was muted i'm here that's true yeah, but this is all stuff that people worked for, and everybody starts yeah. with the same rule set. Everybody starts with the same fucking rules. So it's not like you're cheating. Yeah, do you want to know something funny? What's up? Do you remember when we had the, you know, the GVGs and the, the tower side resources? Yeah. I still have all of those in the chest. I haven't touched them. Yeah, so you're stacked. Of course I'm stuck. <laughs> You're stuck. I haven't touched a single bit of resources. I I think I actually took out a little bit of seven one wood. Okay. because uh, we needed some. That's about it. You uh, Jumbo, that was just, or what? Jumbo, that was just an example, bro. You get the point though. You get the point. You can you can okay. replace that name with another name and it'll be the Jumbo same. Jumbo is a banger, good sir. He's a good guy. Yes, he is. He is a banger and he is also another person that's uh you know not weak in that sense that he breaks uh he's been at it for a long time uh and i and i know i'll see him uh next year as well but you mentioned that you have been pushed on by five giant coalitions sure and i'm, I'm pretty sure that i've been on both sides of that right yeah so I, just uh, say, no, like, I, I don't actually i don't think i've been against you in any no you haven't you haven't yeah right matter of fact uh... the closest thing you've gotten to that was when in season nine when your despicable leader tried to blackmail me <laughs> and asked for three billion silver to stay I remember that, dude. at which that was... point i told him to go eat a beep you know it was probably my idea <laughs> It was probably your idea, yeah. <laughs> that was one of the funniest shit that I've been to be Despicable. Bro, see, this, this, this is why... Uh, look, man. For me, uh, I beef with Eric for a long time. I beef with Syndic for a long time. I'm a fan of these people because these motherfuckers speak their minds, you know? Like, right. they, they, don't, they don't really... They, they don't really... Like, and we need more people like that. You guys, you guys think? You guys think we need less people like this? Well, that's exactly oh, we what I was, what like I was saying. What I was saying that line, that, that, what I was I'm bringing up was that. Anybody, no. I'm, that was I'm literally in my own little small pocket <laughs> of the black zone, and I'm minding my own business. <laughs> I, I have not invaded anybody in this game except uh, Luxie. <laughs> Luxie and, is poor. Uh, <laughs> but the only but again, I, the only reason I ever invaded those two chuckle fucks was because they came and helped my enemy against me. So after every coalition expanded, I made a very conscious effort to go to every alliance that was helping them and say hello with a nice demo. With a nice demo. Um, so, but what I was saying, what I was saying real quick, let me finish my thought. The ahead, reason why man. I brought that up is because what exactly what you were saying, Mojo, like that, he just said he sits there and gets problems to his front door. He is the end game, right? It's so good for the game, in my opinion. Like to have that that one huge force in the game that is is such a a goal for everybody else to take down because just like with, with what banana did to us right um he, he he stuck to his guns he lost twice came back and 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 won the war in the long run right that shit is is scary but so much fun like i i I, I can complain all day about waking up at 6 a.m. for this and that, but that was like, I enjoyed that shit. And that's you know, the reason why yeah, I play the fucking game. You know what I now mean? Now like, that you've mentioned it, see, now, now that you mentioned it, I have to give credit where credit's due, right? Uh, uh, a lot of people gave Banana shit for starting stuff with Arch and, you know, not helping them finish POE, quote unquote. But having sat with Banana in calls and it's almost like i don't know how to say it but 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 i understand the man on a, on a on a deeper level and i respect what he's doing because he doesn't give up he just keeps moving forward there's no yeah. you know guilds break if they're white because they care about killboards you know andrew and company one bad killboard that guild's dead and we all know right. but banana can lose a thousand people today he'll be back tomorrow and that i fucking respect it to the end Definitely.
I mean, uh, but, but how many people uh, are left like that seed in the game? Like, I, like do you, you respect Banana, right? Yeah, I respect Banana. Oh, oh, Banana used to be an Arch, for you guys who didn't know. He yeah. was in Arch. He left Arch and we started fighting and I smacked him daily. But right? I mean, and then all of these years later, these two years later, like, still in conflict. He still, he stuck to his fucking guns. Think like, of it this way. I respect right. that more than fighting somebody for a season, shaking hands after and being allies. I yeah, Give me an eternal, that. give me an eternal goal. You know what I mean? Give me somebody to shoot for later. Yeah. And uh, that's what Banana represents to me. Like, he's somebody who did what he said he was going to do no matter how long it took him. Right, and uh, like Cynic said, moved forward after that and had new goals to, and new things to do. Like, if, if you think about it, before, before Banana did this thing on 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 Arch, right? He spent four months uh, with me and Mojo throwing the whole kitchen sink at him in in Bridgewatch, and yeah. sometimes Jungle too. But uh, we definitely threw the kitchen sink sometimes. Uh, we won sometimes he was touch and go, but but we were pounding his ass, you know Like day in day and out for four months And, and that was that, tough man at one point one punch tough. man was yeah, like the strongest guild in the game tough. at one point One punch y'all they were nasty And then uh, before that it was just me throwing the kitchen sink at him and then he just kept growing and getting more numbers and you know like respect to the guy he never gave up and like he was in the streets shaking hands, bro. He, he just kept going. <laughs> and like, you know, when when my guys fight, my guys are enthusiastic about stuff. So they, they say stuff in local and and all kinds of stuff. So, um, you know, some maybe not kosher stuff was said, but, you know, respect him. He has earned our respect the same way Maktab did. By fighting us over and over again until we sat down and we became friends. And, 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 and this may not be a popular opinion, but this is also in the same vein of why I respect Dominic, because he will take a loss, he'll fuck get fucked no, up, he he doesn't he'll care. fucking get evicted, and he'll and he'll get evicted, he'll lose, but he'll be back. It doesn't it's matter. It's different. It's different, it's the, it's different the, people. Though. The light turns on, the cockroaches scatter. Right? It, it, oh, it's like a limited time boss. You know, you got the three main bosses, a secret boss. You know, main bosses was like, you know, Derek, Mojo, Syndic, and then secret boss, maybe Glenny. And then you got the limited time, which is, you know, Dominic, Mamono, all these guys. They come and go, you know, every other season. This is how I see this game, to be honest. Like, you, after spending some time with Banana and helping him exterminate the the ghost of degenerates um he can call me at any point i will bring every child soldier we have left <laughs> he's earned it he did earn it yeah definitely uh, like uh i don't know if you can compare damde and banana though because I haven't this like. I wasn't comparing them. I say in the kind of like yeah, the same Tom, vein, better. right? Like, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Like with with tenacity being a thing, right? He may lose the war, but he's gonna be back. Uh, there's not yeah. tenacity, in Dominic. Bro. I think. <laughs> I think. I think. <laughs> okay, maybe that's, not, maybe that's not. Maybe that's not the accurate word to use, but. But he's he's also somebody who's been around for a while. Right? He's like a roach. You know, you step on him. Turn the light on, and the fucking roaches show up, right? Like that's exactly what I just. Yeah. Gotcha. See. Yeah. Dominate waits for you to zone in and then he hits your Q and then he pulls the board and he's <laughs> <in> this <board. laughs> hey, He makes an announcement with the battle let board the and mind shit. Games, let the mind games begin, bro. Hey, that's part of War 2. He calls me victory. I haven't posted a battle board in two years. Listen. Um, it's not because, you know, yeah. I'm going to bring you back to... to I'm going to bring you back to the... Well, I mean, you're not wrong, bro. The... the as soon as battle boards came out and people started counting people you know because yeah, the, the way yeah, it was yeah. before like sometimes you fought where you had less numbers sometimes you fought when you had more numbers at the end of the day you're fighting that's it if, if, you, if you can win you go for it doesn't matter if they have 300 more or or if they have uh three times less than you <laughs> exactly if, if you're gonna win you send everything yeah, like now people are comparing blob sizes and comparing numbers and being like, oh my god, you had three more people in the battle board. It doesn't count. It doesn't count. It's like, come on, bro. It, it's, it's, oh, but the game's designed to balance that out. What do you mean? It, it became it became a little bit too ridiculous, man. It became way too ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah. Like personally, to me, like I'm I'm all about including my guild members and my friends into my activities. So if I have 59 on mine, there's going to be 59 motherfuckers with ZVZ gear on that field. Yeah. Or maybe 58, because one's a gatherer. Yeah. And I don't care if it's 400 of me versus 10 of them. If needed, we'll take turns on the corpse. Fine. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I mean... I don't stream. Huh? <laughs> you just got. It just ran you over here on the clip. Oh yeah, we. Are, I'm playing a lot of uh, PoE versus squad videos. That's uh, all. Oh look at Wales, bro. Uh, yeah. This Wales is the nicest guy ever. The the first time I met Wales, right? He uh, he launched on us in a GVG and he sent me the literally a three paragraph letter that was so polite and out of this world that I just couldn't hold it against it. That's cute, bro. He's a good guy. He's such a nice guy, dude. Such a nice guy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let, let me bring you back to where we were in the in the story yeah. Yeah. of Syndic. Uh, we left off at um, so you guys you guys slowly grinded Elevate down on their first coalition, first anti POE yeah. coalition. Yes. And what happens? They say, "Fuck POE, we're gonna go fight BA now." Yeah. So they switch locks. They come they come over to us. Uh, we were in a rebuilding phase, um, and we started playing with Last Sworn. Lucky for yeah. us, th this was definitely one of our peaks because BA was pulling like 150 at this time. I remember that, yeah. Yeah, like 150 to 180. Uh, Last Sworn was pulling 180 to 200 people. So just with us two, we were a, a, a power a powerhouse at that time. And it was all quality too. Like it wasn't just random ass numbers. Right. You no, know, I, I know what you mean. I. I so, remember what what BA was at that point. Yeah. We experienced something so, similar. So, so we like we much better in this last season. <laughs> much stronger. Yeah, I think season 13 we're good. We're good. Um but yeah, lucky for us back then, uh we had another peak, right? We had another peak. Last one had had a uh, their main peak, so it was perfect for us. Yeah. Um because if it had happened a little bit before, we would have been fucked. So, elevating them start coming over to us uh how did the war end because i believe you guys made a deal with elevate where they can keep their hideout um in dark bow snag if they promised you to leave the war is that true um uh, i if i remember right momono because he always liked the message now i've i've leaked a few of those over the years uh he was messaging me his usual load of bullshit uh, as he does, and then uh, they went to fight in Martlock, and he messaged me something along the lines, you can destroy everything, just leave our one hideout in Snag alive. And I said, okay. Uh, you know, at that point, I had no love lost for you guys, because Season 8 war. Right. And if they're, if they're gonna spend time killing my enemy while I'm killing all of their allies the that they left behind to die, uh then sure why not win win yeah uh so then i killed all of their allies that they left to die while they were fighting with you losing to you and so on uh and then when there was nothing left to do i i started breaking their their hideout in snag mm -hmm. but that culminated i think Duratine had one of his brilliant ideas as he does often what's that what he he talks to random people then he comes up with these ideas and schemes and then presents them to me and his idea was that we can fuck over blue army the main enemy mm -hmm. by helping elevate a little bit right because they were getting raped by you and his logic was if you rape them too fast we won't finish anything down here and you will come after us gotcha that kind of convoluted logic yeah uh, so then i'm like yeah you know i don't like it they smell they're weird <laughs> but i'm like you know if you want to call go for it i don't want to do anything and so he he went over two times i believe uh and that was the first time where they actually want to fight against you because uh i think he did something you know the usual he he wiped your cue or something like that mm -hmm. uh, and then as soon as they won the first fight uh Mamono started messaging him something how 
his guild can't know about it. You know, some bitch. <laughs> uh, <laughs> some slimy shit. Uh, yes, some slimy shit. And then they chase Dorothy's mammoth all the way from like Razorock Verge to to Razorock Bank or something. And we barely saved the mammoth. And and when I heard that happened in. In, in in NA like zero zero timer, I was like, no, fuck that, no more deals. Hammers, snag, whack the bitch. Gotcha. So they and were they I were still the trying to maintain an image that you guys weren't working together. And so they It was very short, honestly. It was literally two CTAs. They won one CTA that their little dick got hard and that they, you know, played some slimy shit. And 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 then I cut that shit up. And I told their team to be nice. Never mention that again. Gotcha. Yeah, and yeah, we actually you know what came to me, like what, uh, what Oli came to me. Um, Oli came to Dirtine to ask me uh -huh. if Oli could bring Derek. Oh my God, dude! I I lost my mind. <laughs> it was over. It was civil war in five minutes. Yeah, I believe it. Uh, yeah, I mean. Uh, that war was very hard now that i think about it because we had arch against us uh oh, we yeah. had elevate native all those people and then we also had jungle against us we had surf turned and 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 came against us and i remember you were hitting our kill with cr and i was like holy shit bro like what the fuck but um yeah i just found it funny that these people are are talking so much shit for months it's like yo poe and ba working together poe ba working together but they didn't mind asking you for help um to yeah. hit our cues and stuff right like yeah, way before so i just found it that it wasn't just us uh, as i remember there was a few alliances up there that were quote unquote accidentally hitting the cues and it's it's honestly nothing new uh because we experienced that at at, at our end against poe in the first in, in the second anti poe coalition when you know surf was there valen was there shiro's rats were there every motherfucker in the game except uh i i think you were there for one time when they bombed you on the gate yeah like one time they bombed you on the gate in 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 fire scene trench and then you fucked off from the coalition if i remember right yeah i think we were there for like a day and a half. That shit was terrible. Yeah, something like that. That shit was same tense. story with us. Got beat, boy. Got gotcha. same story with us. Yeah. Uh, and pretty much the same outcome. Can I shoot a clip real quick? Is that because uh, yeah, Hiho sent that to yeah. me? So let me show it just for context, and then we'll go to the to the. I we helped them secure a tower, one of the avalanche ones, or the other team did, and then. After that, I think they chased this mammoth, and then I fucking uh, cut all fucking no more deals. Come your Brazilian ass, grab a demo hammer, snag eighteen, get to work. Uh, so I'm gonna play the the video here. Is this? I think. Yeah, this should be the one. Hey, do not kill fucking elevate if you see them. Okay. I can't believe I just had to say that. Oh my god. <laughs> hey, listen, listen. Do not kill fucking Elevate if you see them, okay? Allied with who? That's got out the window because. <laughs> yeah, the allies are, are what? Who, who knows? Who's that? Yep. God knows. Avalanche inclined. Might be that no, one. He doesn't have good enough tools to follow it either. <laughs> uh, Africa now is just zoned into. Oh my god, it's pull up. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it was Avalanche and Klein, because we saw... How does this guy play the game and he's been banned three times? Oh. Uh, Andrew? Andrew. <laughs> LeBron James, yeah. aka Daba, aka fucking Andrew, aka It's Pull Up, aka whatever the fuck his other character is. <laughs> oh my. He's been banned so many fucking times. Oh my god, dude. Yeah, it's just crazy, because I remember I saw the... I saw a Take Care video from recent, and the whole video is just him shot calling. I'm like, bro, these yeah. motherfuckers have big balls. They're just showing the the band player yeah, leading. Yeah, this, a dear okay, friend of mine got banned for not RMT, right? <laughs> and this motherfucker got banned for RMT three times, and he's still playing the game. Shout out to Andrew, man. He's uh, a funny guy, bro. Mo they found out Mojo was giving CTAs. 
writers for us. And this is the this is the video from uh, another perspective. Yeah. Look, he's going to pick up the territory. <laughs> But they tried to hide it. They were saying that they weren't working together. They weren't trying to work with you guys. It's so sad. Like it's it, always a little fucking rat, Tanisha coming out of the bushes. You know? <laughs> 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 Why don't you run up and claim the tower, baby? Mm. <laughs> Bro, it's like for me, I don't care who's working with who. Like we'll fight it. It's the same yeah, thing yeah. for you. Like you, you, you don't really have a choice of who's in front of you. You can either fight mm -hmm. it or don't. You know. Or you can go in a dungeon. Yeah, you, or you can go in a dungeon. But it's like it's a different story when you try to hide it. I, I can't imagine, like, telling your members, no, no, we're not working with these people. You know. Like yeah, why well, you're lying to your own people? Like it just makes no sense to me. It's stupid. Well, my favorite lie, right? Uh huh. That I heard to this date is reject party lying to their members. About what? The do, you recent shit? The, uh, do you remember the abominable Turkman? How he was never gonna work with Elevate? The abominable Turkman? <laughs> Are you talking about Aussie? Are you talking about Aussie? No, 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 no. The, uh, the, uh, the greasy one. Greasy one. <laughs> I'm never gonna work with Elevate. Never. Ah. <laughs> you talking Trust about. Me, I will be so loyal. You talking you know? about Angel? <laughs> oh my god. Everybody says shit like that though, man. Like, I don't take any of that shit serious anymore. That shit is temporary. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I've learned in this game. Never temporary with me. Yeah. I mean, it's a different breed though, you know? Kind props to you, bro. You're the only motherfucker like that, bro, to be honest. Yeah. Everybody else is like, they don't give a shit. So you cut, you cut, um. So you're like, yo, fuck this uh, coalition. I'm gonna go mind my own business down south and just let the, let these motherfuckers lose on their own, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and as I remember, they lost the war, and like in a week or something, they they got fucked yeah. so and, hard. And then what happened? They went back for you again, round two. <laughs> yeah, that was the best part, you know. They just got done getting fucked by you, so they came back to me for a second help. Bro, these guys are like um, that crazy ex. They just keep coming back, bro. And they brought Surf with them again for another dose. Yeah. So, and it just seems like the coalitions got bigger and bigger. You know? Yeah, they did, yeah. The coalitions just got bigger and bigger. Like, before, before Duratine's untimely departure from the game, at one point we sat down and we were looking at the, you know, world map. And we're like, these guys are with them? These guys, these guys, these guys? Hmm. Who's left? Uh... Nobody's left. That's it. Literally the whole game. Yeah, because we were trying to look for. Uh, it, I, I remember one of the coalitions that we were fighting against them. Uh, we were trying to think, bro. Like, who who can we get at this point? We're like, uh, well, these people are on that side. These people are on that side. These people are on that side. These people don't yeah. like us. These people hate us. Boom. I know. So it, it was like, okay, we're on our own. Fuck it. And it's never, you know, direct. You know, like when. When me and you decided that we were going to work together, within five minutes, there was an announcement in the POE Discord. It, it of course, got leaked because that's why I write them. Yeah. Uh, we're now friendly with BA. If you kill a BA, I'll talk to you. Yeah. And then from that point on, it, that was that. There was no, there was no nothing under the table, tickling each other's balls, none of that stuff. Right. But with these guys, it's always, you know, you're fighting them. But it, the zone next door, there's one strong solo guild that just happens to be in the area. <laughs> and then the zone next door, there's another strong solo alliance that's, you know, just caravanning through with ZDZ gear. And behind them, there's there's the necklace character with, like, you know, his little homeboys waiting for the queue to start. <laughs> and, and Tom did somewhere in the dungeon, just in case. <laughs> it's like the Avengers, bro. And nobody's working together, but, you know... They're just there. Yeah. I mean, that's when that's when we this when I saw um, that they went to fight you guys and then they came to fight uh, us and then when I saw that they went to fight you guys, I'm like, I'm like, okay, you no, know, we need to team up because if Poe beats them again, 
um then we know what they're gonna do it's come back for us you know so they went for you they went for me they went back for you we're like yo we need to fuck them up you know so that's when we started I never working together had reason. like uh, i know why you guys had that train of thought for the same reason why i had my train of thought regarding you guys because we weren't talking with each other so the only basis on which we had to gauge each other was based on what other people were saying right and most of what other people say about anybody is bullshit because you know they're solving their own problems that way right. so we never had a reason and to to this day we never have a reason to step outside of, of the zones that we live in like we just don't uh, because we don't want the whole world we want the zones where we've been living yeah queen release but i understand why you guys had that pov that expectation that we would come out no like uh the expectation was that they would come after us after they were done with you yeah Understandable. like after you guys beat them after uh, uh, like so it, it, it would be a lose-lose for us to sit out on the third time because it's like you fool me once all right but you fool me three times well, I, then yeah. i'm retarded but so it, it's like if so if they would beat you right because at that time they had raid um yeah, they had they had, they had shiro's russian alliance they had surf they had elevates alliance yeah so they they had a shit ton of people they had raid one two and three they had three guilds as one guild they were massing 250 people so um if they would beat you guys mm -hmm. then obviously they would just come right but right for us with that same coalition absolutely yeah and i it, remember me and you talking about it uh when we were talking about raid mm -hmm. i remember yeah and then if, if they didn't beat you then they would still come for us because they got no other choice if they lose to you then they gotta go to so they it, have to go to na just like in the gvg days where you had the na uh, uh community so to speak that were fighting each other and holding hands with each other and eu which was doing the same thing right polarized between people. yeah exactly so it just made sense you know like they, they kind of dug their own grave in that sense right there um mm. let me ask you out of all the people that you guys have evicted yeah who's your favorite that it, it never gets old to to whack their hideout wow uh, oh fool buddy, Yo, Tupac, thank you so much my brother i love um, you bro um let me think obviously i love evicting dominant um <laughs> i think we've done it three times uh, <laughs> in the three coalitions he joined is that the world record then, uh, Obviously, whacking an elevate hideout is always precious. Um, although we whack so many that at this point it doesn't really matter. Uh, I can't say that it's, you know, that anybody is my favorite in that sense. Because I like what comes before, like, before the whacking of hideout. Because the, to me, every war isn't really a war of hideouts, you know. I've I've hit your guild and I've killed a hundred of you and now I've caused you damage or I've destroyed your hideout. I have now decimated your your butthole and your morale is broken, you know. Yes. Nothing like that. Like to me the war is just a contest of of willpower who will blink first and stop showing first. Yeah. Like in a sense. Because um like territories and hideouts don't defend themselves. The people have to defend them so as long as the people break everything else falls pretty pretty easily mm -hmm. and and especially now that the, the headquarters are out i mean uh hideouts are irrelevant right like quite literally hideouts are the most irrelevant throwaway shit, uh ever yeah, you just like the, the 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 just the battle of attrition you know yeah of course like oh who are who are some of the the toughest motherfuckers that you've come up against um toughest motherfucker <laughs> yeah. all all time t toughest motherfucker obviously uh sir molly in eve i'm like he's a different category uh, uh, what was he like uh he was uh he was a scumbag uh, like, like what kind of scumbag like a dirty scumbag uh no i guess kind of like a dungeon realm scumbag you know 
Okay, gotcha. Like a rat. In a sense, like he had a really strong Zerg of sorts at the time. Uh, like, hands down, unbeatable Zerg. That kind of deal. They would come into your space, you were gone. Very fucking quickly. Gotcha. Uh, and then the guys I was playing with, uh, as I remember at the time, we were called a cancer. Uh, a, like a disease, an infestation. Like some proper fucking ugly shit to to be calling somebody that's, you know, a new player starting the game. Mm. It, it's not nice to be calling new players that kind of thing. It's like if I went to watch and I called them all, you know, cockroaches that need to be exterminated. Okay. Like you're Turkish or something. <laughs> but um, he was by far one of the more competent people uh, that's entirely in a different league of itself uh, because he played the game in ways that nobody else could play it. I think the most famous thing he ever did um, was to bait our guys with some face, fake info. Let's say there was a system where there were two command mammoths growing, right? And each command mammoth is 7,000 bucks or whatever. And then he leaked the info that the mammoth was in the left tower, but it was in the right tower, you know? So okay. we blew up the left tower, and we didn't blow up the right tower, and the right tower finished, you know? Gotcha. Like some really nasty shit. Uh, the other person that comes to mind, uh, like, that one comes the closest to you, in a sense. Uh, uh, although, not for the same reasons. Yeah, but me and you didn't really go at each other for long, you know? Yeah, we did. Uh, that was in a in a robot game. His name was Styx, and he led a he led a guild that was menaced the society. He was one of the hardest motherfuckers ever to beat because I had no answer for him. Gotcha. In a sense, um, we were we were camping his island in shifts, mm -hmm. trying to figure out where they were getting the money from. Uh, where, where where they were mining the resources from to 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 build the equipment that they were fucking us with um it was some crazy shit we went way too far with that like to the point where we were tracking shit that should never be tracked um did you eventually, eventually we, did, did you eventually get him we eventually got them yeah uh we we sussed out how how they were duping here oh they were cheating yeah uh, like we fought them i think for seven months and we like it was it was brutal pr 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 pretty much the equivalent of of losing a whole zerg of eight three three times a day and it was brutal we were mining in quotas everybody had to get so and so many resources to keep the war going it, it was some brutal shit. and um, did they did they ever get banned for what they did uh, he got banned, yeah. So you eventually got him. That's a win. We That's did a get him. And then we, uh, then we took care of everything he left behind. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, uh, he always has a smile on his face when he's talking about that shit, you know? Oh, yeah. Bro, it's, <laughs> listen. Uh, these wars in Albion, right? Uh -huh. The last war, the longest one was, what, uh, four months? Something like that. It, it it doesn't even get you hard. Mm. That one in the in the robot game was uh, with all the uh, rebuilds, revamps, uh, rebrands. Uh, it lasted for six years. Gotcha. Six years war. I mean, they changed a lot of tags, but eventually we got them. Yeah, man. In those hardcore games, sometimes wars take forever, bro. And people hold grudges all the time. There's no like, oh, we'll be friends, you know, two months from now. No, no, they, they hate you forever. Oh, yeah. Um, let's fast forward to, because we're about to finish. Um, war number two. Yes, we're about to finish talking about the wars and stuff like that. And now we got the fun questions. Great. We got some fun questions for you. Um, so if you're in chat, we're, we're getting to the point where we're talking about season 13 which was uh, BA's last season. 
Um, Cold War, yeah. Yeah, and then we're gonna we're gonna ask Cindy some fun questions here. Uh, we're gonna end up putting the YouTube video on. Uh, it's gonna be on tomorrow, and we'll probably just timestamp the whole thing because it's gonna be a three hour and a half, four hour video. So, for the people that want to watch it tomorrow, we're gonna timestamp the whole thing. Uh, we're also gonna do a giveaway at the end of the stream. It's a twenty million silver giveaway item. Uh, so if you want to stick around for that, that's cool. If you don't, that's fine. Uh, shout out to Tapsy. Thank you so much for the sub, my brother. I, I appreciate you, man. Um, so, Syndic, fast forward to season 13. Yeah. Tell me exactly what we were up against. Everything. We were up against, uh, at the time, uh, in the previous war. I don't know why Africa broke uh, in his head. Uh, he broke first. I, I, I think he broke, broke because of Artista coming back i think that was the deciding factor mm -hmm. uh but he did break and he did swap sides uh as a strong solo guild uh that was uh, quite driven. yeah uh there was a resurrection i i think del negro took people out of uh, like the rank the uh, people that came to sun with him that he stole from blue army or something something he came uh, and joined. Uh, what was he called? June. Yeah, Thomas June. Crew June. Yeah. Thomas Crew June. And then. Tapsy, thank you so much, That my was brother. a hype guild of 300, whatever. I, I really appreciate you, bro. Guild, so obviously, a, a fuck ton of people. Each yeah. guild was massing like 150 people at one point. Uh, there was Pendolino, which is, you know, Pendolino is a joke. But it's uh it's like a Polish hype guild with their. I mean, they emotions. were massing two hundred people in the first week, bro. Like, uh, yeah, they were big I, guild, bro. I remember. Guild was massing one hundred fifty. Okay. Yeah, I think the only one that wasn't massing one hundred fifty plus was Menace, which was massing uh, baby something, right? No, they were like massing one hundred fifty at the beginning, one hundred percent. Yo, Tafsi, thank you so I much, remember. dude. I was <laughs> thank you so much, bro. Kill, let's be honest. You're a fucking beast. Like, they were not the main ones going in. <laughs> and then there's Elevate and the other homeboys. Yeah, so... Um, it was Elevate. Their alliance, like... Uh, they had... I remember Shake. they had a Spanish... Yeah, Shake or, or Steve or whatever. I think it was Steve or Shake or Monkey, yeah. Um, I don't know. They had, they, they had, like, the Lonely Man and stuff. They had Surf. They had China. Surf. They had Don't June, jungle. huh? Jungle, of course. Yeah, they had last season. Jungle, China, June, Menace, Clubhouse, Pendolino, Homeless Crew, KDA Alliance. Wait, we had this many enemies? <laughs> oh yeah. That's not. <laughs> and we got first and second that's not, place. That's not all of them. That's not all yeah, of them. There's more. There's more. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, uh, homeless Crew made their own their own alliance that ended up with a couple thousand people. Uh, so. This was against squad mm. and POE, right? Um, Yo, first day of the war, right? I called the guild meeting and I told my guys, I'm going to inch you like fucking cattle and you're going <laughs> to love it. And they giggle like, like little schoolgirls. You know? The condition, point, the condition well, bro. Like Yo, the Taxi, you're a fucking know, god, bro. Thank you so before, much, dude. So like, <laughs> cute fights are fun fights for us. You're a fucking beast, bro. But yeah, they had between 900 and 1,000 and 100 players thereabouts, of like at, at, at the beginning of the war. And we had, I don't know, I had, I had maybe 200-ish, 300-ish, and you had 200, 300. Like, we were to one at least. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, we, we were, BA was healthy. Uh, you guys were pretty healthy too, you guys. You guys had um, yeah, good uh, sun was was very helpful uh skoya was very helpful you guys had good alliance very good alliance at that time sun was on life support bro oh sun yeah 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 but with the alliance that you gave them and flummy leading them then it was like fine no that was arguably one of my bigger mistakes to even to to, to send flummy yeah yeah, yeah. uh wh wh why was that a mistake Mm, and for those who don't know him. who was who was flow me because it broke him 
Yo, if, pe if, if people don't know, Flummy is, um, he was a shot caller in CIR who was sent to their ally's son when son was lacking a shot caller. Um, he's, always. yeah, and he, he's, he's leading, he's a co-leader of Sons of Bahala, which is a guild from Thetford. Um, but yeah, continue what you were saying, bro. What was I saying? Uh, you were talking about, it was one of your mistakes because it broke yeah, Flummy. I, I never should have sent Flum there. Because okay. I, I invested way too much effort in keeping Sun alive and stopping them from disbanding and dying and whatever uh, than I realistically should have. I should have focused on my own guild and worried a bit less about uh, the allied guilds. Gotcha. That was my biggest mistake. I mean, I, I think every alliance leader makes that mistake because yeah, no it's like, dude, you have to care, you know? Of course, dude. of course, I care to this day when, when like, you know, obviously I, I have guilds I'm allied with, but some guilds I've been allied with for a, for a lot longer time. So I, I view MacTap in one way than I view, you know, some guild that just joined. Right. You know, because it's, it's, it's different levels of shit that we have gone through together. Yeah, they're tested. So when Mac has a problem, then, 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 then obviously I'm going to move heaven and earth to to do whatever I can to help them with, you know, whatever his problem is, or reject party, or camp their hideout, or something. Gotcha. Um, Africa came on here, and uh, when we had the Africa interview, uh, he told us that the only reason that they lost that war, because they were so stacked, is literally just because of themselves. Do you agree with that? No, I don't. I don't agree. Wow. I think they threw everything they could throw at us and they lost. And their inability to handle losing led to them dying one by one by one. Mm -hmm. And in the and in the case of Pendolino, uh, they were just broken by their own weakness. Because mm. more, one mass for a Polish guild means that guild is dead in a month for whatever reason. I don't know why that's the case, but Polish guilds disband super easy. I think one of the most resilient guilds from Poland in this game is Skoetel. Because I met Skoetel at, at about the same time when I met Magdeb, right? Mm -hmm. So me and Kuiper, like, with my, you know, time off in Season 3, me and Kuiper and uh, Loxy to a degree have been on the same field together since pretty much release. And, like, the only thing that changed in Skoetel, like, they're... They got a few more guild leaders because they have like a council system or something weird. But every other Polish guild in this game, it's like a clown fiesta compared to Skoetel. Skoetel is the the one guild in this game that um, outperformed every other national guild of their type, of their national. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're still here, right? So you can't really argue. Yeah, they're still here. They're still massing, like. They don't pull 120 anymore like they used to, uh, but they are definitely like one of the core guilds in uh, in Albion as far as you know durability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Luxy, their the shot color is so cool. I love them. Oh, um, Luxy's a lovely character. Uh, I love the scavenging in, in that other game space. Uh, by the way, the thing we were saying about what Africa said, I think. He was kind of saying what you said, where, where, it's like they should have won the. He, he was basically saying like they should have won the war, but they didn't, and the reason why is because of the mental state of their alliance. They were very weak. They should have me a thousand bucks, but they didn't. <laughs> uh, a couple of weeks ago, Del Negro was in the chat while we were discussing some stuff on the stream, and he <laughs> said he made a statement. Uh, in the chat, he said it was that war was. 95% of the server, referring to us, against oh, yeah. four or five guilds, three or four guilds, he said, or I, I don't remember. Be exact, four. Four guilds? Yeah, against four, four guilds. Oh, four, four, four. What do you, do you, you agree know, with that or no? Because Elevate doesn't count. Huh? Because Elevate doesn't count. <laughs> they were a third party. A strong solo guild that was just sitting there in our queue line. Yeah. With their other three alliances that were solo third parties. Oh, damn, I should have brought, brought the... Um, the sound clip where where Tamisha is like 
getting upset because they'll never engage with one of them. I got it here, bro. Here they go. Boom. Easy. You I have it? that shit saved in the spank bank. <laughs> the spank bank. <laughs> Every time I feel a bit down, I I bring out little Tamisha's tears about getting bombed. <laughs> and now he's gonna explain it to his members. Do you have that all, clip? No. There it is. Hold on. Like, and I hate when people do that shit. I'm gonna is play it on stream. I'm gonna play it on stream. Uh, you <laughs> you guys won't be able to hear it, but the chat will. So get, uh, give me a sec. Like, and I hate when people do that shit. It's just it's just pointless. Like, it's just it's a game. <laughs> it's not that deep to be creating like these false narratives. My respect though. Yeah, I didn't know they were DAV dude. <laughs> I mean, yeah, dude, Don't Nargo literally PM me shit and then deleted the PM. So the only reason why I'm leaking that verbally is just because of the fact that like they're like he he wiped us and then comes into trash talk and they're like he's like he's like, oh we're not working with them, we just wiped them, lol. Like that's not how that works, man. That's not like that's fuck you know, like it's so you know what I mean? Like how like how 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 should I interpret that, right? Like how do you think my members feel, right? When I'm yeah, telling yeah. my members to not kill call when I'm so when I'm when I see call on a gate. And I'm literally queuing in with these like with like 10 call motherfuckers and I'm telling my guys to not hit them and I'm telling my lines to not hit them. Right? Like well, what does that make me look like when I have people like everything in a map and everything is getting run down by their entire alliance? Like this, you know what I mean? Like what, what does it make me look like? Yeah, so I just played it. Uh yeah, so that's hard to listen to, bro, because <laughs> you know what the difference is, right? Between So who? think about it. Like first war, right? Uh, okay. Where, where, where you join the coalition with them for one day or whatever. Right. They bomb you on the gate. You two days. Fucked two off. days. Yeah. Okay. Two days. Second day, they bomb you on the gate. You fucked off. My side, I helped them get a the tower. They chased their team. I fucked off. They got bombed like dogs on the gate, and, and then they, you know, they went all nice, and then they they gargled mm. some mayonnaise from the necklace, and then. uh yeah, please, master, please. You know? Gotcha. It's, it's just a different mentality. Yeah. When are you going to go for the season window? That's the real question. What do you mean? When I already the won season? the season, bro. Which one? I mean, do you think Sun won a season? Hello? <laughs> I, I mean, you know what I, I mean. mean yeah, they own no deal or carry by, by 20 Brazilians. Yeah, sure, buddy, sure. <laughs> um what what is the reason by the way that that you never went for the season because there's a couple seasons that you guys could have won but you, you never went for it what's the okay. logic behind that well uh logic behind it right early on like back in the in in, in the dawn of albion uh the way you won seasons was uh was by getting a big ass alliance and making that whole alliance give you all of their towers and help you take castles and last hit lords and do whatever to spam points, right? Right. And I don't play that way. I I I, I don't want to lead an alliance where my guild is benefiting and our allies are slaves. Tapsy, I fucking love you, bro. For for the lack of a better word, um, to boot like. I personally haven't won a season with my guild, but I have won seasons, I feel at least, that I've won seasons with Blue Army, because I've participated in that. Yeah. I helped Sun win their season. I helped... Uh, who else did I help win a season? I don't remember. I helped somebody. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I helped Loco get second it. place. I helped the uh, last one. Dude, I dropped every single tower to last one. You know? Yeah, yeah, Remember? yeah. yeah. That's, that's Motherfuckers had 70 towers. Do you know what payback I got from that? Oh, yeah, fuck you. Let me join Elevate. <laughs> <Good job, baby. laughs> By the way, I see I see the season wins as the same thing. Like, if, you, if you're if you an ally to that guild and you participated and helped... Yeah. Like, like I, I, like uh, when Artista won a season, I felt like we won the season with them. You of know, course. same thing. I, I agree feel with you the same way. Them. I think I technically yeah. helped somebody win the season. Then let's go. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Phase three, seed. Phase three. <laughs> I remember. I remember saying that you always said uh, going for a season is like one of those things where like people want to do it once and then they never want to do it again. Of course. And then, like for example, we went for multiple seasons, and every time we went for a season, we're like. Yeah, this shit's not fun. Yeah, shit's yeah, not fun. It's not fun. And I personally 
I don't want to do that to my members, you know? Yeah. We we decided one season that we were going to push Crystal, you know? And, and, and then we memed about it, you know, going for first. And mm -hmm. we pushed Crystal, and, and it was not fun, you know? Like, making people raid mages and uh, rat outposts and uh, rat castles and make allies get us castles. Dude, I... I just want to win my wars and sit in my zones and make my silver and make more gear and mm. and and make more silver and make more gear. I don't care about season. Because I agree. You shouldn't focus on Yo, Tapsy, stop, yeah. bro. You're yeah. out of control, man. You want them like me, you know? Like, yeah, I, I love you, bro. No, 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 no. None of that. None of that. <laughs> None of your business. Give it to everybody. <laughs> All of that shit gets assigned to who is deserving based on their performance. But... Who remembers who won season one? And who gives a fuck? I'll be honest, Joe. I think those couple seasons that Money Guild won were the, were probably some of the most important, you know? Yeah, sure, sure. But, you know... But people don't care, right? I I understand your point. Season 20, you know, who's going to give a fuck about season 10? Right. Or, you know, vice versa. Like, for me, it has no tangible goal to give to my guild. Mm -hmm. I can give to my guild a goal, you know... Uh, guys, we're gonna grind uh, 120k points because we want to have a headquarter or, or a hideout or whatever in this map. And that will give us this. So mm -hmm. this is a tangible goal for us to do. It's gonna be a team effort. We're gonna go for it. We're gonna get it done. Yay, team. Let's go, you know? But competing for a spot on some retarded ladder board that nobody gives a fuck about, I mean... You know, funny story. When we were sieging Team Casualty, right? Okay. Fikan was on the last shield. Their main and, home plot, right? And then they brought Exertion to defend the GVG, right? And right. then, okay, sure. We lost. Town plot reset because back then they full reset. Um, and then we went at it again. And then shortly after, like, we got back to Fikan again. And we started sieging. And then they brought in the season. And... Seasonal reset. All of our progress got swiped out. Mm. And after the reset, we have to grind again. Because PoE was, at the time, the ZVZ was <laughs> funny. We had the GVG all the way from the start, from our town plot or whatever, from a war camp, all the way back to Fecund. By the time we got back to Fecund, the, the fucking uh, monthly reset would be around. You know? Like, back, at, back then, the... the the strategic progress on the map was much slower. So having a, a reset just created a stalemate in a sense, which is why the war was never never won. And eventually TC caught up with us in terms of having a GVG team. Like at one point, uh, I think Ellipses and Soram had arguably one of the best teams in the game and yeah, one of the only fighting. ones that could, that could uh, play against us and cause us actual problem. They, they did cause us actual problem. Mm -hmm. Uh, our homie Tapsy has a question for you. Who's the best Turkish caller in the game? Uh, Waxen, of course. But listen, uh, there are many Turks in Albion, okay? I have nothing against Turks as a people. I have everything against people of Turkish nationality who behave like, uh, well, for, for the lack of a better word, dishonorable slash ratty slash cockroach, right? So you have people like Tupac and you have people like Waxen, right? So Waxen is a person, and Tupac is a thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's not the same category, you know? Yeah. But honestly, Waxen is one of the most lovable people that I've ever had the pleasure of communicating with. And he, he came from a quote-unquote enemy alliance, so he came over with all of the, all of the bad, uh, bad propaganda against PoE, you know? Mm. But... Uh, having spoken with him, having interacted with him, I, I really like Waxen. Uh, Marcus is a really good guild, uh, considering that they're a national guild, that, that they obviously don't have as many players as international guilds, because it's harder to recruit for you know from your own pool. Uh, but they're a really good guild, and I'm 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 honestly surprised in this day and age that I have found a guild like that to work with. Uh, they're, they're old archmen too. You know, I've been on many fields with them. What's their name? Marcus. Marcus? 
Yeah, they were actually in RJX. Yo, salute to Marcus, man. Um, yo, salute to Tapsy too. Thank you so much for the sub to the homie Waxin. Let's go, baby. Speaking <sighs> of the devil. But, Waxin um, is a really nice guy. Uh, wrapping up on that war, Syndic, what was your favorite moment of that war? And what was uh, okay, your yo, least favorite? Bro, there is so many favorite moments. Hold on. My favorite moment, right? Was uh, like first favorite moment was when Vendelina disbanded. Love you, Oh, those little fucking Polish feelings. Oh no, that was so good. Vendelina was your favorite this band? And no, but like that, that first domino that fell in the chain, you know, that right, first right, right, domino right. that first <laughs> back in the armor, and then we stabbed them in the taint and we <laughs> twisted the knife. You know, it was really good. And what about your right. least favorite moment? Uh, what, in the war? Yes. Um. Um, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you mine while you think about yours. Uh, if, if it was me bombing you, uh, listen, acceptable collateral damage. <laughs> no, it <Sorry>. was. <laughs> it was for me. It was when call, like it was the four hype guilds in the same fucking uh, alliance. And every zone they would zone into, we would all just get instantly zoned out because they had so much like IP and oh, numbers yeah. together that it was just like, bro, this is hundred percent, bro. It was 100%. just hard, you know. It was super hard, bro. But we adapted to it, you know. Definitely, definitely, definitely. And like that's that's the one thing that I personally find enjoyable about uh, working with you, with you in the Cold War. Because while we were working together, we would run up against these problems, right? Like, uh, like you say about getting queued out too much. Then we devised the solution. Then we tested the solution. We implemented it. Then we achieved something with it, right? Mm. Uh, so on the flip side, when these guys run into a problem, then on the roundtable call, like Dungeon Realms is slitting his wrists. A BA is sitting home with the POE hideout. Yeah! <laughs> you know, it was you. some of the most disgusting shit I've ever had to listen to where <laughs> you're actually trying to change the game because you're too weak to adapt to it. You know? I mean, but they've always been known for doing that shit, though. This, this, know, like, right? this is not new. <laughs> Everywhere. You know, listen, the end of the day, right? It works for them, you know? They got Mojo banned for the entire team. Kudos to them. I respect the move. That was probably the biggest win, to be honest. You know, I personally don't like it, but I respect the move. If it works for them, great. But Things are I, changing, though. They, they seem to be listening more to the actual community and not to single players. You know exactly what I mean. People getting removed from places, you know? Like, they, they're taking a little stand on it, so maybe things will change. Yeah. Honestly, some of that shit is well deserved and a little late in coming. But yeah, uh, yeah for sure. Overall, I think that uh, the way that was handled was uh, not that that was handled very well. But the whole thing behind crying on the round table for two hours because Blue Army set home in a hideout. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. To get game mechanics changed because their feelings were hurt. And then BA ran to Arthur's rest and set home in Arthur's rest because oh oh gee big difference. Uh, you know that's just sad. You know? Yeah yeah I remember that they were they were because because first they were complaining about the hideout cooldown that there's no cooldown yeah. or something, and then when we started putting sets in in the rest they started mm -hmm. complaining about no, they started wanting to put cooldown on the Arthur's rest and stuff like <laughs> yeah. that, and I was like what the fuck. <laughs> It's People always don't know about... how pity shit like this is, bro. They have no idea how things that go like behind the scenes, you know? Yeah, yeah. like uh, that's why I don't actually like good enemies like Banana, like you, like like Sticks, even Sir Molly, who was literally the scum of the earth, you know. But I respect them, and because they they fought and they as best as they could, and they adapted, you know. These kids, it's about. You know, we can't win, so the game needs to change because our feelings are hurt. You yeah. know, and I personally like it when their feelings are hurt. So, um, you know, kind of a win-win for me. Because the reason Headquarters exists in the game, right? 
Mm -hmm. It's because they cried on the round table. Because Blue Army was destroying all of their hideouts, so they need a way to stay in the black zone. And I was the one arguing that it's a bad idea because nobody will be able to be evicted. Oh, well, guess what happened, boys? Thank you. Thank you for doing this. Amazing tool. Why don't you gargle it? God bless the HQs, huh? Did you want me to show up to a timer? Oh no, look at that, the flag went up. Oh, the horror, let me go in the dungeon. Punch his own in with a shield. Mm. Oh, that's they amazing. They zoned it once and never again. Uh, so we talked about... Uh, the, 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 the This was all before the Mojo era. You know how there's before Christ? This is before yeah. Mojo era. Yeah. Uh, Afterwards, um, you, you guys have been with Sun for such a long time, bro. Yeah. What what happened there? Like, what what led to you guys disconnecting? Uh, well, honestly, Frank uh, Frank Sinatra is one of my all time favorite guys in Albion. Uh, because with some people, uh, I can talk, you know. I don't have to paint anything with crayons. We exchange two sentences and we're on the same page, you know? Because mm -hmm. he gets it. Sun is a very old guild. I think even older than, than CIR. So Frank himself has been around the block. He's seen the 10 times uglier shit than the Zoomers from all of it can ever come up with. And he lived through it. Um, and I know a little bit about it, but it's personal, so I'm not even gonna go into it. Gotcha. Uh, but the problem that Sun had was in the middle management, right? Because Frank, amazing as he is, he, he goes on vacation for, you know, his own reasons that I'm going to. Right. Uh, and it's completely justified, but uh the middle management is a guy called selfie right mm -hmm. and selfie is a greasy little cunt and not in a good way uh and their middle management made very stupid decisions to the point where i think four times i had to literally stop their guilt from disbanding uh and that was the that was arguably the the biggest mistake i ever made because because i should have just let them die in, in insight, because it would have benefited my guild a lot more than to move heaven and earth to stop people from jumping ship because selfie selfie. So, so why was selfie such a bad leader in your in your opinion? Not a bad leader. Selfie is a very principled leader. So, that's good, right? That is good, but he doesn't know when to apply the brake. You know, like selfie doesn't go. You know, from from zero to two to six, and then back to two. Selfie goes from zero to ten, and then stays on ten. You know. Okay. So, so he rubs people the wrong way, and I also rub people the wrong way sometimes. But you know, I'm fucking human, and I get pissed off. Right. Uh, but I try to rein myself in as much as I can, and, and and I do try to be wholesome every day. Sometimes these motherfuckers just make me be not wholesome, but you know. You know, we all fight our demons right. uh, in that sense. Uh, but Selfie just, once he got the 10, he was a 10. And, and and there was no backing him down, you know? So, like, Sun sat uh, on the best zones in PoE. They had two of the best spawns in PoE, uh, the world, world of spawns in PoE. Uh, and somehow they managed to kill themselves by, you know, losing their mass, losing... I lost track of how many callers. Uh, I remember Flo would come crying to me every night. She think I can't do it anymore. And then I would like pat him on the head and he would be, you know, he would feel better. And then next day he would go and int them again. It was, um, I don't know, weird times. Uh, I like the guild. I like the people that came from Sun with the exception of the, the, the general third coach. Uh, and I even like Selfie. Selfie's an enjoyable guy to play with. Just he's not made to be the guild leader. He's made to be uh, the quartermaster. 
you know, I, I would put Selfie in charge of the logistics with my eyes closed. You know, okay. he would organize that shit. Shit would get done. It would run on schedule, on trains. There would be no issues. Everything would be good. But as a GM, um, Frank is so much better. So, so, so much better. Gotcha. Uh, you, you think they ever going to come back or not? I don't think they've ever left. Uh, they've simply adapted because Frank is a smart guy. Uh, much smarter than uh, Dungeon Realms and Tamisha. Uh, so Frank adapted his guild straight away and decided to focus on small scale and zone presence. Smart. Right? Yeah. Because he sees the writing on the wall. And Twiddle D and Twiddle Dumb are going to you know, remake their hype guild for content in next season, and then they're gonna run around empty zones. Gotcha. Uh, because that's how it goes. Yeah, you, uh, what I respect about you and Frank is, uh, first of all, you guys are so good at articulating what you guys want to say, you know? Uh, I try my best to be polite. No, but I mean, just, just uh, you, you, you just know how to, how to articulate everything you guys want to say. And, and, uh, worded yeah. well like and frank's a very smart guy and i remember yeah. for example yeah. when i got banned you you two were two of the only people to actually defend me and i remember you guys were were going back and oh, forth i still defend you and then i believe i am 100 percent right and i believe they are 100 percent wrong yeah to this day i believe that and and i happily told that to the to the head guy in charge SBI, I, I, I flat out told him you guys are retarded because he just banned the guy that for not our team. Yeah. Meanwhile, homeboy Andrew on his account number six is, uh, you know, casually there. And, and recently, with the way crypto is going, Africa's had to dip into his little piggy bank and go around the <laughs> discords and, you know, do stuff. <laughs> like, Listen, nothing secret in this game. Yeah. GMs know everything. So just like everybody knows I don't sell silver, I know who's selling silver. <laughs> because their minions come to me to try and sell silver. You know? Yeah. Like, like... And then I report them, which is very unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, like, the, um, I just find it funny because everybody just cries about like one or two names about this person rmt's and that person rmt's but i'm like you guys are so fucking wrong you guys don't even know it man like these guys don't know what's going on behind the scenes behind the scenes no. all these guys best friends are rmt and shit like that it's it's literally all over the place you know it's all over the place um but yeah I know, <laughs> without I saying names you know is. without saying names but i mean you guys get the idea of course i know where my silver is better than sbi does yeah uh, how did you hook up with the Chinese? Because uh, because you were fighting, you you already mentioned that you and Banana, you see, uh, Banana so similar to you, but you guys yeah. were fighting for so long against each other. It was like a year straight. Uh, how did you guys put that to the side and like, yo, let's work together? Okay, so it was very simple. So first, Banana was betrayed by Elevate, and you know, left to die against Arj. They washed their hands of him and cast him out like a like a used condom, you know? Uh, and then Banana went and, you know, did things to Arch that are, you know, perhaps not wholesome. But he did get them all, and he did exterminate Arch in Red 3, so he he got the job done. Uh, and then, once again, uh, we were fighting with Nope against Banana in, um, I think, Shiro's old zones around Flaming Desolation. Mm -hmm. I think you were there for a little bit before the the untimely event of you not having team. Mm -hmm. um, and then Elevate started showing up, helping Banana, you know, hitting cues, being greasy, getting them kill boards nice and juicy, you know, by hitting guys standing AFK on a gate. Um, and then they backstab him again because Banana said something Del Negro didn't like. And then, you know, how the necklace gets puffed up like a little turkey. Yeah. Uh, and then he started going after banana and hitting bananas cues and since i don't have anything personal against banana i have a few things against the other chuckle fucks <laughs> uh, so we sat down i said you know 
I have nothing against you. Uh, you know, I respect what you've been doing. I don't like what these guys are doing to you. If you need help, call me. And then he raped them. Uh, no, well, not raped, sorry. Uh, he, he vigorously beat them in a video game. Uh, and he didn't need help, but he did need help later when PoE Go, aka Go Stop, uh, decided to backstab us at the beginning of this last anti-PoE coalition and join the enemy, which nobody could have seen coming. <sighs> so then us and our Chinese friends, we made an, we, we helped uh, Banana make an example out of Ghost Stop and uh, crucify them from uh, Deepwood Gorge to Fort Sterling. One by one. Nice. Like, uh, I, I wasn't playing around this time, but from, and I don't really know the details. So, like, you guys know better. So, correct me if I'm wrong. But from what you told me, it's like I see a pattern here. Um, like, for example, the, like with the Del Negro stuff going after China, um, I heard it was like some personal insult or some shit like that. But the thing for me is this. If your guild is like lacking content and you just want content, you don't need an excuse to go after somebody. You know, yeah, it seems like to part. me, it seems like to me, there's a pattern that people don't take accountability for their actions and everything they do, they need to do it with an excuse. You know what I mean? Yeah. You think? Every, everybody needs to use an excuse to go after somebody and because they don't want to look bad so you know what we need to do we need to tell them that these guys doxed us we need to tell yeah. them that they insulted my wife we need to tell them that they did this or that it's like you don't need no excuse bro it's a, it's a video game so if you want to go after your old friends you're allowed to go after your old friends no it wasn't you know but but these guys I need to create no. some, some <laughs> <laughs> oh okay yeah listen listen tell me so four months of blue army showing up to fight in the in the war right against elevate okay uh, i was he that greasy chuckle fuck expected me to forget those four months of daily cpas because he posted a screenshot of his own ugly mug somewhere and somebody screenshotted him posting that because I give a fuck what somebody looks like online and, and, and I'm supposed to backstab you when you've done nothing to me and, and you've been there every single day, three times a day for four months. Like that's just retarded, beyond retarded. That's ridiculous. I, I just hate ultimatums, bro. Like it's so corny. Yeah, me too. Like every time i get an ultimatum it i always take it to the other end you know yeah. i have to it's stronger than me. uh quick shout out to tapsy thank you so much for today bro you're a fucking god like legit man i really appreciate you uh ricky thank you so much for the prime bro and cracks thank you so much for the prime man you guys are you guys are the best if you guys have any questions for syndic just uh yeah, feel free to ask him bro potentially dutch, potentially uh -huh. dutch. Be careful. say again cracks is potentially dutch you need to be careful why i don't have he has some jankoism on him in him i had a dutch guy on my team when i was gvging it didn't pan out good <laughs> he said <laughs> fuck off <laughs> that's okay um that's how we do things in a wholesome way so uh, no but but Mojo, you're 100 percent right me. they do have a pattern right mm -hmm. and, and and their pattern is that they will pick up somebody and use them either as a meat shield or to carry them. And then when they don't need them anymore, they will discard them and let them get run over. That's how Valen got run over. That's how Surf got run over three times. That's how so many guilds got run over. And, and I run them over intentionally every single time. And I tell the GM, I'm doing this to you because you did that. Yeah. And then they play stupid about it. But either they leave them to die when they don't need them anymore, or when they don't need them anymore, they do what they did to GDL, right? Yeah. At the start of the war, GDL was helping. And then when they, they quote unquote, didn't need help anymore, then GDL became farm. It's where you go to farm content. <laughs> and I don't do that to my, uh, to my former allies. Uh, like right now, me and Banana don't play together as much, but I would never launch on a 15 UTC tower he held and gone to farm his people for content yeah generate that's the most disrespectful shit i could think of to do too 
yeah it, it never comes with like some sort of responsibility you know like i remember i've made mistakes and i remember i fucked over people um uh, unintentionally and then i felt bad about it and i was like oh shit, i should have been there you know or i should have done this or i should have done this or i should have given my heads up and and i i would i would feel bad about I would legit feel bad about it you know so th that's just the part that's missing for me you want to you want to fuck over somebody cool uh you want to go after somebody that's cool you don't need an excuse we're all playing the same game we all play by the same rules just own up to it that's it that's 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 all i ask you know um we need more people like that uh shout out to glut he's in the chat right now shout out to tapsy again bro he he gave he gave us up to your best friend voltel cindy can we talk about that 17 gluttony me <laughs> and my friends see that taking care of business <laughs> hey let me ask you a question uh uh cynic you yeah. you have a lot of fans bro and and we saw the hate come in today and i just love that shit i just fucking love that shit i knew there was gonna be a lot of hatred today um this is nothing bro this is nothing. yeah like I, i've looked at the chat a few times it's nothing bro. yeah i i i honestly don't even get hot for this uh <laughs> what's 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 the situation between you and volta why is he so obsessed with you um like it's gotten to a point where right, it's kind of creepy oh my god no i just want the long story short bro okay long story short right so I mean, long story time, short got time go ahead yeah long story short you know how he goes around to you know yo tapsy you don't have to do that bro thank you so much man the leadership mm -hmm. years, kisses right? for you bro uh the first time i met this jackal fuck, he was in fleet and he was trying to sell me on starting a rent empire in Anglia that my guild would fight the GVGs and it would give fleet half the money, right? Huh? You, you understand, right? Right. Yeah, so that's the first time I met him. And after a while, he came over to my guild. Then, you know, I like having dirty guys in my guild that, you know, are gonna post on Reddit and do shit. And he does have a good amount of accounts on Reddit. Uh, <laughs> being, uh, degenerative player he has you know god knows how many mm -hmm. just like most of us uh but he was a recruiter slash uh quote-unquote spy you know mm -hmm. that kind of guy uh, and he never really accomplished anything there was always a lot of talk uh and there was some e-dating shit that was going on I just came back to the game. I didn't have time for it. He was promising a lot of shit, delivering nothing. And at one point, uh, I just got rid of him. And that was two years ago. And he's been obsessed ever since. Oh, it's one of those. Yeah, one of... Dude, he's a tire slasher. He's a tire slasher. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. dude sat in the roads of Avalon, dude. The wormholes, right? He's a swift claw and... slasher, bro. And and he would poke his head out of the roads of Avalon every every little bit, and he would be like, "The wolf packs are coming, <laughs> the dead, the poe." You know, yo, hold on, let me show you the crazy. Hold on. <laughs> okay, Yeesh. let's see this creature, man. Yo, Tapsy, you're a fucking Tapsy, god, bro. Tapsy, That's a down, big round of applause really... for Tapsy, bro. Jesus, Tapsy, bro. Yo, stop quarantine. Stop quarantine. <laughs> Shout out to Africa. Africa got a got a, got a big sub. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it all the crypto money? <laughs> <laughs> hey, All Might is asking, uh, ask Cindy about invading the roads. What happened in the roads, bro? Uh, we went, um, some guild, uh, joined our Discord, right? And they told us, uh, I vaguely remember that they were accused of being POE spies, right? Uh huh. Uh, that was a thing apparently back then, uh, by the lol tell. And then uh, they were being evicted from the roads. Okay. So the first time we went into the roads of Avalon was that, you know, one time we went into a hideout zone. There was like 20 of us. And these motherfuckers came out in the, the jankiest builds you could think of. You know, like nothing bad about them, but nobody trained them, obviously, or showed them how to ZDZ with all sorts of battle mounts, you know, hearth turf, you know, there's so many of us, there's so few of you, we're gonna kill you. And then they died in one engage. 
And then we whack this hideout. And of course, because that's how it works with this chuckle thought. Uh, it, it was all part of a master plan to keep us busy in that one place oh, where yeah. he could accomplish his master goal in another place. Yeah, of course. Um, oh my probably has more save because I know he was uh, he was deep into it at one point. Uh, <clears throat> let me ask you, um, how? So, for example, I'm not gonna lie. Like, who I am in game is mostly who I am in real life. You know, like. Uh, I don't change my personality like a hundred percent, you know, but I'm more laid back in real life. So yeah. it, it, it's definitely who I am in game is a much more intense version of who I am in real life. In real life, I'm just laid back. So I would say a, a certain percentage is a character, you know, um, how much percent would you say that, uh, the syndic big, big is you and how much percent is, um, uh, you just role playing? um for me it's not about role playing a character uh Yo, can we show some love to tapsy me, in the chat man god bless fucking taps man life, giving everybody I fucking can't love sit down man. with you know people at work and talk to them the way i talk to you right now with you know various words i'm using and terminology and whatnot uh so i have so in in real life at work i'm 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 obviously much more much more polite uh, much more professional. Uh, I don't say things to my workers at work. What did I say to my guild members? Because uh, for one, it's illegal. For two, it's impolite. Uh, and you know, it's a um, gaming to me is what I do to relax in a sense. As stressful as it sometimes can be, it does provide you that high that you just can't find somewhere else because only through gaming, right? Can you be in a position where you're working with uh, people from, I don't know, from, from, from Turkey, from Brazil, from X number of countries, uh, actual human beings, not people like Tupac, uh, <laughs> that are, you know, enjoyable to play with. I have no shit met some amazing people through, through being in, in the guild um some of my some of my best friends are the guild members that um i've um, we played together and then we met irl we got drunk we got stoned we got high it was amazing and we're still friends you know 20 years later that's or sick whatever. bro that's sick bro yeah that's such a Straight up. bro by the way if you were anybody else if you were anybody if you were not the, uh, the emperor syndic bro I would have substituted you for Tapsy. We would have done a Tapsy interview right now, bro, because this oh guy's out God, of control. Man. This guy's out of control, bro. bro. Yo, Tapsy, Tapsy, listen, Tapsy, you have too much money, Tapsy. Listen. <laughs> yeah, Tapsy, I gotta go to my uh, Twitch page when you get bored here. I'm Yo, just saying, Tapsy, you know. Tapsy, look in the chat, Tapsy. Yo, Tapsy, thank Hold you so on. much, bro. But you need to chill, bro. That's enough. That's enough. I, I appreciate your money. But, Click on the link, Tapsy will take care of you. But, but, but you've. Uh, given way more than enough bro 37 subs bro thank you so oh, much bro fuck. absolutely no thank more. you so much bro. calm down and God, Flacco, thank you so much for the prime bro i You're appreciate sub punishment. you you know i love you bro so, stop it so yeah um so another question for you Cindy. uh who yeah. were some of the best this was a question that uh basically i was on a couple of discords i asked like yo what should i ask Cindic? uh yeah. someone someone asked me to ask you who were some of the best people you worked on on team speak and who were some of the worst uh like in terms of, of what coordinating zerts yo stop 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 i can't yo <laughs> yo <laughs> dude dude no no bro that's somebody totally different he's trying to keep 15, up that's plush yeah yeah let's Not talk that, about that baby <laughs> Let's talk about who? Dude, the cuts. <laughs> oh my god, bro. Yo, McFlurries are on me tonight, guys. McFlurries are on me tonight. Bro, yo, let me link in my PayPal. Let me link in my PayPal. Fuck. Oh my god. Dude, plush. Oh my god. Yo, Tabs and plush. You guys are absolutely sick in the head, man. Absolutely sick in the oh head, man. Oh my god. 
Tapsy, you down bad, bro. This guy just came in and swooped you, bro. You don't have to donate more, bro. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, stop, stop. <laughs> we don't need the war. We don't need the war, bro. We don't need that. That's it, bro. Yo, you, know, you guys are about to get banned for RMT for that shit, bro. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to be Michael somehow. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, new Reddit, um, no. new Reddit title tomorrow. The Cynic interview turns out in a massive RMT fucking. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it reminds me of, like at the beginning, like me, Valk, and Robin just fighting to see who got number one in the <laughs> But Dude, you guys, guys are amazing. Man. It would be that easy too, right? That's the funny thing. What would be easy? If if they, if that happened naturally, like if he was still playing, it would be like, oh, massive RMT, King oh, Gojo. <laughs> I mean, bro, he got one donation. It was like, like it's ridiculous. It's like that. <laughs> bro, I had to I read that shit twice. That shit. My my heart started pumping super fast, bro. I was like fifty, and then the drop menu comes down i was like what the fuck bro the plus God, you're the yeah. best bro uh some yeah. of the best people best and worst um are we limiting it to... on team speak on team speak are we limiting it to albion or yes. can i go wider go wider. Uh, i mean if you have um, stories if you have stories bro yeah, we're right please, here by all means this is your time yeah we still we still got like 20 minutes left so we, we got like only oh, a few oh, more bro, questions no no there's no this is this is one of those we're going all the way all right we're matter. going all the way bro yeah there, you know no if we hit five hours bad. we hit five hours fuck it bro you know when i hit chicky bricky bro and i start talk, talking that's it baby that's it go ahead i mean dude yo, where, this is, where should you start you know that's, that's this all I is one know. of the only cynic interviews ever so so bro you deserve all the time in the world man and it'll probably be the last let's be okay, so, honest so what well I'll probably uh, never do another interview again the let's be fair regardless of this interview the the widely incompetent person will of course not invite me because you know he is what he is um but back to the thing arguably i would put you mojo as uh number one on the list in albion thank you because bro. let's go from baby my, from my pov when i i've i've i i think that because poe is inclusive and not an elitist pile of garbage we work with all sorts of people we have all sorts of people in team speak uh so i know the difference between a caller who's you know, the first thing you hear is I'm white. <laughs> and the second thing you hear is I'm queued out. Uh, and somebody that, that, that actually communicates. Uh, to me, one of the most relaxing wars in Alpian was when me, you, and Africa were fighting 21 UTC around Limhurst in my, my back door, so to speak. Uh, because me, you, and Africa didn't have to talk in crayons, you know, I, I I didn't have to ask you guys to do something and, and then explain why you should do it, when you should do it, when you should, blah, blah, blah. Africa would take care of the South, me and you would go to the North. Boom, problem solved. And then everything played out after. Um, so for that, I, I would definitely put you on like number one for ease of communication, ease of coordinating and speak. And I guess Africa before his mental break and when he Devolve to his <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Poor Africa, bro. I have nothing against him, dude. I, I, you know, listen, the Africa that I knew passed away in a sense. Because, uh, okay, weird. I have nothing against him. I, I, I love the guy from before. I don't like the content whore now. What if it's what great. if we just baptize them? Would he return I would to want us? I to baptize him, you know, in a special way, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, My fire. Obviously, uh, you 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 are not gonna agree with me, but for me, it's like it's like spiritual food, you know. Uh, every time Mac talks in the wrong channel, I get cheered up. <laughs> Uh, so for me, playing with Mac and Loxy, like Loxy right now is casual, you know, he's a casual little Polish slut right now. <laughs> he, in, in, in the sense that he comes and then he plays for like a little bit, then he goes. Um, and then he comes back in a week. But at their peak, when they were fully committed, when Mac had, you know, 80-man Zerg, Skoya had 100-man Zerg and so on, that was super easy for me as well. Like when, when we were fighting you guys, when we were fighting Elevate, 
um, like in season nine, that was easy for me. That was enjoyable. You know, you're sitting there and you're pumped up and you want to stab them. It's all good, you know? Um, and Dirty, obviously. When, before Dirty got banned, uh, uh, he was one of my, I guess, top five people to play with because just like you, you know, I don't have to write anything in crayons. I just say one thing and he gets it. Yeah. You know, like he's not going to do something stupid and walk his Zerg into me as I'm engaging and then I bomb him and then, you know, stuff happens. But um, that was fun. I had a lot of fun with, with, with Dirty and regardless of his, you know, phone situation and whatnot, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to see him go. I, I'm missing him again. Every <sighs> interview, bro, and without fail, no matter who it is. <sighs> I'm missing him again. The team phone thing always gets brought up. It's great. And probably the most disappointing thing I've ever had to deal with was the fact that this Plebicus that picked this guy, right? He never wanted to play with me in team and he was supposed to be one of the best callers in the game, but then he just ignored me, you know? Eric? No, no, not Derek. Plebicus. Ple Plebicus. Oh, Derek okay, is okay, fucking okay. not even okay. human. Yo, Plebicus okay. is in my top three. Uh, back yeah, when he was playing, he was in my top three, bro. Definitely in my top three. I, I had a lot of love for Plebicus. Like, first I hated him because he made me play Vermin Died, and then he, he killed me up in a super hard mission, and we kept doing it so many fucking times and I hated his fucking guts. Uh, <laughs> but then we went to play Foxhole and everything was good, you know? Like, yeah. everything was on point, we got shit done, we shelled kids, we nuked kids, we, we chucked poison grenades and, and listened to them choke themselves to death. It was amazing. <laughs> Yo, Graham, thank you so much, my brother. And we, we and took for a watching, few bridges bro. and held a few bridges in our day, so it was good. <laughs> we almost had it. <laughs> yeah, we almost had it. But, uh, but we never played Albion as, you know, two callers uh, calling for two separate Zergs. He was always short. He was inside my Zerg. He would he would uh, scout something. He would say something great. You know, super yeah. great guy to play with. And I love playing with him. I just never had the enjoyment of playing with him as a caller. Right. And what about some of your worst? Oh, Derek, obviously. Um, I, I mean, I don't know. What about Asi? Asi was screaming a lot. I remember the team speak. <laughs> I don't mind that so much. Like, honestly, <laughs> I don't hate Asi for his calling. I hate him because of the, because of what he is, you know? Okay. Because you can't tell me, you know, my brother, I will be so loyal. <laughs> and in the end. And then you fucking disband your guild and you join the enemy, hello? Yeah. Like three days later. And 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 then the shit guild you merged into decides to be a strong solo guild, aka with an asterisk as a, a reject Freeman escalator. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean I like uh I definitely disagree with you on the Mac type thing, but the thing is he's so adorable. Like so after the CTA or like right after the event, like if it if we're fighting and then you just hear Magtip yelling at Loxy, Loxy oh, yelling at Magtip. Like, it sucks, right? Like, in the moment. But then after, that you're just cracking shit, up, you know? That kind of shit makes me want to play the game even more. When <laughs> I hear those two retards, well, well sorry, uh, those two guys going at it, I feel more involved in the game with my Zerg. So I, I, I really, if I could choose anybody in this game that's not banned, I would choose Mac and Voxy every single time over anybody else that's not banned in the game. Mm -hmm. yeah. Obviously, if, if we can't ban people, then, you know, it, it will be top four people, but yeah. I definitely agree with you in the fact that uh, having those type of personalities on TeamSpeak makes it everything more enjoyable. That's for sure. I had a lot of fun. For not having fun, what are we doing? True. We're winning, Seed. I know, I've heard that before too. He says he likes people to go in and do their own thing, but when I go in and suicide something, he's gonna complain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are some of your pet peeves during a CTA sending? Like, for example, um, I remember Skuskabel 
was leading a CTA, somebody came in and burped, and Emma is going to go find them 10 mil, you know? So, what, what are some of your pet peeves in a CTA where you get pissed off? Like, um, for me, it's not so much that it's a pet peeve, right? Uh, it's more about, and you're probably going to be, I think you will be familiar with this. When you're a caller and you're leading a CTA, you're leading a Zerg of, you know, uh, 100, 150 people, whatever. And in a way, uh, even with, you know, whatever eagers you come up with, you're responsible for that many people investing that much of their time and putting their faith in you into achieving something, whether that is winning, whether that is giving them fun, anything like that, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a there's a great responsibility in, inside of the whole process of being a caller, and I do feel it to this day. Uh, one of the most debilitating things in my life, and I'm not a ashamed to fucking admit it is when i when i wiped a uh super fleet in in eve it, it was not pretty i'm not proud of it i fucked up uh and it turned me off of uh like super big scale calling for uh for a certain amount of time can you can you give it for us albion players can you give us like uh an, an equivalent what would be the exact equivalent Minting a caravan of mammoths full of A3. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> I entered it like okay. a big boy, don't worry. Um, and uh, anyway, um, there's a lot of responsibility. So when everything's on the line, especially in our wars versus coal and versus elevating shit, uh, when, you know, your presence in the black zone is on the line, when people's assets are on the line, uh, it gets to you. I don't think there's a single caller in the game who can say that he doesn't care about the people he leads. And uh -huh. if there is one, he's lying. Because I don't think any caller can be so inhuman that he doesn't care about the people he leads. I, I, I care very deeply for the people I lead. So, but the stress in of itself makes you say stupid shit. And I am aware of it. And my guild knows that I sometimes black out during CTAs. I just say the most horrible shit to that random guy that I accidentally saw on the screen. I don't mean it. I've 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 done stuff like kick people, find people or whatever, but after CTA I always give them the money back. I always, you know, send them on a vacation to Rogue Natives, which is another great guild, for three days while they're off cooldown and stuff like that, you know, like end of the day i'm as human as the next guy in the sense that i you know i have my little moments but i i don't like to dwell on it and i try to rise above it i mean you're very creative with uh your shit talk and um, I, don't, I don't even find it that toxic like uh, bro i've been hella toxic when we lost the zbz <laughs> or um, when shit's going the wrong way everybody gets that way right I don't think there's any caller that's not that that doesn't at least get toxic once when they're shot calling. But oh, that's not on constant medication, anyways. But but uh, I, like uh, I'm a fan of your shit talk and your rages because it's like you know people are gonna record it and you don't care. And then uh, no, I don't care. I don't care. Yeah, so I like that part, and I also like the part where uh, you're very creative with it. You know, like you'll be like. Uh, what's an example seed of what we heard uh, I said next that, but he he does love the word cripples and stuff like that he loves that shit i go through phases of 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 words uh if you had a recording of me from 15 years ago there would be a lot of bleeps in the in the thing uh in, in the recording but thankfully there's none of those left yeah. i think i got all of them off god bless bro I mean, staying private in in gaming, where people will take shit out of the game and make it personal, is a constant concern for all, all the callers. Um, and, and it's not something that's new, in mm. a sense. Uh, I, I know when I played EVE, I am aware of uh, some careless people uh, having their internet cables cut at a crucial moment. And uh, shit being lost, it was very fun. 
I remember people having dick pics with their name sent on sent to their workplaces. <laughs> I've seen some shit. So I I try to keep things private and I try to keep real life out of uh out of uh, everything. Yeah, I never I, I never I never heard you get way too toxic at all. Like you're pretty straightforward with it. I I try not to be because um I want to win, but I I always remember remember in the back of my head, no matter how crazy I get, that everybody yeah, has I'm a virginizer, bad day. my homie. Nobody Thank you so much. At the same level Thank all you so the much, time. Man. Like I'm playing with human beings who have good days and bad days. You know, bad internet, good internet. There, you know, I had a guy playing bad, um, and um, we talked after the ZVZ when i calmed down a little bit and the poor guy uh his his pet passed away uh the day before and i actually felt really really bad about even saying anything but uh we talked it out and uh i we're good to this day and he's still here with us and i still call him man. what kind of pet was it because if it's like a cat then it's like eh. I have cats. I love cats. It was a dog. It was a dog. It was a dog. Okay, that's tough. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, here, I'm gonna I'm throw some rapid fire questions at you, or 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 you want to do? You want me to throw some names at you? You give me their your your quick opinion of them. Okay, let's do that Everyone. first. Okay. Here we go. Um, Yo, what's this blush you got ask? What do you want? <laughs> Yo, plush. What's your question again, bro? Ask it wait, again, because I couldn't. Wait. I couldn't see it over the the. I know this guy. He's blacklisted. Uh, the crazy amount of names of people that you you subbed. God bless, bro. That shit was long as hell, bro. I can't scroll up that high. I'm pretty sure this guy is blacklisted for being a uh, dead uh, uh, person of a uh, uh, thing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying the word. <laughs> um, uh, why should someone who has why? always been against POE join CIR? That's a good question okay so that's a really good uh, question bro. what does it mean to be against poe what are we against are we against an in-game alliance uh the difference is that uh we are what we are right cir is what cir is we will jerk people down if needed we'll blue ball them if needed we'll do whatever the fuck needs to get done but we're not gonna be funny about it and come up with excuses why it needs to be done it needs to be done because it needs to be done and that's the long and short of it um i don't ask anybody to be in the guild i've god knows i've told people to drop guild so many times for the stupidest shit um i don't know why somebody would want to join cr because i've never been in any other guild so i don't know what they're like uh based on what i see on how they interact and how they make these excuses to backstab their allies and leave them to die i wouldn't want to be involved with them myself uh because that's just not my goal mm -hmm. so moga don't score that what a banger there's a, another question by meme slinger um What's why is why is arch better than poe well, in what sense? Arch is better than PO. <laughs> no, that's um, that's the thing I used to tell my guys uh, during I think season nine when I wanted to you know stab him a little bit to make him perform a bit better. I would uh, I would tell them that Arch is better than them, and then they would you know try a bit harder. That was the theory, but uh, it, I think it worked a little bit. We certainly got the results we wanted. We won the war. But uh, I don't actually have anything against Arch in of itself. I have a few things against Gluttony. I have a few things against uh, some of the shitters he keeps over there. But, you know, to each their own. Uh, by the way, we fired up the, the giveaway. Is, um, I don't know if Flacco is still here. You don't want 20 mil. Yo, is Flacco still here? Flacco, Flacco. Uh, 
Uh, what was the what was the giveaway? Does anybody remember? It was some sort of uh. Uh, uh Master mil Elite Direwolf. I heard twenty mil. I heard twenty mil. Okay, so, okay, yeah, it's some shit that's worth twenty mil. That's all I fucking know, boys. So I want twenty mil. Exclamation mark Mubrafi with two Fs. We fixed it this time because, uh, shout out to him. He sponsored this giveaway. A uh, very generous friend of mine. Um, real quick, I have a clip that I, I want to play real quick of um. Oh, Mactep raging. It has no oh, bad yes. words, so it should be fine. Uh, here we go. Okay. Uh, my guys. Orden push, orden push. They turning on me. Yeah. Orden push him. Yeah. Okay. Orden fuck you. <laughs> yes, here we go. Yes, here we go. Yes, here we go. I am. I will be there in thirty seconds. That's a little one, though. That's a little Mac to Rage. That's nothing, bro. But you, you see the enjoyment, the, the joy in Cynic's oh, voice, bro. So bad, Fuck you! <laughs> oh, man. Uh, we have another video here. Um, this is the Uwu one. You've seen this before, Cynic, right? Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, by the way, for the giveaway, uh, exclamation mark, Mobrafi, we only have 74 people. Uh, if we can hit 100, that would be nice. If not, then it's more chance to win for y'all, so it's okay. Uh, we're going to play this video real quick here. Oh, man, the volume's so low on that shit. What the fuck? Oh, actually, no, it was fine. It seemed fine. Could you hear that good? Could you hear that good? See it or not? Barely, barely. Yeah, yeah. Barely? I know the clip. Okay. Fuck. I know the clip, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, stuff happens in CTAs, you know? Sometimes, like, I always tell my guys, you know, what happens in CTAs, don't take it personal. You know, the, sometimes it gets to me, sometimes it doesn't. We all love you and it's all fine. Mm -hmm. Be wholesome. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and then they make me do it every day. Yeah, I guess that you should have turned it up. Okay, I fixed the I fixed the audio. I fixed the audio. We're gonna play it one more time. And Hannah fucking Uwu, get the fuck over here. <laughs> that's better, right? Yeah, that's better. <laughs> By the way, shout out Scanyamo. Thank you so much, my brother. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> Anna fucking Uwu. Was there someone called Anna Uwu in your guild? Yeah, you know, uh, one of our mutual friends made a picture about this. Hold on. I'll, <laughs> I'll put it in the general chat for you. Oh. I have this somewhere here. Let me see. Hold on. Glorious archive. <laughs> I gotta have a loop back here dancing. Hannah fucking know. Was that Snow Hill's alt that she had in CIR? No, no, no. That was a Pinoy uh, oh. creature. I think it was a creature. I'm not sure. Oh my, find the clip. What is it? Uh, well, he looks oh, for I that. Oh, I found it. I found it. I found it. You found it? Yeah. Are you posting it in general or are you, you going to send yeah. Stop the heresy. Do not use enemy language. I don't get it. Oh, I see Uwu on that shit. Okay. Uwu. <laughs> and eBay. I love Big D. Um, all right, let's throw you some names, yeah? Sure. We're at the last final stage of the Syndic interview here. Um, going to throw you some names. Africa, you already, you already told us what you think about him. Uh, is there anything you want to add to that one? Uh, well, what did I say thus far? Uh, you said um, that, that he was solid before and then he kind of changed. Mental breakdown. Yeah. Right? I stand Mental by breakdown. that. Okay. I stand by that. All right, let's go with the next one. Artista. Uh, I haven't had the... Uh, I've only fought Artista. So, uh, I have a... 
minus two opinion because he was an enemy. I've if I've played once with him or twice when he was supposed to come and then he ditched us when when he was supposed to come help us at zero zero. Uh, I haven't played enough with him to know him. Uh, I can't really say anything. Um, I mean, he led the guild. He achieved shit. He held the line when the line needed to be held. I I, I respect that. Mm -hmm. Um, Mamono. Um. Uh, huh. I mean, I guess he's kind of human. Okay. <laughs> so he's not fully in the creature uh, ballpark. I mean, let's be fair. Mamono is, uh, for all his faults, he is. Uh. He is emotional because he cares about what he does, right? He's he's emotional because he's invested in the in the game he plays, how he plays the game. Mm -hmm. I would if I was forced to choose, I would rather interact with Mamono than with Tamisha or with Dungeon Realms or with any of those chuckle bugs. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I had the choice, I would burn all three of them. Derek. Uh, hello. Okay, <laughs> you're right. Wait, 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 bro. Uh, uh, Mr. Wait. Gluttony. Wait, wait, hold on. Gluttony is not important. You need to play the most important clip ever. Which one? I have this. <coughs> what this do you think about Gluttony? One? Here we go. That's the most important clip you need to play because it tells you everything. All right, let's see. Is it PG? Uh, yeah, I think it is. Cool, 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 cool. I invited yeah, him to POE, but I don't know the... the, the what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one more time, one more time. <laughs> I invited him to POE, but I don't know the... the did the, what? The... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Um, gluttony. <laughs> yeah. That was right after we got rid of him, bro. That was that's hilarious. What do you think about glut, uh, Syndic? I was muted. I was muted. Uh, so uh, about gluttony, right? Yeah. Um, in a way, I like gluttony because uh, because he he does try to create uh something that nobody in Albion does which is to include everybody uh whoever wants can join arch with at a certain fee of course uh and they can place the little hideouts they run around they can do whatever and he does create something that Albion I think need because Albion cannot be a, a circle jerk for you know, the 200 elitist veterans that somehow crammed themselves into the same guild uh, accidentally to run around and frolic. Um, I think one thing I like about Gluttony is that he's patient and he is uh, inclusive of other people and considerate towards their feelings. Mm. Now, the reason why I hate Gluttony, and I will have chat with him at some point, uh, is that in every every war I've had in this game that he was involved in on our side, he ended up either fucking me over or backstabbing me. Gotcha. First by pushing Africa to, to give him zones, which led to Africa leaving the first coalition in season 8 and joining you. Then by being neutral and, and asking for three bill silver to be neutral with Elevate, or he was going to help Elevate. Then joining fights, half-assing, doing stuff. I mean, Arch without Joe is something else. Uh, Arch with Joe, I like a lot. And I like the Arch with Seed. Seed and Joe are, give Arch a lot of, uh, a lot more than they're credited for. And uh, I think uh, they can be recognized a lot more, especially Joe as uh, the guy who, I don't know how he coordinates all of that, honestly. 
but he does, and he does it well. All right. No. Uh, Shiro. Uh, not even human. <laughs> uh, like, um, do you at least know, find I, him funny? Do you at least find him funny? I, to a degree, yes. But okay. um, in the Russian community, in the game, there is a uh, polarization, right? You have the Shiro, you have the Maktep, and, and then you have those RM tiers up there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I love Maktep and have more history with Maktep than with anybody else. So I'm perfectly happy to kill everybody else because none of them can coexist together. That's the funny thing about the Russian community. They all hate each other and they can never work together mm -hmm. for whatever stupid reason. Mm -hmm. uh, because of something somebody said on the forums 10 years ago. Um, I I haven't seen Shiro do anything uh, besides talk a lot. <laughs> and, and get other people into a ditch. That's pretty much it. Um, then, I mean, he does have a track record for losing, so... Damn. Um... Shout out to my boy Shiro though. That's still, that's still I love that motherfucker, man. Um, Big Banana, do you have anything to add to that? I think you you pretty much covered him. I if there's respect, anything you want to add, I respect what he is. Uh, and when he needs help, well, if he needs a call, I will bring even that last little guy on his little soul side with one KIP, mm -hmm. and he will stand the queue and do his job. Um, ellipsis. Well, that's the you know, company might be gone, but the war keep, keeps on going. Let's listen to that message. Me. Well, well, sorry, hold on. Yeah, <sighs> um, I don't have anything. I, I've never played with the with ellipsis in that sense. Uh, like you've played, I, I, I believe, yeah. Yeah, but not really. Other people have played. I don't. I, I've never played with him. I've played against him uh, for I think a year, uh, give or take, in no. like first season. Well, first, second, and third season. Um, I know more about him from other people, like like Ollie and Dirty and you and uh, others but from everything i've heard i don't um i don't see anything to write home about right uh what about damnet uh bad damn it uh he ruined himself and his guilt by having no no value to his word uh whoever tries to make a deal with him pretty much learns very fast that that changes very quickly pretty much as soon as he doesn't need you he's gonna drop you and backstab you which is what happened to uh i think sarge was doing something up north he got screwed over I, I I don't think there is an alliance in Albion that he hasn't screwed over thinking that nobody remembers anything. Um, I still remember when he came to bomb my queue in Flamet 4. And when I find the time to uh, visit him, I would love to visit him. Uh, what about Kushri? Bro. Listen, Kushiri is, um, I don't want to repeat myself. He is a degenerate. I don't want to repeat myself. <laughs> All right. All right. I don't cool, have anything cool, nice cool. to say about the dude. Listen, the dude Understood. is an emotional Understood. vagina. Gotcha. Um, what about Shazar? That's an old name for you. Um, I remember Shazar pretty well. Um, I wasn't impressed with him early on, but I respect what he's done uh, early on in Blue Army with with handling the political situation. 
on behalf of Blue Army. I don't like like my my first interaction with, with Shazar was him telling me to drop him towers or he was gonna bring money guilds eight. <laughs> and then I said, okay, bro. Um, uh -huh. And then uh, I think he got some um, some towers, I think, uh, between Anglia and Cambria, and a little bit southeast. Um, I don't remember what he was called, but, but I know Blue Army had towers, thanks to his actions, and I know he did really good work for you guys. So, I mean, dude kept you together, he worked with you guys, so, so he did something right. Right. I just wasn't ready to it. Gotcha. Um, Made us all millionaires. What? Nothing. <laughs> he said nothing. What? He said he made us all millionaires. Oh, did he? Yo, where's my cut? <laughs> um, our best friend Dungeon Rounds. Bro. Bro, can we start talking about the human population now? <laughs> Talk about like I don't know uh, what's his name. Hold on, let me let me have to. Seed's a now. human. I had seed on the list, but you yeah, already. Let's talk about seed. Oh, I mean, give me a long story short. These gotta be short. About what? About dungeon rounds? No, no, no. Just in general. Just in general. About seed? Yeah, I mean, just in general, the the names. Give us like your 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 um how do you say it? your summary of these people. First reaction. Synopsis. Dungeon rooms. Backstabs allies whenever he can. Changes deal. Changes deals because he's trying to make money and role play as Blue Army, but it fails comically because he's incompetent. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. so he's good at this. Uh, Seed. Seed is a wonderful young man. Boom. Uh, the Negro. Who is going to go very far if he plays his card back again. <laughs> <laughs> when phase three is online um the negro and diana uh, uh which diana the one that got accidentally banned yes <laughs> that was a very unfortunate event uh well suffice to say it couldn't have happened to a better trader <laughs> who was unfortunately found guilty of viciously rmt as most brazilians are <laughs> Um, but Diana did have his good sides. He was, uh, he was enjoyable to communicate with. He understood English. Uh, but he had this guy, Vento94. You don't like and, Vento? Uh, I, I think he's right now infesting Africa's guild. So I'm, <laughs> so I'm pretty sure Silver is going to start going missing soon. Um, oh. I don't have anything good to say about El Negro, honestly. Uh... Probably the most cringiest moment in Albion, right, uh, was when we were sitting in TeamSpeak after I don't know what CTA. And I knew, right, because, you know, people talk, so I knew what he's going to do because he's quote unquote told his boys he's going to do it. And we're sitting here in TeamSpeak and I know he's going to fuck off and make the, the new guild and all that stuff. And we're sitting in TeamSpeak and, and like... I have never had somebody like disgustingly try to suck my dick that way like that time. About what though? Like what was he trying to get? Uh, elaborate uh, further. In general, kind of like, you know, you're the best. I love you. Nobody will beat you ever. You know? Yeah. Or what was he trying to get like on your side? I don't know. Like, I, I I guess he was trying to leave on a, on good terms. Gotcha. You know? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And since we were in team speak, you know, with the other GMs and the cores stuff, uh, in the back of my head, I imagine he was trying to make a show of leaving a good impression, so that down the road he could slide into their DMs, which God knows he tried, because uh, when he was on the way out, he was sliding in everybody's DMs. Everybody's DMs got slid in. I remember, uh, fuck, what was his name? Uh, the annoying emotional guy. Um, Nerg. Nerg was sending me, uh, screenshots of that. It was cringe, bro. Cringe. Mm -hmm. On that note, Tamisha. I'm not racist, but 
He's not human. Uh, what about... Um, uh -huh, uh -huh. If you like, have something. Jokes aside, uh, that clip that we played a little bit ago tells me everything I need to know about the man. And that is enough for me to know that I never want anything to do with him. Okay. Uh, uh, blast. Flow me. Um, well, like I said, an unfortunate, unfortunate mistake, but uh, is what it is, right? Yeah. And last one for you, um, Shoza. <laughs> oh, shit, sorry. Why Chosen? Do you laugh? <clears throat> Tread on. carefully. Chosen is... What you're talking about. I've been playing MMOs since... Um, I think 2002 or whatever. So, they're about 20 years. Chosen is one of the most incompetent fluff writers for video game or for video game community that it's it's absolutely criminal i have no idea who hired him i have no idea how he keeps his job but the man doesn't know anything in game <laughs> nothing no, not even one millimeter about the in-game politics he doesn't know about the only thing he knows is that he's gonna pick a guild, right? When when people were calling the Albion TV, BA TV, you remember that? Uh, then he picked POE, right? And he was hyping us every war report in season eight. And uh, we were the ones taking down the evil Mojo Empire of RNT and whatnot. Uh, and he, he just goes through those cycles. You know, he will pick a guild and then he will follow them and he will shit talk everybody they're fighting indirectly or directly. And that way try to influence the game in his his mind, so to speak. Mm. Um, I don't like uh, stuff like that where the history of the game is perverted by incompetent buffoons. So uh, random opinion, random yeah, opinion. Random us. opinions, yeah. Uh, I I honestly, I've been looking at the war report since release. Back when I did my first interview. Uh, I remember just sitting there with my, with literally my face in my hands wondering, what is this guy talking about? Because <laughs> uh, he was narrating. Remember the, the, the war in Cambria against DC? everything wrong dude missed everything me uh we would launch on each other to trade the tower and the dude would draw up a whole curtain of how it's civil war in poe and everything is breaking down you know yeah. because we launched on each other to transfer a tower because that was the you know most efficient way of doing it. um and stuff like that just absolutely one of one of the worst uh game news reporters i've had to read <laughs> i have no idea who hired him or how he keeps his job I, that, I mean that everybody's known that though everybody has always the same opinion about him too like he's just fucking lost when it comes to like casting and shit thanks god yeah. like robin and Pack at least know what the fuck they're talking about if not the, i don't even think the show will be on by now to be well, honest robin's even worse actually but robin is even worse. <laughs> what? no when it comes to cbc calling uh robin is worse in the sense that Chosen doesn't know what he's doing, right? So he is the a, equivalent of somebody stumbling in the dark, you know, trying to do something. So it's kind of yeah. comical, it's kind of sad to watch. But Robin knows what he's talking about. So when he uses his position to advocate a certain game change, then he's twisting the game towards a certain way. Oh, which really? he likes, but that might not be what what's the most uh yeah what other people think exactly yeah and often that is presented as the majority's view when it's quite clear mm -hmm. just like when everybody wanted to have hideouts limited to setting home that was uh a big everyone wanted that yeah sure okay 
Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, it, 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 experiencing Albion people firsthand, it's just super hard to find people who show up on time, who are consistent. So, I mean, like those guys are as consistent as it gets, you know, so it explains yeah. why they're able to, to uh, hold the responsibility and stuff like that. Um, I would love to listen to Seed, bro. Seed is a Seed is a caster, definitely, right? Definitely, definitely. I would love to listen to Seed because yeah. Seed has the voice, the attitude, and as a caller that 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 actually calls, uh, not like that chuckle fuck that waited for me to go AFK to say something. Seed actually calls for a Zerg that uh, you know when he goes east, the Zerg goes west. So Seed has to work twice as good to get results out of his Zerg. And, and I, I respect that. Seed is a much better caller than, uh, what was that guy's name that was the best caller in the history of the game that learned everything in one season? Hey, something, whatever. Oh, oh Addison. Yeah, that dude. Uh, <laughs> much better call, much better. Yo, yo, people keep on asking though, what you think about Retro Man? Yeah, I was gonna say. I was gonna say that. Like uh, that was kind of depressing. Okay. I thought I was gonna get a more positive answer. But so, so let's go with someone more positive. What, what do you think about Retro Man? I have nothing. I I think Retro Man is a wonderful human being, but he did murder the Claren Blade, which was a perfectly fine weapon, because one little guild of of soft cocks was crying too much about it. Uh and he ruined a perfectly good weapon uh he has a history of doing that with other weapons and i don't like how he decides to make the changes but he has also done some really great things right uh, yeah, yeah. so one can say that he's you know four out of five you know everybody can make mistakes and the dude tries to do his job the best he can yeah, bro, he stays up. I don't, hell I don't think too. he. I don't think he but gets a lot he of help. Did to the client, we will never forget it. We will have a reckoning for that one day. Bro, I will. I will say about retro. I don't think he gets a lot of help. No, no, no none whatsoever. Yeah, he's by far the hardest working person I've seen in SBI for sure, bro. That guy stays up until most, two in the morning with us. Retro has the most ungrateful job in in SBI, right? Yeah. Because yeah. every player that he talks to, right, is trying to get get a change out of him that benefits his guild mm -hmm. that's like the worst position to be in because he's talking with you know so and so many people but everybody's just trying to use him like a cheap you know you know uh, slut right so he's, he's just stuck yeah and then and then everything is his fault at the end of the day you know people just blame at the him end of the day, he's holding the bucket of shit yeah right like uh, with the clan and blade which he murdered. <laughs> he murdered a perfectly good weapon. Um, what do you? How do you feel about taxing silver bags? I think that it is absolutely criminal. That is still even discussed in season, uh, whatever, 15, 16, 17. No, wait, 17 is when when Seed and me ride on Arch. Uh, <laughs> so stupid. Um, Yo, Syndic has the best jab in, in Albion history. No, but, but like seriously, season 16, we're talking about taxing silver bags, you know? Yeah. They're like, it's not relevant because every guild in the game has, you know, organized themselves and figured out how to generate income uh, without the in-game mechanic. So at this point they could remove the tax mechanic and nobody would know this because everybody uses either bots or sheets or this or that to uh create gear to fund their guild to to get stuff done mm -hmm. i i personally do it i do not need anything in game as a mechanic my guild could function uh purely off of the tools and sheets that we built that are maintained and that we just use out of the game. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Um, I'm gonna ask you some some uh, quick questions. I want you to tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay. Are you sure? Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, who do you prefer, Team Casualty or Take Care? Uh, like as a guild name or? No, no. Like who's better? Who is better? 
Team casualty by far. Uh, last sworn or homeless crew? Uh, homeless crew. Uh, last sworn or made in BR? Sex with X, whatever you want to call it. Uh, last one. Uh, elevate with Momono or after Momono? Elevate with Momono. Escalation. Wait, uh, in the sense that it's harder to fight or, or that it's better, what? Um, better, harder to fight, stronger. I love it. With, with Overall. Momono, it's much stronger than, than this travesty. Yeah. <laughs> travesty. <laughs> Escalation. Bro, just quick words, bro. Escalation or elevate Freeman? Same shit. <laughs> <laughs> Who was better, BA season 13 or BA season 10? Uh, BA season 13. Okay. Uh, POE season 9 or POE season 11, 12, 13? Uh, season 9. Um, Newcastle. Only because Loxie actually massed 100 people, Loxie, instead of 60. Yeah. Uh, new castles or old castles? Ah, same shit, nobody cares. Brazilian players or Latino players? <laughs> same shit. Um, I think BR players are, are, are better, to be honest. Uh, the better question will be Brazilian players or Turkish players? That's not even close, bro. Yeah, right? B BRs win that any That's day. That's what I keep saying. Um... Gladiator or Troy? Gladiator by far. Why? Troy is a travesty as well. A travesty? <laughs> it is, bro. Yo, Goku... Like, the one with Gladiator that, always wins, though. Yeah. You gotta switch that shit up. Yo, Goku because, or Vegeta. Right? And now go ahead, go ahead. When you remember Gladiator, right? Uh -huh. You can feel Maximus. You, you can identify yourself with Maximus because the reason why he takes the steps he takes to do the things he does to keep going, keep pushing, you can identify with it. It's it, it's a human quality. Troy is, you know, yeah, Brad Pitt, you know, oh, jump stab done. That's yeah. not how it works. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's unrealistic, you know. right? Yeah, it's just, it's Hollywood. Yeah. And then like uh, Gladiator with Maximus, it's like, <clears throat> that, that's how every man should be. You know, yeah, every man like, should be. When he speaks, you or, feel like shit in your balls, you know? Yeah. Or 300, though. Gladiator or 300? No, it's not even the same. Yeah, it's like the opposite type of move. But who's know? more manly, yeah, though? I like how 300 is just like trying to be Gladiator, but it's failing miserably. <laughs> yeah. Um, Last question. Goku or Vegeta? Did you say Concord or Vegeta? No, Goku. So. <laughs> <laughs> Go, Goku. Say Goku or Vegeta from Dragon Ball Z. He probably doesn't know. No, no idea. Okay. Oh my God, I never so met a person who doesn't know what Dragon Ball Z is. All right, so they, they obviously didn't have uh, <laughs> Dragon Ball Z in Russia. That's for sure. We live in the great country of Norway, good sir. Yeah. Um, that's not weep shit, bro. Someone said it's weep shit. That's not weep shit. If it's Dragon Ball Z, it's not weep. Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, and Dragon Ball Z is excused from the weeb category. And so is Farchi Digimon. By far, baby. <laughs> huh? Nah, Farchi is type Oh, yeah, Farchi or Larchi. That's a good one. Not even a contest. <laughs> I would snuff Larchi out in his sleep. <laughs> Oh man, bro, we, we've been going for four hours and a half, dude. This is almost twice as long as the other interviews. And bro, I left out so much stuff too because I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, bro, we can't go for six that's only hours. From this game. Yeah, true. That's only from this game, and that's not even all the experiences, all the fucking uh, things. By the way, boys, we're about to we do a giveaway in five to, minutes. We need your zero to Harvard story, bro. That's what we needed yeah yo uh giveaway in five minutes exclamation mark Bobrafi. i'm gonna copy and paste today if you guys are trying to join uh this is to appreciate everybody that stayed and watched until the end you guys are absolute fucking soldiers man um shout out to plush shout out to tapsy those two <laughs> dudes lost their minds tonight man so so shout out to them yo mcflurry's is on me tonight i'm buying for everybody so um yeah, so a couple minutes we're, we're gonna give, give this uh, giveaway. Hmm. Say again. 
Well, sorry. Do the giveaway. Uh, no, we still got a couple minutes. So if you guys got I guess questions, I break the news. Oh, what what news? What news? What news? Talk to me. We have oh. decided. I've decided that now that we have won all all the wars and defeated all challengers, POE will temporarily rebrand as a new alliance. Oh shit! Yo, that, that's first time in like a few years, no? Yeah, but since uh, God, uh, remember? It's only a temporary year. Just to see how it goes, bro. That was an exclusive announcement, bro. You guys Can we get a hint it? though? Name, yeah, POE is joining Arch. No, Wait, what is that noise? <laughs> that was a bomb. Oh, I was like, yo, somebody's mic is fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Imperium of Man, is that what it's called? Yes, uh, Imperium of Man. I absolute power what no that's what the real definition is okay you're bad at googling bro i like no, that shit, bro I'll, I'll english right is now. your first language and how I'll are you bad at this yeah. yo tell us uh, yo tell us um well we, while we let people sign up for this giveaway tell us uh why you decided to rebrand well um uh, did shit I've just get stale it, right? i've never done it up to this point right and I don't know what the big deal is, so I'm gonna, you know, I'll try and see what happens. <laughs> you know, um, you're a simple there, man, bro. There's obviously something in it. I've never experienced it up to this point, so I'm just gonna change the ticket for a bit. Syndic, how did it feel to take Darbo snack from us? Uh, <laughs> I, I had this question for a long time. Bro, listen, uh, in my bank, right? There's this demo hammer, right? <laughs> so, every time somebody stops showing up because they've had enough or whatever, this demo hammer comes out for that last shield. It was glorious then. This hammer has whacked every elevate high down. <laughs> every this ally. My lucky hammer. Yo, listen, every ally they left behind, every little surf guild, every little. Valon or uh, Jungle or any of those guilds, right? On the last shield, this hammer came out and twatted that shit down into the ground. Uh, someone, yo, um, Sepres is asking, uh, does that mean all the PUE blacklists are removed? That's a good uh, question. Are you, are you, are you resetting the blacklist? Why would we reset the blacklist? Because <laughs> um, you're rebranding. You're supposed to do that. That's not how it works. <laughs> and if I if I heard right about uh, who is involved, why don't you show the blacklist on the screen, Mr. Mojo? Mm -hmm. There you go. I'll ping you in the channel. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Uh, hold on. What's his name? I think it's this. There you go. It's in the new member chat in the other Discord. Or wait, hold on, I'll, I'll just copy paste. Please. What the hell? Oh, okay. Sh should I should I copy paste this? Might as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna copy paste this in the chat. Yeah. No, I won't. My well, How much is uh, Separate on the blacklist for? Um, uh, I don't know. The, I'm I'm always open to offers, but uh, I don't think it's gonna work out. I don't like emotional people that flip flop. You know, right. like uh, Kusher is a good example of. I despise people like that that change their mind in like blink of a moment. Now they're in Elevate, then they join CR. Then, yeah. then they went to last one from last one they went back to elevate you know like playing the, the triangle of 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 guilds because their feelings are you know very important yeah man that shit gets uh, old bro yeah that shit that's very old um and i don't like playing with people like that mm -hmm. uh so it would have i'm not saying never never but it would have to be a considerable amount of money mm -hmm. 
Because I remember when when a certain robot was being removed from the blacklist, there was 500 mil in the wallet. Gotcha. So, uh, yeah. Who's messaging me? I'm trying to see if Mark 2K is still in this bitch. Uh, he had a question, but he, he's like always busy or whatever. But um, uh, I forgot to ask you, and thanks for reminding me, Monster. Uh, who are the top three people that you would want to meet that are <laughs> that are alive? Oh, I know that question. I know that question. Uh, that's the one where everybody goes, you know, uh, Genghis Khan and Elon Musk. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I would like, if I had the opportunity, uh, I would like to meet uh, probably as number one, uh, Isaac Asimov. As number two, I would like to meet Christopher Hitchin, who uh, passed, I think. I remember him. He's super smart. Yeah, very smart. Very smart guy and very eloquent with a... Certain. He's the the atheist, right? He is, yeah. But outside of that, he's a very, uh, very eloquent and very uh, smart um, human being. I enjoy listening to uh, whatever is left of his uh, talks and lectures. And for my third. Mm, I can't think of anybody that's like. Wait, so who is your ah. first? You have Christopher Hitchens. Who was your first? Isaac Asimov. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, and I would like to meet up with Duratine and get high once and lose my phone. No, it doesn't count though. You already met Duratine online. It, it needs to be someone you've never met before. That yeah, you but he hasn't stolen my phone, dude. That's part of the experience. <laughs> you gotta pick someone else. You gotta pick someone else. Okay, okay. Uh, oh. um, I was going to say Stalin, but, but he would kill me. Um, I don't know, I kind of like Churchill. I'd like to meet Churchill. Churchill. Boom. He's a and banger. Those three are all new, so that's appreciated. Usually people just give the same answers. So so this one was a little bit more original, so I appreciate that. Um, boom, let's do the giveaway here. <coughs> Let's see who wins this shit. By the way, Jason, you missed out, bro. You should have been in here, reminiscing with us talking about the uh, Cynic story. By the, by the way, Cynic, how do you feel about the, uh, Jason? the nickname? Okay, sure. Tell us your opinion on Jason. Jason betrayed me. No, he did. Because every time the going gets tough. He goes to the hospital, you know, he's like Lothal in that sense, because Lothal, every time somebody asks him a question that's kind of funny, he, he gets rushed into surgery. <laughs> Dude's been in more surgeries than, than I have socks. Like your words physically <laughs> hurt him? No, but Jason, when Jason said the doctor, he's not lying. No, no. You could take that I'm to good. the bank. Um, I like Jason. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's a good drunk. I like him. Yeah. Um... What the fuck was I going to Oh, yeah. How, how do you feel when people call you the emperor and a villain and stuff like that? Do you hate that shit? Or do you do you embrace that shit? I don't have shit? any feeling. You're just indifferent uh, to it? I'm indifferent to it. I don't think I'm the villain uh, because I've never, I've never actually made it my goal or mission or whatever objective in the game to, you know conquer the world or uh, do whatever of the things that they're saying that I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, I think I made a post after the after the fight with Blue Army back in season eight mm -hmm. that we just want to BOE feels that or right now the Imperium of Man <clears throat> feels that we deserve a small corner of the black zone. If anybody has a problem with that, we're ready to fight for it, and we don't want anybody else's shit. Gotcha. So uh, I don't feel like we're the evil villains, but uh, if they need one, why not? Sure, I'll be the villain. Yeah. 
I'm not saying I'm not saying villain as a as you're the bad person. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying, but I'm saying you're a good villain. Like you know how to play the role of like pissing people off and getting people I mean, to rally against you. The, the candy, you know. Mm -hmm. Like what what I was saying earlier, I messed up at the beginning of the interview. He's the antithesis of an anti-hero, right? If there's a necessary evil in the game that people want to aspire to, I, what's I evil about me? See, it's nothing. You don't even have to be evil. That's the thing, right? Because you have this and you have that, people are automatically going to see that and be like, oh, they, they must be doing something real good over there. I don't want to be a part of that. So maybe I'm doing something, something to go against them, right? And that's just the, the whole mentality. Why would you not want to be a part of something good? Would you rather be led by incompetent emotional vaginas that disband your guild and steal all the money once every season? <laughs> because they're focusing on their school or their family or starting a new job? Like, how many jobs can you start? You know? Yeah. Exactly. Somebody said haters gonna hate and, uh, you know, controversy sells. So, I mean, it, it that's... That's your role in this game, whether you like it or not. You can sit back and do whatever you want. People are going to talk about you. I mean, I I have been sitting back and doing my own thing. And and you've seen with the, the results, right? Yeah, I mean, listen, I I made an, an, an announcement to my boys, right? A little while ago. The fifth anti-POE coalition is dead. Now we will be caught by surprise by the sixth one, just like the other four. <laughs> And that's how it goes. You know, we're gonna drop a Squirtle hideout in Snag, because there needs to be a Squirtle hideout in Snag. And that will be the first thing to get destroyed. And then uh, in three or four months, they will go play another game. They'll get the right, uh, take care, we'll find them and kill them and evict them. They'll come back to Albion, we'll have Coalition 7. You know, listen, eventually they'll run out of players. That's how it goes, because their player base is trash talk, right? The people that they pull through trash talk because trash talk makes you think somebody's opinion matters. It doesn't. Nobody cares what Dungeon Realms think. Nobody cares what I think. Nobody should care what I think. And my player base is the whole game. I'm perfectly happy to have, let's say, Seed. Or Seed or Flacco, even this Jason character. Yeah. Uh, in my guild doing stuff, running around, dying hilariously, uh, you know, dying in a fire. Why couldn't have fun with that? I I I wouldn't like the seven Lulu guy in my guild because he's very emotional. Like that <laughs> guy. But these other guys, yeah, sure, why not? And they need the bangers, you know? And bangers are a lot harder to produce than uh, the Flacco's and the Jason's of the world. Stop it! Thanks, buddy. You're making me blush here, bro. So, who do you, so do you see yourself getting beat in this game, Cindy? Like, as far as, like, deletion of everything that you have and having to... Have you heard about our Lord and Savior, the headquarters, buddy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thanks to my arch, uh, uh, my uh, well, it's not really an arch nemesis, but my my biggest fan, Dungeon Realms, uh, I now have this headquarters, and now Blue Army can never evict him from the Black Zone, but consequently neither can he. Oh, do, bro, do you think if we? <laughs> Uh, I don't even want to think about it, bro. I, if I start thinking about that one day I get unleashed on on uh, the game, bro. I we'll, think that's a travesty, by the way. We'll, I do we'll this be living day, I with think, them. I think it's a travesty that uh, these kids manipulated the developers into thinking there is a community backlash. So you got banned because you didn't rmt but somebody in your guild is or was somebody in my guild got banned for rmt two days ago so by the same logic i should be banned right now all right yeah that was like a one-time thing you know or else they would have to ban a lot of people yeah and my dear friend andrew slash lebron slash daba slash uh wheelchair 
enemy instead is wow. whatever, still playing the game on his seventh account. And uh, I do believe there's a number of other people that are also on their third or fourth or seventh account by some miracle of Jesus. I actually, like, honestly, it's, it's pure comedy to me, which is why the, the last time, right, when they had a roundtable call, they always do that thing where they announce people, you know? Yep. So I changed my name to Syndic DRNT Overlord. So I made them say it. <laughs> they said the whole thing? The, yeah, yes, they did. And he told about it. That's and Shosen was on my support because he can't take a joke. No, he got mad at you? No, he didn't get mad. He just started, you know, swallowing. I think there was a lot of outrage <laughs> around Mojo by a lot of loud voices when the majority of the game didn't care, didn't blame him for anything. But the louder, you know, outraged voices just kept shrieking and shrieking. Yeah, that's the... Like, it's actually criminal that uh, stuff happens in this game because somebody posts on Reddit. And spams enough accounts on Reddit to brigade and vault up certain things to represent it as somehow relevant. It's not relevant. None of it's relevant. Like, they published this season's uh, result as the most active PvP ever in the history of the game. Yeah, right, buddy. Yeah, that's not true. You, you can pretty much, you can pretty much. Stat, you know, it mm -hmm. might be true, but it's true because there's eight three Zergs having friendly fights, you know? No, but I don't think, I don't, like, if they say a number Maybe like that. Maybe the objectives and whatnot, right? Yeah, Maybe the small in between scale. timers? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think they're talking about events, individual events, you know, like. Because like yeah. then that, that, that would make of. sense, because there's more, like, 1v1s, 5v5s, 10v10s, 20 v Absolutely. As far as that goes, Mojo, yeah. I know you haven't had the opportunity to explore it uh, yeah. with your condition, but this update has been the best thing that could have happened to the game for a while. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's pretty much ever condition. since Queen released. Best update since Queen. In, in terms of, you know, when you log in, you have something to do. Right. And you can do it, but if you don't want to do it, it's not the end of the world. You're not going to, you know, lose your hideout if you don't get the one core. Or if you don't get the one vortex. It's not life or death. It's just something you can do and have fun and kill shit and blow shit up and get killed it's it, it's pretty good mm -hmm. like kudos to them this update thanks to my uh biggest fan dungeon drones is probably the best thing ever especially the part about the hideouts and the headquarters because mm -hmm. there's a lot more guilds that are act actively li living out of their headquarters now a lot more before yeah i was yeah. the weird guy that was living in the black zone and everybody else was bas uh, was massing in the royals now everybody comes out of their hideouts sorry mm -hmm. headquarters and that's not a bad thing honestly yeah for sure I, it's definitely uh, going towards a healthier direction so the devs Absolutely. the devs are definitely on point with with that because just like what we were talking about before with the um, the CTA guilds not being a healthy thing for the game. 100% agree with you. Did you like the game more with or without hideouts? I. What do you mean? When it was five guys in the guild playing and 295 spectating? No, no. no I, I think mean, he like, means besides that. Just, just hideouts in general. Do you think they helped the game out a lot? Do you think that. Of course they did. Lost some of its um of black zone mentality by having a place in the black zone actually no like no 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 like uh, if you remember like there was only so many town plots in the game right yes so only the best slash strongest guilds had them right and nobody else could could, could get in and the only way they could get in was by renting one out from sun in anglia Out of GBG well, was one. ridiculous. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think this is much better where you don't have to be a 300 man guild to get something. You can be a 50 man guild, go into a <clears throat> quality one, two, or three zone, and through your effort, you know, uh, you can get a headquarters and you can live there. You can 
do your best. I think that you can judge the results, you can judge wins and losses, but nobody can judge the effort that somebody puts into something, uh, in a sense, because only the individual knows how much effort they're putting. Uh, so I think everybody who has a, a, a headquarters and keeps it in the black or, or a hideout and keeps it in the black zone, I power to them, dude. Why not? The more the merrier. And and if they don't want to to, to go through the hassle of keeping a hideout slash headquarter in the black zone, there's alternative arrangements they could do in the Department of Economic Co Prosperity. <laughs> Otherwise, no one's the for you. <laughs> Because there is always room for more citizens. Yeah. Okay. Yo, that officially puts us just a minute below uh, the five hour mark <laughs> interview. Uh, real quick, Cynic, uh, any shout outs? Any quick shout outs you want to do? Quick shout outs. Okay. Um, obviously, uh, first shout out to MacTap and Loxy for the last two, three, four, whatever years. Uh, uh, I love you guys. You're the best. <clears throat> Shout out to Hanzo for being the best Logi person. Starman, Knife Day. Uh, what's his face? Koyas, the browser player. Hold on, let me look. There's too many of them. Sirik, the feeder. There you go. Boom. Satan. Satan is a blue army banger. I love that dude. Good guy, man. Sounds like death, but I love him. <laughs> Leshil, who was amazing. I miss Leshil. I, I I wish he still played the game, but I I wish him all the best in real life because I know how hard he worked to get to where he is. I'm proud of him, even though he's not with us right now. Good guy. Um, really nice guy. Um, Plebicus the Betrayer. No, I mean Plebicus the Derpicus. I hope he will continue to entertain us with his figures. Wales, the most wholesome French person uh, of all times. Um, I don't know, dude, the, there's so many people I could mention. Like I said to my guys, like there's unsung heroes in the guild. Every guild has them and nobody appreciates them. And I want to appreciate the ones in the guild. Like too many guilds are one man shows, you know? Like yeah, Tamisha is nothing, nothing. You could put DBDB to call for Elevate, and he would be just as good as Tamisha. There's literally no difference. Shout out to... DBDB would be worse. Yeah, shout out to Tamisha. No, better, better, better. Uh, better. Shout out to Tamisha and her and her League of Legends partner. And Anera, yes. I know she's very important to... Ah. Yeah. So shout out Wait, to was it... I thought she was a serious e-dater. <laughs> So shout out to them too. We wish them nothing but the best. Right, Cynic? Nothing but the best. For oh, you. <laughs> so that's it. Um, thank you so much, Cynic, bro. Five hours. Uh, this was by far my favorite interview. Uh, that puts Magic Mark at number two. <laughs> and that puts All the right. glut one. And that puts the glut one at number three. Yeah, bro. Because w with Magic Mark. Uh, we went through it pretty quickly. Two, two hours. Like uh, we'll have to see when we have him back on. We'll see if he can hit the. We can hit the three hour, four hour mark. But I don't think we're ever gonna hit the five hour mark again. It's gonna be a long time before that shit happens again. Uh, so we appreciate it a lot, bro, because we know you don't like doing uh, interviews and stuff like that. Um, Stop the shows. I don't mind with you. Yeah. But we're homies, you know, it's yeah. different. We're homies. So that's it. One day we will ride through these degenerate lands together again. When SBI understands that Andrew cannot play on seven accounts. <laughs> and you, for not that uh, should probably be unbanned. Thank you, bro. Like yesterday. I appreciate it, man. So yo, another salute to homie Syndic. God bless. And we're gonna raid 
And by the way, yo, thank you so much for everybody that uh, subbed and supported the, the, the channel. And for everybody that stayed until now, you're an absolute fucking soldier, man, because it's been five hours. So if you're still listening from the beginning, you're an absolute MVP. Um, we're going to upload this shit on uh, YouTube tomorrow or on Tuesday at the latest. And we're going to timestamp it. So if people want to watch it and then skip, then they can do that. Um, so that's it. We're gonna raid the homie Nazori because he, he stopped by to say hello before. Um, by the way, go sub to, to the YouTube boys, Mojo's Basement. Mojo's Basement. Link it in the chat. Boom, while we raid, while we set the raid. Mojo's basement. Boom, there you go. Go sub to that shit, boys. Go sub to that shit. Um, if you like a video on there, I'm going to start putting all the interviews on there. Uh, me and Seed got some other shit that we're going to start doing uh, very soon. And then we're also going to start role playing on GTA 5 together as two retarded cops. <laughs> so, oh god <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> well, so, I'll tell you what boy buddy over there better be careful when we get on the block what's your role play name C Cletus Johnson <laughs> Cletus <Wow. laughs> Cletus Johnson oh, that's yes. perfect bro so, we're, we're, I was inspired by the daddy variant thing and we're gonna go full uh, GTA 5 RP <laughs> oh god so we're well, gonna we have to live our characters damn it you should get uh, Lint to play Trevor oh god it's not a bad idea. We gotta get lit on there on there too, bro. If we should just Wait, make a squad on this. Really should get lit in on this. It'll make it so much better. <laughs> we're gonna try, but we're gonna we're gonna try to do funny shit. You know, we're gonna try to do funny shit and then try to make people laugh, whatever. If you like if you like uh any of the videos on there, uh press the up button, what's that shit called? The like. And then if you don't like that shit, press the down button, the dislike. It's okay. So that's it, boys.